Thank you. You may all be seated. Court will recall uh, 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stauk. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Um, we're going to start the day, uh, as we will every day from here on out, uh, with a question. Has anything occurred since we were last together that causes any of you to believe that you could not continue to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? If so, please raise your hand. No response? All right, yesterday uh, we finished the day with the opening statements of both the prosecution and the defense. At this point in time, the prosecution uh, will be calling their witnesses. Mr. Allen, call your first witness, please. <coughs> Mr. Stauk, if you would step forward and raise your right hand, please, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Stauk, if you'd raise your right hand, please, sir. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Go ahead and have a seat in the witness stand. Please watch your step as you step into the stand. Mr. Allen? Thank you, Your Honor. Will you please introduce yourself to this jury and spell your name for the record? Um, Al Stauk, and that's S-T-A-U-C-H, and Gannon's father. Al, I want to uh, start by talking a little bit about the... You may. People's Exhibit Number 1. What is People's Exhibit Number 1? That's my boy. Gannon? Yes. I move for admission of people's exhibit number one. Defense. Exhibit number one will be admitted. Go ahead. I would object to this. I can't see it. Okay. We need to take it down though if it's all right. I want to have you the jury a little bit about your son. How old was he when you lost him? He's 11. <clears throat> How was he born? September 29th, 2008. No, he was uh, four months early. One pound and six ounces. Who is Gannon's mother? Landon uh, Hyatt. Oh, I, I think her name's Bullard now. Landon Bullard. Were you married with Landon when Gannon was born? I was, yes. Gannon, you have a little sister? Yes. Lena. For the jury, how big was. Scott was born. Yeah, so as I said, he was born on September 29th, and it was about a month after that. I think it was October 20th. I got to hold him for the first time, and that's how big he was right there. And with the last time I ever got to hold him, he was in a box about that big as well. Six months after he died. in the hospital for a short amount of time after that? Yeah, I believe we brought him home in January, if I remember correctly, the, towards the end of January or sometime in January of um, 2009, so about three, three and a half months in the hospital. Did he have any uh, issues at that level? Uh, yeah, early on he had um, a lot of lung issues. Actually, while he was in the hospital, he had quite a number of surgeries, um, hernia, he had some, like I said, I think it was lung collapse one time, so he had a chest tube, also was on a feeding tube, and a lot of things that go along with being a preemie. Um, after that, he, he did take a while to overcome his lung issues. He had pneumonia and RSV, I think at the same time, at one point. A um, couple, I mean, the, the only long lasting, well, two long lasting things he had from it, he just had some stomach issues where he had trouble going to the bathroom, and then um, he did have ADHD. Is he, uh, did he 
you sort of lagging size to kids similarly? Uh, not really. I mean, other than at his birth, obviously he was very, very small, one pound, six ounces. Um, but once he caught up, I think we held him back a grade or a, a year just to allow that and him to catch up a little bit in size. But no, you couldn't tell any difference with his, the fifth graders the, the year he died. So uh, South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. Uh, I moved, I moved to Colorado in, uh, February of 2019. Um, my Tisha and the kids had come a month earlier. I, I was stationed in Alaska prior to that. So. What did Cameron like to do for a Oh, some of his favorite times and all of his friends can attest to this is just playing video games. Um, I think he, he wanted to be a YouTube, uh, gamer. <laughs> I think he actually was able to make one video and put it on YouTube, so it's out there, but playing Sonic and uh, actually Mario was his favorite. So um, that was some of the favorite things I ever got to do with him. So. Up on your witness stand, mm -hmm. um, you should also make your binder. Yes, sir. It's going to get a little crowded up in here. Spark in another. Yes. What is people's Excuse me. That's a picture of Lena. Uh, yes, sir. That would have been probably 2018 at our house in Myrtle Beach. Defense. Uh, exhibit number two will be admitted. Uh, all right. Oops. There you go. <laughs> uh, like I said, we owned a house in Myrtle Beach at that time, and I believe that would have been the fall of 2018. So how old was the um, 2012, so six and a half. Yeah. Speaking, right, thanks. Yeah, about six and a half years old. Was, was she also vulnerable? She was. Uh, she actually tried to come out a little earlier than Gannon. They were, you know, always competitive with one another, but... Uh, Gannon was born at 24 weeks. She tried to come out at 22, um, but I think it was actually 34 weeks of you know being with her mom and her tummy there before she came out. So she was about two months early. What was the relationship like between you? Oh, I obviously as much love as a sister and brother can have. I, I think one of the, I think a famous quote Lena said after Gannon died was, "I'm just gonna miss getting on his nerves." So if that sums it up for you right there, but yeah, he loved his sister. And uh, well, one thing I always urged him to do, and I know his mama did too, was to look after his little sister and even getting off the bus and walking home. I used to fuss at him if he uh, let her walk home alone and it was three houses away. So that was kind of the theme for us. Just be with your sister and be together, you know? How long were you um, just shy of 10 years, um, but dating and all, I think we were together 11, 11 or so, 12 years. You know the defendant in this case? Yes, sir. Uh, I was married to her for four or five years, whatever it was. When did you meet her? I met her, uh, I think somewhere along the way playing softball on the one of the various teams we uh, played on, uh, but I didn't really get to know her until, um, beginning of 2014, so January time frame. January, you January of 2014 is when I started to, when I like met her and went out there and started to get to know her. This is um, not intended to embarrass anybody, but were you still married to Landon? Yes, sir, we were separated and, uh, you know, with the intent of getting divorced, going our separate <laughs> ways, and, and that's when I met and started dating Tisha. Did the defendant have her? She did. Harley. Do you mind getting that binder so people can get it number three? That's the same color? It sure is. Yes, sir. When was that photo taken? Um, looks like, at, I mean, I think that would have been 2019. It looks like her high school graduation picture, if I'm not mistaken. 
just kind of move forward and issue a few different things. Okay. Exhibit three will be admitted. Yes, sir. I believe it was in Columbia, South Carolina, where uh, the graduation was, somewhere in South Carolina. Because she would, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say she was, she finished her high school at an online school that was based in South Carolina. So she went back for the graduation. When you began your relationship with the bride, was it in South Carolina? It was, yes, sir. Myrtle Beach. When did you and the defendant get married? Uh, January 2015. Yes, sir. Did you identify her and point to where she's sitting and describe what she's wearing? T shirt right there with the kind of green jacket on, bluish green jacket, black. The record will so reflect. Go ahead. Do for, for uh, I'm an officer in the Colorado National Guard in a full time status. <laughs> typically, yeah, one week in a month and then a summer duty. I am. Uh, so I am in a, it's called AGR, and that's what I've been my whole career. Uh, even in starting in South Carolina, I was. Uh, it's active guard is what it is. Um, was there for a uh, rough 12 years or so um, as a recruiter and in other capacities. And then I took my commission as an officer and moved states. Um, I didn't necessarily get transferred, but I moved states to Alaska uh, as an officer and then spent two, about two years there and then been in Colorado since 2019 as an officer in the Colorado Guard. So uh, my, my main duties are as, right now as a missile defense officer. So let's talk a little bit about the family history. You said you got married in January 2015. Sir. Was that in South Carolina? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I went to, I got hired and went there. I reported in June. Um, I had to come through here for some schooling. We call it TDY and route, but uh, I got hired, went to school here, and then drove up to Alaska to be permanently stationed. Uh, 2017. Uh, somewhat it was when I, when I initially drove there, I had my two children with me, um, Lena and Gannon, and we made that trip and, uh, one of the most memorable trips of my life. Um, and then Tisha and Harley came along the way a little bit later, but they, they never really permanently moved there. They came for a couple weeks at a time and. And, and then came and left and did whatever else. Just a little bit. When you uh, initially, well, I'll, I'll talk about during our separation. They they both stayed. The kids stayed in the house, and me and Landon alternated time in the house so the kids could be as stable as possible during that um, tough time. Initially, the custody status, Landon had the majority time, um, but we were both in the same local area. So, you know, we did the best we could at um, sharing that time. But I think she moved in initially with her mom and the kids stayed there with her. And that was the initial agreement. And when you said she, just so for the record is clear, you're talking about Landon. Landon, I'm sorry. Yes, Landon specifically had the custody arrangement. Uh, yes, that would have been in March of 2018 while I was in Alaska. You mentioned just a moment ago, uh, I mean, to stay in Alaska. Yes, sir. So did you have custody of them before you actually got transferred to Alaska? No, because that was 2017 when I took that trip initially. Um, and then they were still with their mom, um, Landon, with the majority time, uh, custody time. They What they did was they spent the summer with me in Alaska, and then I flew them back home or back to their mother for the start of the next school year. When did you move to Colorado? Uh, I moved to me individually, I, can't, I think I got boots on ground February 15th of 2019. 
I believe is the date I got here. Um, and like I said, Tisha and the kids were here beginning of January, getting a house set and everything. The defendant, yeah. You may. Yes, that looks like a map of uh, Lorson Ranch neighborhood. Does it have a uh, specific address notated on that map? It does. What's that address? Uh, that would have been our house at 6627 Mandon Drive. Is that a Colorado Springs address? It is. Is that in El Paso County, Colorado? It is. You're going to move for admission of people's exhibit number four. Mr. Okay. Tolini, number, exhibit number four will be admitted. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you point out the label where the 6627 Mandan Drive address is? Right here. Is that where you lived when you moved to Colorado from Alaska? Yeah, I um, I think it, just to be clear initially, I think they had a, a little temporary housing on base, as you do when you PCS. Um, and then Tisha, or the defendant, found um, that house for rent, and we moved in. Um, and I think they were already in the house when I got here. When did, when did you all move into that house? I don't remember the sp specific date. I know they were already in the house by the time I got here in the middle of February. Okay. So, so February 2019, when you came from Alaska to here, you went to that house? I went directly to the house from the airport. Okay. <laughs> this is already, but is that address in El Paso County, Colorado? Yes, sir. How long did you all live in that house? Um, I lived there, I guess, right out of year because when everything happened with Gannon in January of 2020, uh, you know, the investigation started taking place and we pretty much decided just to move out. And the landlord allowed us to break the lease at that point. And then, uh, so it would have been early February of 2020 when we moved out officially. So let's just go through just a general description of that house. Is it a two story, a rancher, a rancher with a basement? What kind of house? I, I'm not too savvy on specific style of houses, but it had a main floor and a basement. Was the basement finished? It was. Is there also an unfinished area? Um, I mean, in the closet w was unfinished, but all the areas we frequented in the house were finished. What about where the furniture was? Yeah, when I said closet, that's uh, that's what I was referring to, the furnace room, yes. <laughs> I call it, yeah, because we kept the luggage and boxes and stuff in there. And there was another unfinished closet under the stairs as well. I'm sure we'll see that as well. How was the bedroom that you all moved into? Uh, in, on, the fir on the main floor. And then was there a, a level above that? Negative. Okay, so it's just the main floor and then a basement. Yeah, basement, yes, sir. Who else had a bedroom? Uh, initially, it was Gannon. Um, when we first moved in, but at one point we switched Lena and Gannon to what we'll see as Gannon's bedroom and Lena moved upstairs. And how many bedrooms, other bedrooms were upstairs? Uh, just that one bedroom when you walk in the front door. So two bedrooms. Two bedrooms total. Yep. And then two bedrooms. Yes, sir. Is there a living room on that main level? Yes, sir. Kitchen? Kitchen, yes, sir. Access to the garage on that main level? Yeah, and the access included the laundry stuff, the laundry room. Okay. So, and then what about downstairs? Uh, downstairs was, as soon as you come down the stairs to the left was the, uh, I called the closet, but the um, the boiler room or whatever. And then Gannon's room right next to that. To the right was the, the uh, I don't know, living room area in the basement. And then behind that was a bathroom and what was Harley's room, Harley's bedroom. Look at the exhibit that you can show those hands. Keep those five through 12 and just give me a heads up. Okay. What are those total 
Just different uh, viewpoints of the house. You want me to go through specifically? Yes, I want to okay. make sure that all the 667 Mandarin Drive residents. Yes, starting with the outside and working through the house. So people's exhibit five, is that the front of the house? Yeah, that would be a front view where you can see the garage and the front door, yes. People's exhibit six, what is that? That's as soon as you come in the front door, uh, there's a the coat closet to the left and then a view of the living room. Uh, that's a you're walking into the house further, you can see the couch in the living room and the kitchen to the right, as well as the back sliding patio door. You can see what's well, behind the curtains, but that's what that is. Okay. Same thing, it's a closer up view of the kitchen. Um, you can kind of see the dishwasher and everything, but yeah, that's the kitchen area. Nine is basically looks like it's standing at the back sliding glass door where you can see the living room, the stairs down, and then the, the garage entryway there. Upstairs living room. That is a view of the master bedroom. As soon as you walk in. That is a view of the laundry area. Um, and then the next door would be access to the garage. 12 is the garage. Yes, sir. Okay. Exhibits five through 12 will be admitted. Go ahead. Uh, you may give me just a second though. All right, go ahead. So it's the front. Uh, <coughs> it is. Moving on to exhibit six. So point out, and there's actually an extended pointer on behind it. No. Yeah, it's right here. Other side. Other side? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. We don't want to. We can just turn around and look at this. Just make sure when you're pointing away from us that the furthest you're from you can hear you. Okay. okay. So what are we looking at here? So, um, like I said, this is a uh, walking into the front door. This is uh, what I use as my closet, actually, but the front, what would be a coat closet. Um, you can see the couch in the living room right there. Um, as we walk forward, we'll see to the right is the kitchen, and this is a, a wall that um, covers the stairwell going down. But that's the living room area right in here on the main floor. So the front door, would that be basically to our back in this photo? Yes, as you walk in the front door, front door is right behind us. Yes, sir. Okay. People's exhibit number seven. Tell the jury what they're looking at there. Uh, this is where I referenced the couch in the living room, kitchen area, and the back sliding patio doors uh, behind the curtains there. There's a dog in the photo there as well. Yeah, that's Chance. And then it looks like there might be a person on the couch. Yep, and that would be Harley right there. Okay, people's exhibit number eight. <coughs> uh, same thing, here's the kitchen. Uh, I said just a second ago, dishwasher and the back sliding doors once again. People's exhibit number nine. Uh, yeah, so right behind us right now would be the those back patio sliding doors. And here's the stairwell going down. This is the wall I referenced in the first picture, uh, you know, TV living room area. And this is the entryway into the laundry room. And this would be the master bedroom behind this wall. So it's sort of around the corner there? Yeah, you have to go around the corner and into the master bedroom. Okay. And then people's exhibit number 10. What are we looking at there? Uh, so yeah, going around that corner, we've come into the master bedroom now, master bedroom doors behind us. and. This would have been a window into the backyard and um, master bed right here. And then sort of over to the left, what's to the left in that photo? So if you go sort of, if we don't have a picture of it yet, right. but where okay. would that go? So I'm look, if I'm standing looking at this back door and I turn my body to the left, there'll be the bathroom, the master bathroom. And then through that master bathroom would have been teachers or excuse me, the defendant's closet. Okay. And then people's exhibit number 11. Uh, once again, looking from that living room view, this is the garage entryway we discussed and uh, the laundry facilities right here. And then into that, uh, through that door would be into the garage. Okay. People's 12. And that is the garage. Whose car is parked there in that garage? That was the car that belonged to Harley. What kind of car is that? It's a Volkswagen Jetta. I think it was a 2018 Volkswagen Jetta. Looks like maybe somebody's a woodworker. Somebody. Who's that? Uh, I try. I don't know if I could claim to be an actual woodworker, but I give it a, my best shot. So, 
So that woodworking material there, uh, various pieces of wood and table and all that kind of thing, that's your stuff. Yeah, pretty much this whole side of the garage was dedicated with parking bikes. But other than that, it was, uh, you know, just to my supplies and my woodworking stuff. What kind of stuff would you build with wood? Well, this you see right here, I actually just, well, I'm about 90% done as a table for mom. And I surprised her with it the other day. Um, one of my favorite things to make is like cutting boards and uh, like epoxy boards and stuff like that. But that's kind of what I do. So you <coughs> mentioned making a table for, I think you said mom. Do you mean your mom? Yeah, my mom sitting right over there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you would make some furniture? Yeah, some furniture. And then also cutting boards? Cutting boards and stuff like that, yeah. I want to take, have you take a look in that binder again. Okay. Should be the next exhibit, number 34. Do you see it there? Uh, I have 13 is next. So flip all the way to flip 34. to 34. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is that a photo of a table that you built? Yes, sir. Who'd you build that table for? I built that for Gannon. So he'd have a place to put his, uh, you know, Legos and his, you know, his little toys and stuff in his room. Is it a fair and accurate representation of uh, that table that you built? Yes, sir. You want to move for admission and permission to publish People's 34? Mr. Tolini? No objection. Exhibit 34 will be admitted. Go ahead. So People's 34 is now displayed on the two screens here. Uh, it, it's fairly obvious, but just point out the table that we're talking about that you built for Gannon. Right here is red and blue one, and <coughs> colors were specifically for Mario. Like I said, it's one of his favorite things, so I wanted him to enjoy that based on his Mario little thing. Um, and then there's a some scrap wood uh, in that photo just to the left there. Can you point that out? Yeah, so a uh, little piece of uh, like OSB board and then my uh, circular saw here. There's more of that same OSB up there. I use that to build those uh, in the laundry room. You saw that little shoe container it was gray. Built it out of that wood. So, so you you used a term that I'm not familiar with. I'm not a woodworker. OSV. What does that mean? OSV. It's, it's like plywood. Different types of plywood. It's, okay. it's a generic term. Okay. For it, so. <clears throat> Particle board is another word that's used. Commonly. Okay. And if you could pull that down the picture, and then I want to have you now flip back to people's um, 13 through 31. Okay. And then just flip through all of those and tell me when you're done. 13 through. 31. Thank you. Stop at 31, you said? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, are those basically just uh, more photos of the 6627 Mandan Drive address? Majority of them, yes, sir. Um, are they all fair and accurate representations of uh, that house? Yes, sir. I move for admission of 13 through 31 and permission to publish. Mr. Tolini? And I'm referring to at a 19, 20. I'm sorry. And, yeah. 21. I, I think there's going to be, there needs to be more foundation laid for those photos, but for the rest of them, I don't have anything. Good catch. So those are coming later. So okay. it's 13 through 18 and then 21 through 31. My apologies. Okay. okay. Let's go there. 13 through 18 and 21 through 31. Do you have an objection? I do not. All right. Those photos will be admitted. Go ahead. And permission to publish those photos, Your Honor. You may go ahead. <clears throat> All right, so we've got 13 displayed on the screen there. Describe what we're looking at there. So if you can see over here, this carpet, this is where we came in the front door and I said there was the wall leading down the stairs and this is the stairway to the basement. People's number 14. So, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention the stairs kind of do a wrap around. So we came down the stairs and now we're looking down into the basement and we had a little computer area here. Um, but yeah, that's the basement entryway. And 15. 
So coming down the stairs to the right, this is what you would have seen the little, uh, I call it the downstairs living room. So TV, sofa, mm -hmm. that kind of my thing. My bike and then the dog's kennel was over here. And then it's, you know, mementos, you can see college degrees and pictures of the family and stuff. Was it typical that you all would spend time as a family in this room? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched a lot of movies with the kids down there, but um, we did upstairs as well. So would the kids spend time on their own down there? Oh, yeah, a lot. Because again, uh, the you can see his uh, Nintendo Switch right here. As, that was his pride and joy. And uh, we also had a PlayStation and they would watch movies. And so all the gaming and stuff typically took place downstairs. Just to the right of that photo, uh, was there a hallway that went back to that back bedroom? Yeah, it's hard can, to see. You can kind of see a little uh, crease right here. That's the corner. And it goes into uh, Harley's room and then her bathroom area. And there's another closet right there. But. Okay. And then People's Exhibit 16. Yeah, so this would have been the couch we just saw um, in the other picture. And then this is just the back corner. Um, I guess it would have been what the northwest corner of the basement. I don't know, but um, but yeah. And then you sort of uh, started to point at it there, but there's a blackish square there in the center of that carpet. Yes, sir. Uh, just backing up a little bit. Uh, in January of 2020, um, specifically January 25th and 26th, uh, which would have been a Saturday and Sunday, were you at home on the on that weekend? No, I actually. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain my duty schedule, but every other week I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that week I actually have the work day shift on a Friday and Saturday, and then I left town on Sunday. So I was at work all day Saturday, came home, uh, the defendant and my mom was in town, and the defendant and the I and my mom and the kids ate dinner, and then uh, my mom was leaving that night, so I took her to the airport in Denver um, for her flight, and then I stayed in the airport. I slept across from the ticket counter on the floor there. And then uh, I, cause I had an early morning flight to go to Oklahoma for training for two weeks. So, so when did you actually um, drive up to Denver? And I'm assuming you mean uh, DIA. Denver airport. Yeah. DIA. Uh, so, I mean, I get off, I don't think I got off early that evening. I, I usually get off at 1800 or at 6 PM. And uh, it was 15 minute drive home or so. Um, we ate dinner and then I, no later than eight o'clock, I would assume. I, I don't remember exactly what time mom's flight left DIA, but. So you drive mom up to the airport and then you just stayed at the airport because you had a flight the next day? I had an early morning flight to uh, uh, through Dallas, I think to Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, but yeah, I did. I just slept on my uh, duffel bag or whatever right there. There's a little seating area right across from the American Airlines ticket counter at DIA. And I just laid down on the floor right there. So when you left on Saturday evening, whatever time it was, who was left at the Mandan Drive residence? Uh, the defendant and then uh, Harley and Lena and Gannon. Any other adults there? Not that I know of. No how, old was, how old was Harley at that time? She would have been, let's see, 5102. No, so she was uh, 17. How old was, 18. Uh, how old was Gannon? 11. And Lena? Uh, Lena was, uh, well, her birthday's in January. So... Sorry, I'm doing math here. So eight, she had just turned eight. Okay. You're doing math better than I could if right. I was sitting on the stand, so thank you. So um, when you left the house on that Saturday evening to drive mom and yourself up to the DIA, was that carpet like that when you left? It was not, no, sir. Um, did you talk to the defendant about that? I, th I believe she... I, I, well, first, did, did you talk to her about it? I did talk to her. She said there was a, an accident and a candle spill. Okay. I, I don't know if it was, uh, let me clarify, I don't remember if it was over a text or over a phone call, but there was a conversation about it at some okay. point. Do you remember when you learned about a uh, candle spill and a burn or whatever? I'm confident that it was that Sunday night, which would have been the 26th. Okay. E either that or the next morning in okay. those text messages. And is that what we're looking at there is sort of uh, a cutout area of that carpet as a result of whatever burn happened. Yeah, what what I was told was, yeah, there was a spill here, but you can also see that she claimed there was, a, the defendant claimed there's supposedly some candles spilled on the couch as well. You can see those little spots there. That's what she claimed that was. Did she ever say who cut that square out like that? I, When I got home, I think there was something over it. So I don't, I don't know if she ever 
the defendant ever told me that she had cut anything out. I, I cannot remember specifically on that. Okay. Let's move on to People's Exhibit 17. What are we looking at here? So basically, you're kind of standing by the TV almost now. And then you're looking back to where we came down the stairs. And this would have been that entryway into Harley's area. Once again, the dog kennel, we referenced that in the computer area. And this is what I call it a closet. I, I forget how you referenced it, but the boiler room or whatever. I call it a storage room, but storage room, okay. Uh, unfinished area where okay. furnace and that kind of thing? Yes, sir. Okay. And then where's Gannon's room in relation to that? So you'd have this behind this wall. You just, there's a little small little uh, hallway. As soon as you get here, you take a right and it leads into his bedroom. Okay. People's Exhibit 18. Is that just a sh uh, closer up view of into that storage room? Yeah, now we're walking towards the storage room here and then you can see this little, you know, gap here. That's how you get into Gannon's room. People's 21. So judge, we'll have to turn the screen off for just a moment. Okay, we're ready. Hold on. So 21 is on the screen behind you now. Okay. What are we looking at there? So we've, ta we've taken probably two or three steps into Gannon's room now because we're kind of in the center. This was his bed. And um, as I mentioned before, you can see the remnants of when Lena lived here. Those are definitely not Gannon's stickers, but um, his bed here, um, there's that table that I built for him for his toys. And then there would also be another bed over on this side of the room um, as we're looking at it to the right. Um, this was a, a storm well or whatever. I remember we're in the basement and I believe there was a ladder in this one going up to the backyard. His closet would have been over here and then I think he had a little TV as soon as you walk in the room to the left. Okay. Is that essentially what Gannon's room looked like when you got back from Oklahoma? I don't remember if I walked down there immediately or not. Um, I, I don't. I think I did, but I, I don't remember specifically. But that's about what it would have looked like. Okay, that was a common appearance of his room. So was his bed always sort of uh, backed up into that corner? Yeah, his bed would have been typically pushed all the way up um, against this wall and this wall, not pulled away for any reason. Does it appear there's a little gap there in the? It's hard, it's hard to tell in this picture because the, the covers are kind of ruffled up, but. Okay. People's Exhibit 23. Do we need to pull it down? Can you just not do it? I, yeah, it'd be 22 foot, but you can't just. So People's 22. What is that a picture of? So now we're back in the master on the first floor, on the main floor, and uh, we've walked into the master bathroom. You can see the shower right here with the tile and the glass door, and this would have been the defendant's closet, uh, master closet, if you will. So the, all the clothes in there and whatever other things were in there pretty much belong to the defendant? <clears throat> yeah, so as I referenced earlier, the, the coat closet, which is normally called is when you walk in, that's where I kept my clothes in her because the defendant had a closet full of clothes and there wasn't room for mine. So. Okay. And then people's 23. Yeah, this would have been just taking another step in where you can see, you know, just her clothes, the defendant's clothes hanging up, shoes on the top rack there. People's 24. Uh, what are we looking at? That looks like uh, that would have been the defendant's closet, I believe, because those were her book bags. <clears throat> and yeah, you can see some of the same clothes we saw in the previous picture hanging up here. So yeah, that's the defendant's closet as well. And her shoes there? Yeah, her shoes, another rack of shoes. And then people's 25? Uh, that would have been, as soon as you walk in the closet to the right, the uh, same closet. So I want to ask you some questions before we jump on to the next uh, couple of photos. When did you learn um, about Gannon, Gannon, having something happen to him. Uh, you mentioned hearing something from the defendant about the burn downstairs. 
Was there a point in time when you learned that he was missing? Yes, I was in Oklahoma. We had had our first day of class. Like I said, I was scheduled to be there two weeks. Uh, just got out our first day of class. I went and ran um, a couple miles, whatever it was. And then uh, I was already back in my hotel room uh, preparing for the next day and uh, and whatever. And then we started the conversation back and forth about he's not home yet. We had specific times for them to be home. Um, typically was the street lights. It's something I used to do as a kid. I had to be home by the street lights. So we just implemented that and he hadn't come home in time and uh it was abnormal but it wasn't worrisome so um i don't know how much you want me going to that yeah so i'm going to ask you some follow-up questions okay. about that when you say that he hadn't come home yet did you know that he hadn't come home or is this what the defendant was telling you yeah based on the conversation that me and the defendant were having of course i was in oklahoma so i had no clue i'm just relying on trusting her that um, he hadn't come back from his friend's house yet, which is where she said he had been. And what day was that that you heard this information? This would have been the Monday, so that I believe it was the 27th. 27th. Yeah. Do you know if he went to school on the 27th? According to her, he did not. Her being? Excuse me, the defendant. According to the defendant, he did not because he was having stomach issues and he was sick, which in my mind at that time is like, why is he going to his friend's house if he's that sick? So it was a little confusing, but... Would it, uh, would it be typical if he was having uh, digestive issues to stay home from school? No, sir. Okay. So that by itself was out of the ordinary. Right. And when did you find out that he was going to stay home from school? I believe, uh, without having time stamps, I believe it was that morning. And I think she sent me some photos okay. saying, you know, Gannon's home, here he is, or whatever. Yep. And then... When you found out from the defendant that he had potentially gone to a friend's house and hadn't come home, do you know what time that was? I mean, I don't know specifically without looking when that conversation started, but it was it was, it was already in the evening where I was when, when um, we started that conversation. So you learn in the morning that Gannon doesn't go to school from the defendant mm -hmm. because of stomach issues, and then sometime in the evening you learn that he had gone to a friend's house and had not come had home. Had not come home. And that all comes from the defendant? Yes, sir. When did you get back to Colorado? I um, I came as soon as I can after the, I decided basically that there was something actually wrong. Uh, so the 27th, as soon as I decided he's missing, I got to come home. I had, all, I, not to get ahead, but I know I think the defendant had called 911. I don't know about when the police came to the house, but I know I also called them and said, hey, what's going on? My son's out there somewhere. And at that point, I called our travel people and said, hey, I need an emergency ticket home. And I left. I had a buddy drive me to actually to Oklahoma City, and I left from Oklahoma City Airport early the next morning. So let's unpack that just a little bit. Sure. So <clears throat> to your memory, the defendant tells you that she called 911? She did. Was it that specifically, or was it an accumulation of things that made you worried and decide to that you need to get back home and see what's going on? Yeah, so and like I said, I didn't know how deep you wanted me to go at that point. I, I had also contacted numerous of Gannon's friends' parents in the neighborhood that I knew, um, you know, he would typically frequent their house and, and play with their kids and stuff, and none of them had even seen him. So then it, it started to become an issue. Uh, there was also a, another claim about some new friend on the school bus and, and some other stuff surrounding that. I'm sure we'll get into. Um, do you want me to go into nope, that? Okay. Right now. All right. Um, there, there was that. And so I asked, started asking the parents about, do you know any, do you know this person's name or do you know anything about another person? And so it became, it started compounding, as you said, to become more worrisome. So basically you're accumulating information and, and growing more worried. Is that what you're describing? Yes, sir. And then when you said you called your travel people, do you mean you called the National Guard folks? Well, we have like a central billing travel type agency that does all of our flights and stuff like that. So I just called them. I think it's called Sato. I don't remember exactly, but I called them um, on my orders. It has the emergency number. So I just called that, say, hey, I got to go home. This is happening. Okay. Um, I also called Landon and some of her family as well to try to notify them, hey, I'm going home. Something's wrong. When did you actually then fly out of, I think you said Oklahoma City? Uh, yeah, so one of my uh, battle buddies or whatever, one of my guys in my class took me up to Oklahoma City because that was the only flight they could find. 
um, or the soonest flight they could find. And um, it, early the next morning, I spent the night sitting in the, at, once again, right across from the ticket counter at Oklahoma City. I don't remember the flight time. So when you say the next morning, is that January 28th? Tuesday, January 28th, yes, sir. Did you get any sleep that night? No, I just sat there and whatever. Did you fly back to DIA or did you fly to Colorado Springs? I think I, I don't remember exactly. I knew I left Oklahoma City, but I'm pretty sure I got back to, well, I know I got back to Colorado Springs, all the, the different legs, I don't remember, to okay. be honest, but I know I got, I came into Colorado Springs. So you, do you remember being picked up from Colorado Springs Airport? Yes, sir. Who picked you up? The defendant. So let's talk about that just a little bit. <clears throat> she have her own vehicle? At that time? I don't know what she drove to the airport based on my- Listen to the question. Did she have her own vehicle? We went and got a rental, well, she went upstairs and got a rental car. Did she have her own vehicle that you all owned that she would typically drive? Bad questions on my part. Does she have a vehicle that she would typically drive? Oh, does she have one? At that time? Yes, she did. It was a Volkswagen T1. Okay. What color was it? Black. Okay. What did she actually pick you up in at the airport? Uh, like I said already, she, we, she went upstairs. I was down at the luggage carrier. She went upstairs to get a rental vehicle. Okay. Did that seem odd to you? Absolutely. Okay. At some point, uh, were you in contact with Landon uh, with this news of Gannon being missing? Absolutely. And cause once I decided there was an issue, and a legitimate issue, uh, I, I think I called her first, can't get a hold of her, and then I started calling her daddy and other family members to try to get a hold of her. But I did talk to her Monday on the 27th that evening while still in uh, um, at Fort Sill. And then I'm sure, I don't remember exactly along the way, but she said, I'm, I'll be there. And she started getting her travel arrangements set to get there. So, Did she actually then come out to Colorado? She did. Where did she stay when she came to Colorado? Initially, I don't remember how many nights. I think she stayed at my house um, for a night or two. I don't remember specifics. Uh, majority of the time she, she got a hotel in town. Um, it wasn't long that we all stayed in the house cause we had to leave. So when, when she got to town and I think you said, did she come straight to your house? I saw her for the first time, uh, at the sheriff's office, Apostle County Sheriff's office downtown. Okay. Well, was she staying somewhere in Colorado? Did, did she to stay, did she go to your house after? So yeah, so she, from my recollection, she landed came straight to the sheriff's office. I don't know if she did anything in between, but I saw her at the sheriff's office. We left there, I think, in my truck and went home to my, to my residence, 6627. Okay. Drive. Did the fact that Landon was going to be staying in your house at 6627 cause tension between you and the defendant? Uh, I, I, from her perspective, I can't, well, I can't speak for her perspective. I didn't see their need for tension because there's a little boy missing and we got all, we got to fight together at that point. Okay, so, but... Was there tension between the two of you over that decision to allow Landon to be at the house? I believe it created some tension in, in, in her mind. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have that tension. No, sir. I'm just going to speak to right. you. A disagreement though. Did she get mad at you for allowing Landon to be? Yeah, we house? disagreed on that, on that note. Yes. Okay. Uh, at some point then did that cause the defendant to actually move out of the Mandan drive house? And I'm not asking you for specific days, just a yes or no. I believe I, I believe that's what she said caused her, the defendant caused, that caused her to move out. Yes. I'm going to object at this point. It's unclear if he's just speculating as to what was going on in uh, the defendant's mind or if this was actually verbalized to him. If it was verbalized to him, I think he can testify. If he's just speculating as to what she was thinking, I think it's inappropriate. I agree. I don't think that he can testify as to what she was thinking at the time. He can testify as to what she did. He can testify as to what she said. And that's what I'm trying to, to okay. get across here. And I'm actually asking for a physical thing. Did she physically go to the house and take things out of the house and move out? She did. Absolutely. Okay. Roughly when did that occur? Uh, within the first week. Okay. I, I don't remember the exact dates. I'm sure we'll get to that. Okay. And so if we can put up uh, People's Exhibit 26. Twenty six hasn't been admitted yet. Uh, I moved for admission of twenty one through oh, you're thirty one. Right. That's right. Yep. I'm sorry. Whoops. Go ahead. All right. What is depicted in People's twenty six? Uh, this would have been the defendant's uh, closet in the master um, master bedroom bathroom area. 
Um, looks like it's been emptied out. Okay. So did you move anything out of that closet? No, sir. I did not. Who did? Uh, the defendant. There's still some things that were left behind, it looks like? Yes, sir. It appears so. Are those some of the defendant's items as well? It may be hard to tell. It's but... hard to tell. I mean, I mean that you may be specific here. I mean, some of that stuff is mine, my items, but. So I'm asking more about the things hanging. It looks like there's a belt or something and then some sort of a jacket maybe. This belt looks like it would have been mine. Actually, I, I remember it because I had that little crease in it. And I do, I cannot tell what jacket that is to be specific about it. Okay. And then People's Exhibit 27. Is this another view of that same closet? Yes. So that would have been my sweater. Uh, I don't know who's, what shirt that is. Um, and those are linens from our, our bedroom. Linens from your bedroom? Yeah, up here in the top corner from our bed. Okay. And then, um, so looks like um, you said the defendant came in there and moved all those things out. Yes, sir. Uh, did you, you didn't help her at all? No, sir. There were other people helping her. Okay. And then I want to jump now to People's Exhibit 28. What is this? So this was Harley's room and... Uh, the door to Harley's room would have been over in this area, and then that's a door into her closet. Okay. And then people's 29. And that's walking into her closet, it looks like. Her being Harley? Harley, yes, I'm sorry. So the uh, clothes and the shoes and whatnot, is that all Harley's? Those are Harley's shoes, yes, sir. Uh, and then when the defendant moved out uh, the week of that 27th, uh, did Harley also move out? Harley did, yes, sir. Let's move on to People's Exhibit 30. Is that Harley's clothes hanging in that closet? Yes, sir. And People's 31. Is that the way the closet looked after Harley and Leticia moved out later the week of the 27th? Yes, sir. You can take that down now, Judge. Thank you. I want to go through and have you describe uh, for us how you all would communicate. Did each person basically in the family, and when I say each person, I mean you, the defendant, Harley, have cell phones? We, all three of us did, yes, sir. With separate phone numbers? Separate phone numbers, yes, sir. And then was there a, a fourth phone number that was assigned to Gannon and Lena? Yes, sir. It was like the kid's phone, yes, sir. Yeah. What, what was your phone number back then? My phone number, 843-478-6714. Uh, Who was the provider for that phone number? I was. I'm sorry, the cell phone provider. Oh, AT&T. Okay. And then what about uh, Gannon's or the kid's phone? Uh, 843, I remember it was 6724 because it was just one digit off of my end. I don't remember the middle three. Okay. So 843 area code. Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no? Yes. Sorry. Okay. And then the last four, 6724. 6724. Okay. Who was the cell phone provider for that phone? AT&T. And then let's talk about... Harley, do you remember her phone number at that time? I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Do you know who the cell phone provider was? It was AT&T. AT&T. Also 843 area code for sure. What is 843 area code? Uh, it's uh, uh, coastal South Carolina at okay. the time. And then um, what about the defendant? Did she also have a cell phone? She did. Who was the cell phone provider for that phone? AT&T. Do you know her phone number? Yeah, eight four. Yes, sir. Eight four three six five five seven four six zero. During the course of the investigation, uh, did law enforcement ask you for access to the phone associated with the kids or Gannon's phone? Yes, sir. We'll come back to that. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about vehicles. Um, what was your vehicle? I had a, I think it's, I believe it was 2016, but Nissan Frontier. It was red, had a six inch lift on it, some big mud tires. Was it a Titan? No, it was a Frontier. Frontier? Nissan okay. Frontier. And you said what year was it? I believe 2016, either 2015 or 2016. Okay. 
who typically drove that vehicle? Typically, I did. Anybody else drive it? Uh, t- uh, the defendant from time to time. Did she like driving it? I, I don't remember ever enjoying driving it. Okay. And then what about Harley? We saw a picture of it, but that was a white VW Jetta, I think you said? Yes, sir. 2018, I believe. And then what about the defendant? She had, uh, I think it was 2019, but a Tiguan, a black Tiguan with black rims and kind of blacked out uh, tint on her windows. Did you all own that vehicle? No, that was a lease. So now I want to jump back to what we were talking about earlier when she picked you up at the airport. Did she give you a reason? Did she say why she wanted to drive a rental vehicle as opposed to her normal vehicle? Yeah, her reasoning was we would be doing a lot of searching and driving around looking for Gannon and be due to her vehicle being a lease, she didn't want to go over the mileage on whatever those requirements or allotments were. What kind of vehicle did she rent? A little small. I don't remember. I think maybe a Kia. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a small little um, sedan. What color was it? I believe silver. Was it white, maybe? Maybe white. You don't have a good memory of that? I don't, because we just parked it in the driveway and drove my truck around, So, which made totally no sense. So let's talk about um, that. Did you actually own the pickup at that time? I did. Not a lease issue? No, it was. I was paying the note off, but I mean, I owned it. It was okay. my name. Why was it um, strange to you, the way you said this earlier, that there was a rented vehicle as opposed to her normal Tiguan vehicle that she was picking you up in. Once again, and I, I know I've made this statement already about something else, but in in these moments when it's it's an emergency, things like miles on your car don't matter. It doesn't matter what car we drive if we're going searching. Um, so it just, and, and in the moment, I'm just like, whatever, just do what you want. But you know, but yeah, it didn't make any sense. Did she tell you where the Tiguan was? Uh, she did. She said it was, um, so you know, because I asked, it brings back to memory, I asked, how did you get to the airport if your car's not here? Well, I parked it at French Elementary School, which is where she was employed. And one of my coworkers brought me, or former co whatever it was, one of my coworkers brought me to the airport and dropped me off. So just so we're clear, you asked her about that, and she told you that one of her coworkers drove her to the airport and dropped her off? Absolutely. Is French Elementary School close to the Mandan Drive address? I mean, it's on the south end of town, but I mean, it's it's a couple miles away. Okay. Did you ever drive over to French Elementary School to look for that vehicle? I did. Did you find it there? I did not. Did you find that odd? Absolutely. Let's talk about um, Gannon's relationship with the defendant. How would you describe that relationship? Trusting. Um, I would, I, I'm c- comfortable saying, I think he had love in his heart for her. Um, I don't think he was afraid of her or any fear for her. I, I, one of the things about Gannon that is special. And I think it's special about Lala and young boys. He, he absolutely loved his mom and he had some of that same love for Tisha too. So he was a mama's boy. He was absolutely. How was, um, I guess, who who would discipline the kids? And when I say the kids, I'm talking about the little ones, so Lena and Gannon. Uh, both of us, both myself and the defendant. I want to get into now your relationship with the defendant. We talked about how you met her. <clears throat> How would you describe the relationship? Was it a loving relationship? Uh, what was it? At, um, at what point? Well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Uh, I think loving is a good example. It was fun. It was, I, I, as you brought up, I was coming off of a divorce. So, yeah, it was, it was fresh. It was new. Um, I had a good time. You know, I didn't have custody of the kids at that point. So we were a little bit more free and, you know, things we could do. How old were Gannon and Lena when you met the defendant? When I met her? Yep. Um, two and five, I believe. 
I think that's right. When did you first move in together? I, so my officer school took me through um, August. I had to go to a two week phase in Alabama. We, uh, Landon and I sold the house and it was either, I think I signed the papers and it sold while I was gone, but right in that same time frame, late July, early August, when I got back is when I, I, I might have moved my stuff into where sh we started renting a house, but I moved in late August. Of what year? Like that, uh, 20, uh, 14. When did you first meet Harley? Uh, earlier in 2014, uh, I maybe March. Uh, I, I remember. Well, let me back up. I, I had exposure to her at the softball games and stuff, but I never really, you know, had a conversation with, you know, with her. But uh, when I first met her, I actually remember helping her doing her homework the first time I met her. Um, she was doing some vocabulary. I don't know why that stands out, but yeah, I was at Tisha's apartment in uh, spring of 2014. When were you officially commissioned in the National Guard? I uh, took my commission June 9th, 2016. Did you change your uh, duty assignment roughly around that same time? Yeah, I was in National Guard, as you mentioned, is mostly reserved. So before my, I commissioned, I was enlisted, uh, I made it up to some first class E7. And in, in active guard status, I had to resign my full time in order to take my commission. And then I was in the reserve status for about uh, eight months, nine months before I went to Alaska. Okay, so what I'm asking is, um, did you have to change where you were living and where you were assigned with the National Guard after you took your commission? Not immediately. Did you at some point move to Columbia, South Carolina? I didn't move there. I had, when I, uh, as soon as I commissioned, like I said, I, it's kind of hard to explain. National Guard's a little different. I, I resigned my full-time status, but you can get on temporary orders. And so I was on temporary orders in Columbia for a couple months, um, but I was close enough where I could commute, um, mo you know, half the time or whatever. Okay. Um, but I just stayed at the armory in, in Columbia, South Carolina. So that's where, when you say you stayed there, that's where you were working. I worked there and then I, I got a, you know, cot and stayed in an extra room down the hall okay. or whatever it was. And then the house that you mentioned earlier in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, uh, did you and the defendant buy that house? Right around that same time, yes, sir. Do you remember going to Oklahoma roughly around that same time as well? I did. I wasn't slated to go until January. And th this trip to Oklahoma would have been for six months, and this was for my basic officer course, not to be confused with the two weeks in 2020. Right. Um, so I, I went there. I was slated to go in January, but somebody dropped out, so I was able to go, I think, the end of July, and it took me through December. Um, just shy of six months. Did you take um, either Gannon and Lena with you to Oklahoma for the six month period? I did not. At that point, they uh, their mother still had majority custody. So, uh, but they did come and visit. There was a few uh, holidays or whatever, and I came home a couple of times to visit during that that time period. What about the defendant? Did she ever come to Oklahoma to visit? The defendant did, as well as Harley. Did she ever move to Oklahoma during that six month period with you? She never moved. I I, I don't remember her staying at maximum a week. I don't even think she stayed that long at any point. Was it that year, 2016, when you learned of the job up in Alaska? I did. While I was in Oklahoma, I learned of that. Was that something that interested you? Absolutely. Did you apply to that position? Absolutely. When you finished that training in, in uh, Oklahoma in 2016, where did you go after finishing that training? I came uh, home I say home, but came to our the house that the defendant and I owned in Myrtle Beach. Okay. When did you actually get transferred up to Alaska? If you uh, can tell us. Yeah. So I, I mean, I spoke to this earlier. Uh, I came here for schooling. Uh, I got here, I think April first. 
did two months here and then I took the trip with the kids up to Alaska. So I think June 9th or something like that, I, I got up there. But I was on orders in the Alaska Guard on my way here um, and then just did my training. So you said June. What year are we talking about? Uh, 2017, once okay. again. Yeah. What was the uh, I'm a Navy guy, so I don't understand National Guard. Okay. Uh, is it are they bases, forts? What are they called? Uh, most of the time, your typical National Guard duty is going to be at an armory, like a local reserve center or something. They're all over Colorado Springs. Uh, this one is a little different because it was an active guard unit, uh, which is kind of rare in the guard. But uh, it was at Fort Greeley, Alaska. I was stationed and lived on base. So how long were you stationed up at Fort Greeley? Uh, just shy of two years. Uh, like, as I mentioned, I got hired on in March, uh, went to my school here, and then I um, that was 2017, and then February 2019, I was transferred here. Was it roughly around that time that you um, actually filed for custody of Gannon and Elena? No, that was, I, I think I actually filed um, for custody before I left to Alaska. So is that the time period you're talking about? Yeah, so when did you file for custody of Gannon and Elena? So like February or March of 2017, I don't remember specific dates, but it was before I was leaving, yes, sir. Do you remember um, a specific incident occurring prior to you leaving for training where you and the defendant got into an argument? Uh, yes, In sir. 2017. In 20... <clears throat> Don't remember. Is there more you can give me? Well, I can't specific. I can't ask you leading questions. So okay. I gotta ask an open-ended question. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, so I, I think we did get into an argument, a verbal argument about me taking the job in Alaska. That was a, 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 so a point of tension for sure. Did she tell you whether she was supportive of you taking that job in Alaska or not? I don't remember specifically if she said supportive, but all indications were no. Uh, was that the sort of the source of the fight? Uh, I would say yes. That was the source of many verbal disagreements and arguments in that time period. Were you all living together at that particular time? Yes. When this, when this fight occurred? Yes, sir, in the house in Myrtle Beach. Okay. Did did the defendant take specific action regarding your belongings in the house? Yeah, the day, yes, sir, the day I was supposed to leave um, to come to Colorado for training, uh, which would have been late March. I don't remember the specific date. Yeah, she threw all my stuff in the front yard and whatever just said i'm done with you kind of thing said that so you said she said i'm done with you kind of thing and i'm not quoting directly but it that's the theme of it i'm done take your stuff and go and whatever did the obviously the relationship didn't end then is that right no i i think it was actually about a week or eight or nine days before we we talked again uh, not a lot of communication in those i didn't talk to her the whole trip here and then it was a couple of days after i got here i think so yeah it was tough times you mentioned earlier that um, the defendant actually did come up to Alaska. Yes, sir. When did that occur? Various times. I, I don't know. I don't remember specifically when she first showed up. I would, had already been there for a while, um, but she did come and then stayed for a week or two, two or three weeks here, a month there. I mean, it was she never moved there. I never felt like she moved there, I should say. Well, and I'm probably just asking a bad question, but was there a period of time where it seemed as if uh, there was a move uh, where she actually brought Harley with her to Alaska. Yes, there was a period of time, and this would have been uh, that first summer, because what she told me was that she was looking for a job at the school and that she had enrolled Harley at the school uh, in Delta Junction is the town, but that she was enrolled there. And then, you know, that's where we're at. Delta Junction, Alaska. Yeah, which is where Fort Greeley, the base is located, is Delta okay. Junction. So did her, the defendant, and Harley actually come to Alaska during that time frame? They did. There have been some time uh, July, June or July. I don't remember how long they stayed, like I said. but Did, um, did the defendant ever tell you? I'm, I thought, did you say something, Judge? No. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, did the um, defendant ever tell you whether she enjoyed being in Alaska? She actually told me the opposite quite a bit, that she hated it there, that we should give it back to Russia. So Give Alaska back yeah, to Russia? Just give, it, just give it to them because yeah. it's so bad up there.
Would the defendant use manipulation on you in your relationship? Absolutely. Objection is also speculative. Go ahead, you can answer. Absolutely. In this time period that we're talking about where you were in Alaska um, and she's telling you that she hated it, um, did she manipulate that situation to try to get you to leave that uh, duty station? Yes, sir, at the end she did. When you say the end, what do you mean by the end? By the end, that's what, her manipulating a situation is what led me to leave Alaska. When did the manipulation in that regard change or, or cause you to start to leave Alaska? That specific uh, incident or set of incidents would have been in the fall of 2018. What was the what was the nature of that manipulation? Objection 404B. Council approach, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to take a break uh, until about uh, 1040. Again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not discuss the case with anyone else. Do not do your own investigation about any aspect of this case. Um, and if we can have everyone back in the uh, jury room ready to go at 1040, we should be able to start on time at that point. All right, for the jury, please.
Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. We were having a uh, discussion at the bench uh, regarding uh, the permissible areas to go into. And it seems to me, Mr. Allen, that what you can do is, uh, I think it's probably safer just to use some leading questions, uh, talk with uh, your witness as well. Um, but I do think that he can talk, as I understand it, um, what the evidence is going to be or um, the offered evidence is going to be is that Ms. Stauk made a claim regarding uh, sexual harassment That's right. uh, against some other people in his unit uh, that may have made it uncomfortable for uh, Mr. Stout to remain uh, in that unit. And apparently that's why uh, he decided to change duty station. Um, we're not going to get into what the substance of those allegations were. Mr. Stout, you would be prohibited from saying or testifying whether or not you believed those allegations, whether or not you thought she was making them up, those kinds of things. You can say that she made them, and you can say that you can testify about uh, how that made you feel and why you wanted to move, but you cannot testify about whether or not you thought they were true unless she told you something different, okay? All right. Well, Judge, I think it's, it's um, as I was saying at the bench, it's a uh, form of manipulation to get that to happen. And so I do think it would be proper for him to say whether it was a, an attempt by the defendant to manipulate him being assigned to that duty station. He can leading, go ahead. Leading to him then changing duty stations to Colorado. He can testify that he thought she was manipulating him, um, but he cannot testify that that's what she thought. There you go. Uh, because in this case, I do think that there's some issue about <clears throat> um, whether or not the defendant may have manipulated certain events or whether or not the defendant may have manipulated certain conduct um, at some point in time. And so I do think that that is uh, relevant. I think it's admissible. I think it goes to some of the heart of the issue of the evidence in this case. Um, so I think that he can testify as to whether or not he thought he was being manipulated um, and leave it at that. I don't think you can go any further than that. Mr. Tolini. Yeah, and so I've got a couple different objections. Go ahead. I mean, one, based on what we're talking about, at least it sounds to me, and I'm making the record, that we're talking about propensity evidence. She manipulated him in Alaska, therefore, when she was doing this other stuff in, 20, in January of 2020, February of 2020, it must have been manipulation as well. That is propensity. Um, further, there has been no 404B notice um, filed by the district attorney of the prior bad acts. Um, I'm unaware of any case that I've come across that does away with rule 404B just because we raised the issue of not guilty by reason of insanity. Obviously, we have some different experts that are going to come on that have been provided different evidence. Um, some of that may be described as 404B. Um, and so that expert, that influenced that expert's decision. I think it would be relevant and admissible through that expert. I just don't think it's admissible through this, through this witness we have here. Um, because whether or not he felt manipulated or not has no real bearing on what was going on in 2020, unless we're talking about propensity or unless we're talking about other motive, other types of stuff that would need to be endorsed under 404B. Mr. Allen. Judge, um, they have put the defendant's mental condition into uh, relevance by claiming NGRI. Um, this witness specifically spent a lot of time with this defendant over many years. And uh, case law is clear that he can comment on whether she was sane or not, and if she was having any mental health issues, which I do intend to get into. Uh, there is evidence, that, as we know from preliminary hearing, that the defendant attempted to manipulate uh, this investigation, and we're going to have evidence from uh, different people on that uh, point as well. And yes. uh, that's sort of the track record of this particular defendant. That's not a bad act. That's uh, mental condition evidence that they have put in play by claiming NGRI. I, I tend to agree with the prosecution here. Um, I've, I've read the, uh, I have read all of the uh, psychological examinations, the competency um, and the sanity examinations. Um, I'm also familiar with the facts that are uh, involved in this case. I don't think it's necessarily propensity, but I also think that uh, it would be appropriate uh, to ask uh, any of the experts that are coming um, whether or not um, conduct by the defendant in uh, 20, I think this was 20, fall of 2018, um, would be an example of 
uh, manipulation by the defendant. And if this testimony is not permitted at this point in time, or this evidence is not admitted at this point in time, there wouldn't be a basis by which to ask the expert that question when they take the stand. So I, I understand that you disagree, uh, but I think that it's, I do think that's appropriate. I think it is more of intrinsic rather than extrinsic evidence. Um, so I am going to allow it. But again, uh, Mr. Stauck will not be permitted to say whether or not uh, he believed that those allegations were false or not. Uh, and uh, he can testify as to how, what happened, how he reacted to it. Um, and we're dealing with a relationship between the people. It, you know, it has a lot to do with uh, his mental state, the, uh, Mr. Stouck's mental state at the time that the investigation was going on based on his history with the defendant. It also has something to do with the way that the defendant may have acted uh, at the time all of this happened based on her history with him. So I'm, I'm going to allow it um, and you can do it through leading questions. All right. All right, with that, we will take our break. Uh, and so if Ms. Stout needs a break, uh, we need to do that now. Oh, all right, thank you, Mr. Cook. All right, court will be in recess, thank you. Mr. Stout, you may wanna talk with Mr. Allen about what the parameters are. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Can you use the restroom? Uh, I was going to do it. Can you hand this? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh,
Thank you. May I'll be seated. Court will recall 13 or 20 CR 135A People versus Letitia Stock. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. When we took our break, we were in the midst of the examination of Mr. Stout. That's where we will resume. Mr. Stout, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Al, we were um, just getting into um, whether the defendant manipulated uh, your assignment to Alaska. Um, did she, well, let me ask you this. There was a point in time where she raised sexual harassment claims that caused tension for you and your command in Alaska. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, did that involve a Corporal Jenkins and a Lieutenant Colonel Ortega? Uh, Captain Jenkins and yes. Lieutenant Captain Colonel. Jenkins. Yes, sir. Okay. Again, I don't know these National Guard ranks. It's, it's Army. Army? Yeah, okay. It's Army. Again, I don't know that either. <laughs> um, I had asked you before uh, whether she was happy being assigned having you all living up in Alaska, and I think you said no. Absolutely not, yes. Um, did this claim of sexual harassment, not asking you whether it was true or not, uh, but did that lead to you eventually leaving Alaska and coming to Colorado? Yes, sir, it did. Were there two specific things that um, you witnessed that were sort of at the heart of these sexual harassment claims? Yes, sir. Uh, did one of those involve Captain Jenkins? Yes, sir. Uh, was that a time when you were at some establishment and there was some drinking involved? Uh, yeah, me and Tisha, uh, me and the defendant showed up for dinner and the, the other person was already there and had been drinking. Yes, sir. The other person being Captain, Captain Jenkins. Jenkins? Yes, sir. Was that one of the issues that the defendant raised as the basis for sexual harassment? Uh, that that situation, yes, or a comment he had made. Okay, and we're not calling Captain Jenkins, so we don't need to get into what he said. Yes, okay. Sir. Uh, and then, as it relates to Colonel Ortega, did you witness a specific event that was an interaction between Lieutenant Colonel Ortega and the defendant? Yes, sir. Uh, what was that specific thing? Let me describe the event. Yes, uh, that so you witnessed. I so I was the S one, which is the personnel officer um, for the battalion. Uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Ortega was the battalion commander. Uh, I was still in the office. Um, the defendant was coming to pick me up because we only had one vehicle in Alaska, and uh, she was coming from the house to pick me up. And when I came out of the building, he was leaning over into the truck talking to her. I, I, I don't know what they were talking about or anything. And then as soon as he saw me, he left, uh, didn't stop and you know communicate with me, just left and walked away. And that was it. Okay. And so did the defendant specifically use that incident as another part of the allegation of sexual harassment? Yes, sir. Did she file a formal complaint with your command? There was a, I don't know, I don't think it was with the command. I think it went through the state. So okay. the Alaska National Guard. I don't, I don't know the specifics of it. The, the, my only involvement was to basically say what I just said. Okay. So what I'm asking you is, um, when I say command, again, I'm, I'm okay. not in, that in, informed on National Guard. Did she inform the National Guard of this complaint of yes. sexual harassment? Yes, sir. And you knew that? Yes, sir. Did that cause you issues in your uh, unit? Yes, sir. And did that uh, eventually lead to you transferring from Alaska? Yes, sir. Was there a time when she specifically sent you a text uh, and told you that she was pregnant? Yes. It, and did that text also include a um, ultrasound picture? Yes. Did she tell you that she was actually pregnant with twins? Yes, sir. Was that another form of manipulation? Yes, sir. Sustained. You can ask him how he felt sure. about it. Um, did you, um, did the defendant ever give birth to twins? No, sir. Uh, did it ever turn out that she was pregnant with twins? No, sir. Sustained. Jury will disregard that answer. Well, did you ever go to any um, doctor's appointments with the defendant? For that specific instance, no. Okay. Um, do you know whether she went to any doctor's appointments for those that specific incident? I'm confident that she did it, no, sir.
So we talked about uh, the sexual harassment um, claim and that causing tension in your unit and that eventually leading to you transferring from Alaska, right? Yes, sir. Uh, when did that actual transfer occur? Uh, like I said previously, I, I when I say boots on ground, I arrived here February 15th, I believe, 2019. And I think you had previously said that the defendant preceded your move to Colorado. Yes, sir. When did she leave Alaska? So she wasn't in Alaska. Um, she came to Alaska for a couple weeks or a month, I think in December of, that would have been 2018. Um, the kids, she brought the kids with her, that being Gannon and Elena and Harley as well. And then we stayed there. Actually, we stayed in a house on uh, one of the bases, like a temporary house. And then, like I told you, they came ahead of me about a month and a half or so. Okay. So you're saying that they got to, they being the defendant and the kids. Yeah, all the names I listed, the defendant, Harley, Gannon, and Elena. Would that have been in January of 2019? I believe they came in January because we did Christmas in Alaska. And um, I think you had previously said that they, that the defendant actually found the 6627 Mandan Drive house and that's where you all moved into. Yes, sir. Do you remember um, the defendant filing burglary um, allegations in 2019? Yes, sir. How many different ones did she file? I believe it was two, to my recollection. One of those specific claims was uh, a burglary in the fall of 2019, correct? Yes, sir. And there were some things that um, she pointed to to you to support these that as being a valid burglary claim. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one of which was a hammer hanging from a string in the garage. Yes, sir. Uh, that included uh, potentially somebody had, had maybe got into the attic access in the garage. A squatter is how she referred to it. Was there ever a squatter in your house? No, sir. No one was ever found. Uh, did you have an ammo can in the house? I did. Yes, sir. Uh, was it dumped out on the floor and made to look as if someone had rummaged through it? Stain, you can ask him wh what he found and what it looked like. Okay. Tell us what you remember about this ammo can. In this specific uh, break-in uh, allegation, the ammo can, I kept it, uh, I think, next to the bed or under the bed or something, <laughs> and it was open and dumped out like somebody had been rummaging through the ammo can. Um, another, the, one of the clothes hampers was dumped out and the bed was kind of pushed, uh, the mattress was pushed off the box spring, just enough to look like somebody had forced their way through that area. Did the defendant tell you that that was another uh, piece of evidence or sign that there had been a burglary in your house? She did. Was there also a gunshot claim? There was. Did this come from the defendant to you? Yes, sir. What did she say about that? She claimed that uh, she fired a one of the weapons, I don't remember which one, up the storm well. Um, that's pretty much what uh, summation okay. of it. So let's talk a little bit about that, oh, one of the weapons you said. Uh, did you have firearms in the house? I did, yes, sir. What kind of weapons? Uh, I had a, a 9 millimeter, uh, a Smith & Wesson 9 millimeter compact. I had a, I don't remember the brand, but it was a black and Tiffany green, uh, nine millimeter, full size. I also had a AR pistol type um, gun. There was a 20 gauge uh, Benelli youth shotgun and a 12 gauge, it was all black shotgun, I forget the brand. And then I think there was at least one Smith & Wesson little 380 uh, compact as well. So when you, when she's telling you that there was a weapon that she fired in the, I think you said the storm well, mm -hmm. is that the window well? Yeah, and, and the specific one was the window well um, next to, if you remember the picture where the computers were, there was a window well right behind those computers. That's the one she said that she fired it out of. 
Did you ever find a shell casing associated with that gunshot? No, sir. In that particular, those uh, pistols that you're talking about, the Smith & Wesson 9mm, that what sounds like a Tiffany green or blue 9mm and that 380, are those semi-automatic handguns? Yes, sir. Are you familiar with semi-automatic handguns? Sir. Have you fired them? Uh, I, I don't know specifically the 380. So what I'm act asking is generalized. Oh, Have just, you yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, when you fire those weapons, does the slide um, automatically slide back and eject the shell casing? Ejects it and then loads the next round into the chamber. Did you ever see any evidence uh, that that gun had been fired in that window well in the basement? No, sir. Did the defendant ever admit to you that she made up those burglary claims? Yes, sir. What did she say? Uh, I don't remember specifics, but... Uh, I don't know how much you wanted me to elaborate, but I, I had to do some digging and eventually I found out that most of the story she had told was just not accurate and she finally admitted to uh, making up the claims of break-ins. I don't remember if she gave a reason or not either. In your mind, was that another attempt or attempts at manipulating what was happening in your relationship? Absolutely. some point um, in 2019, did you and the family get into family counseling? Not family counseling. Um, well, counseling. Yeah, Gannon and Lena specifically. Okay. What about the defendant? To my knowledge, I don't think she had counseling. Okay. Did she make specific comments to you about Gannon that led to you wanting to get Gannon into this counseling? Yeah, that was, there was two reasons, um, and do you want me to elaborate on that? Yes. Okay. As long as these are things that she told you as to things that led you to want to get Gannon into counseling. Yes, sir. One of the reasons is, the, the, one, the other reason was, like I said, said before, he was a mama's boy, and he, 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 both the kids had um, struggles with, you know, we had a little bit of back and forth of custody issues. So that was part of the reason. The other reason is she made a, a claim that he was coming after her to some degree, um, he and, and Gannon her. coming after the defendant to some degree. And so, once again, twofold mission with the counseling. One, to make sure he's dealing with his, you know, the situation with his mom and being apart from her. And then also the counseling should uncover anything else that's going on or any disdain he had for the defendant. Who was the defendant closer to as far as the two little kids? So Gannon and Lena. Lena, undoubtedly. Did you say undoubtedly? Absolutely, she was. Whose idea was it to move Gannon to the basement? It was mine. Okay. Did you ever witness um, Gannon displaying any behavior uh, that would support the claim that Gannon had it out for the defendant? Absolutely not towards no one. I, I absolutely never witnessed that, period. Did you ever take uh, family trips together? With the defendant and the three children? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, specifically, was there a trip in early January? January. Of 2020? That would have been just myself and the defendant. Okay. What was that trip? Uh, it was to celebrate our anniversary, and we went on a cruise out of southern Florida. Did you need a passport for that cruise? Mm, I don't believe so. No, sir. Did you ever take any trips with the defendant that required a passport? Um, I don't remember specifically. We we had one when we went through Canada just to get it stamped, just for you know remembrance. I don't remember specifically. Well, we did. We went to Mexico. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I forgot about that. That's okay. So the that leads to this question: Did you have a passport? I did. Yes, sir. Uh, when you would. You said you went to Canada mm -hmm. to get it stamped? Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no? Yes, sir. Uh, when you went to Mexico, did you get your passport stamped? Yes, sir. Did the defendant, did you see her with a passport? Uh, it, it, with, in Mexico, yes. Uh, did, did she get that passport stamped in Mexico? I, I don't remember. I, I would assume it would have had to have been because um, okay. we went to a resort in Mexico. So, But you know for a fact that she did have a passport? She did, absolutely.
in this, in, and I'm going to ask you to give me a more specific timeline, but in late 2019, early 2020, where was the defendant working at that time? Early 2020, I don't know, but late 2019, she was employed, uh, I believe it's Whitefield School District 3 and French Elementary School, as I referenced earlier. Um, she was attempting, is what she Well, let me, let me get to that. I'll get to that in just a second. Yes. Um, so she was working in late 2019 at Whitefield School District. Mm -hmm. That's yes, it? Yes, okay. Um, and again, that's for our court reporter. Absolutely. She'll get mad at me in a minute if, I, if we keep doing that. Um, was she enjoying her work there? She was not. Did she tell you that? Absolutely. What did she tell you? She had uh, a conflict um, based on her educational status. She had a conflict with a uh, principal where she thought she was more educated and should have more of a leadership role. Um, and, and, and then just other stuff surrounding that. I don't remember specifics, but. So let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, when you said that she had a conflict uh, because she felt like she was more educated, you mean the defendant felt like she was more educated than the principal? Yes, the defendant, yes, sir. Did you ever go to French Elementary School? I did, yes, sir. How many times did you go visit her there? I don't remember exactly, but I would cook lunch and take her lunch for her and her coworkers. And um, you can elaborate on that a little bit? So just you would go there and take lunch? Yeah, with her and, and sit and eat sometimes with her. Sometimes I would drop it off. Yes, did sir. you see her interactions with people at the school? Yes, sir. Did you see any um, problems with anybody at the school? Not with her, the team that she was always with. That um, conflict that you described with her and the principal, um, did that lead to her uh, manipulating, in your mind, getting out of that particular school? In my mind, it did in, in accompanying with uh, an injury claim she had as well. Did Although, she, t okay, so let's ask, I'm gonna ask you about that. Okay. Did she specifically tell you about um, uh, some allegations she made about being injured at the school? Yes, sir. What did she tell you? That she was standing on a bench or standing on the bookshelf or something, but she fell and a bookshelf fell and hit her in the head and she had a, a head injury from that. Did you ever see any signs um, on the defendant of being injured um, from either falling or having a bookshelf fall on her head? No, sir. Did that lead you to believe that this was another manipulation by the defendant? Yes, sir. Did she tell you um, what kind of work she was hoping to get into? Yes, sir. What was that? Uh, she always had talked about wanting to be a airline flight attendant, and so I think from what I understand, she started pursuing that uh, late 2019 uh, through the Christmas holiday and into early 2020. Who was she pursuing employment with? Spirit Airlines. Where is Spirit Airlines out of, to your knowledge? I, I have no clue. I know she went to Orlando, Florida for Spirit Airlines training is what she told me. When did that happen? Uh, January, uh, no, uh, I think shortly after Christmas, within a day or two after Christmas 2019. Um, and it was a short trip. You mentioned earlier uh, when we were first talking about um, the weekend of January 25th, Saturday, Sunday, January 26th, um, your mom being in town. Yes, sir. Uh, when did your mom get into ha into town here in Colorado Springs? She was here for about a week, if I remember correctly. I don't remember a specific date, but she was there, I think, that whole week. Did she stay in a hotel or at the house? At the house. Where did she sleep? Oh, I don't remember that specific time where she slept. Okay. Um, you mentioned that there was Gannon's bed in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. Let's say yes or no. Yes, I'm sorry. And then there was a second bed in Gannon's bedroom? Yes. And then there was a bedroom bed in Harley's bedroom? Yes. There was the master bedroom. Yes. And then you had couches both downstairs and upstairs. Do you remember uh, with that in mind where your mother slept when she visited you in? in... I, I still don't. Not that okay. specific visit. Okay. How were you and the defendant getting along 
during this period of time when your mom was visiting? Not well. How was the defendant uh, interacting with your mom? I think it was fine or peaceful. I don't, I don't remember it being there any negativity. Was there anything out of the ordinary? I don't, I don't remember. You mentioned um, going up to DIA on January 25th after having dinner and all that sort of stuff. Is that the last time you saw Gannon alive? Yes, sir. Did you say anything to him? Yeah, he was, um, we were at the top of the stairs and uh, I was getting ready to leave with mom and uh, me and Gannon were at the top of the stairs and I just gave him a hug and I always used to rub my fingers through his hair and. Uh, just told him I love you and uh, something I would always tell the kids when I had to leave or when they would go back to their mom's house was like, you know, you're always, you're always going to be in my heart and I'm always going to be in your heart. And I'll see you when I get back. And he's like, okay, daddy, love you. And I'm going to finish watching Pokemon. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yep. We got into this a little bit earlier about the phones, and I asked you specifically about the phone that was assigned to Gannon and Lena, uh, and whether law enforcement asked you for access to that phone. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Attorney, may I approach? You may. Yeah, I remember. Oh, sorry. You recognize this? Absolutely, that's their phone. What is this? That's Gannon and Lena's phone from that time period. Um, does it appear to be changed at all? It does not. Okay. Now I move for admission of People's 228. No objection. Exhibit 228 will be admitted. I asked you earlier about um, when you would take trips together. Uh, do you remember taking a uh, trip to Hawaii? Yes, sir. When did that occur? Um, you okay? Yes. Is there a Kleenex up there? Yeah, I got some. Okay. Um, I think 2018 spring, it was right before that volcano erupted. So I think it was spring of 2018. Who went on that trip? Uh, the defendant, myself, uh, all three children, Harley, Gannon, and Elena. Do you remember um, a, taking a video of Gannon in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, we took multiple pictures and videos, yes, sir. May I approach? You may. Excuse me. Take it out of the sleeve. You can do that. Excuse me. I recognize it. I recognize my initials right there. What is the like exhibit fifty? Uh, now I also see the date of when I initialed it. It says Facebook video of Gannon Stalk. Is this a video of, of Gannon in Hawaii? I believe so, yes, sir. And you saw the content? I did, it? yes, sir. Is it a fair and accurate uh, copy of that recording from Gannon in Hawaii? Yes, sir. Can I move for admission of People's 50? Amy? Your approach. Is there an objection? Yes, yeah, it's, it's relevant. 
Ellen? You want me to say it from here? Uh, he asked if we. Yeah. Sure. Mr. Allen. Yep. So we'll come back to that in in a moment, Al. Mr. Allen, you need to refer to the witness by Mr. Stout. Okay. I want to go back to what we were asking or what I was asking you about earlier about um, the defendant telling you that Gannon had it out for her. Uh, did she make a specific comment to you about Gannon and a knife? Yes, sir. To you? Yes, sir. What was that comment? Uh, something about he had threatened her with a knife or came at her with a knife. Did you ever see Gannon threaten anybody with a knife? No threats ever out of Gannon. Knife or no knife. And was that right before um, you got getting into counseling in 2019? Yes, sir. I want to ask you about <clears throat> specifically, I asked you earlier about trips that you would take together. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned um, that the defendant was trying to get a job with Spirit Airlines. Yes, sir. Uh, did she like to travel? She loved to travel, yes, sir. Uh, did she like to travel to Disney? Yes, sir. Did you ever go with her to Disney? Uh, yes, sir, in various configurations of family, I should say. Did she ever take any other trips that you were aware of, either with you or without you? Yes, sir. Uh, did um, did you take cruises with her to the Caribbean? Yes, sir. Did she ever take any cruises to the Caribbean by herself that you knew about? 
I don't know about buyer stuff. I know with just Harley, I know she took a few. Okay. What about to Australia? Never heard of a trip to Australia. No, sir. What about a trip to Bogota, Colombia? Never heard of a trip to Bogota, Colombia either, sir. What about Jamaica? Don't know about Jamaica. Uh, like I said, she went on trips to the Caribbean, so I can't, can't attest to that. Okay. Um, you mentioned that cruise in Florida in, um, I think you said in January 2020 to celebrate your uh, anniversary. Yes, sir. That was just you and the defendant? Yes, sir. Uh, did you take other cruises together? Uh, yes, sir. Did you take a cruise in Southern California? Uh, we, yeah, we left out of Southern California, went to um, Ensenada. When was that roughly? While I was in Alaska. I don't remember exactly. So between 2017 and 2018, somewhere. Did you take another um, cruise with the defendant in uh, the summer of 2019? We did, yes, sir. Who was on that trip? Uh, myself, the defendant, Harley, and Gannon, and I think one of Harley's friends as well. You mentioned taking a trip to Mexico. When was that? That was that would have been right before I went to Oklahoma for six months, so 2016. Where in Mexico did you go? Cancun. Was the defendant with you? Yes. Was she with you the, I mean, besides going to the bathroom or shopping or something like that, was she basically with you the whole time during that trip? Yeah, there was one time I I was sleeping and she said she went out and got dinner. Other than that, I think we were together 90% of the, I mean, a majority of the trip. Did she ever tell you about waking up in a tent with cartel members? Never heard that story from her mouth, sir. No. Did you ever have um, stressors in your relationship between you and the defendant as it relates to finances? Yes, sir. What kind of lifestyle did the defendant want to live while you were with her? Based on things that either she told you or that you saw? Uh, I mean, a classic example is she always compared herself and wanted to be like Kim Kardashian. That was kind of her main thing that she uh, looked towards. Uh, I, th I think a best way to sum it up is always wanted to live above our means. To live above your means? Yes, sir. That's a good way to sum it up. Did you uh, agree to being uh, living above your means? There was, there was examples where I gave and there was examples where I didn't. But was that ultimately a source of tension between you and the defendant? Yes, sir. Did she ever accuse you of um, infidelity or cheating? Yes, sir. I want to ask you about uh, that storage room. Uh, was it typical that you would keep um, luggage in that storage room? Yes, sir. Do you remember any specific suitcases that were kept in there? Yeah, there was like a reddish orange one. They had some flowery, I, I don't know how to explain it, but some some patterns on it. Um, there was a large green one. I'd say extra large green one, actually. Um, there was a few smaller, like carry-on size black um, suitcases. So we, we had quite a few. Where did the large green one come from? Uh, I believe that, well, I know for a fact it came from... Uh, Landon, which is Gannon's mother, her aunt Veronica, uh, Landon took a trip there at some point in mine and Landon's relationship, and she came back with that suitcase full of clothes. And I, I just kept it after me and Landon split up. Where And was that also stored in that storage room? It was. <laughs> Did you ever use that large green suitcase on trips? I used it more so when, when I moved or PCS'd. I don't remember using it on a trip or vacation because um, it was just too big. Do you remember being shown a picture of a suitcase under a bridge in Florida? Yes, sir. Did you recognize that suitcase? Yes, sir. What did you recognize it as? That same uh, extra large green suitcase from my house. I want to have you flip to People's Exhibit number 48 in that uh, notebook.
Yes, sir. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. What is that a picture of? That's a picture of that uh, extra large green suitcase we've been discussing. Um, under a bridge? Uh, I can see the, the footings of the bridge. I can't really see the over the bridge structure itself, but. Does that appear to be the same suitcase that we've been talking about that uh, Landon's Aunt Veronica gave uh, to Landon when you and Landon were married? Yes, sir. That was stored in the storage room? Yes, sir. You know, I move for admission of People's Exhibit 48. No objection. Exhibit 48 will be admitted. Go ahead. And may we publish? Oh, there we go. What do you remember um, about that suitcase other than it being large? Um, there was a few things that were broken on it. Um, I don't know. If, I, I remember. I don't know if the wheel was, but I think the handle on the other side was broken. There was a few things that had just worn down over time on it. Um, but the size is is the big thing. I remember how uh, how large the suitcase was. So. Okay. All right. Um. I may approach. You may. Been marked as People's Exhibit Number Thirty Three. Obviously, a disc. Do you recognize this disc? I do. Okay. How do you recognize it? Uh, because I initialed and dated it thirty one March. Did you watch the contents of this disc? I did. Is it a fair and accurate representation of a video um, that you have seen? Yes. Okay. I move for admission of People's Exhibit Thirty Three. Defense. Okay. Exhibit 33 will be admitted. Go ahead. Okay, permission to publish on it? You may. Uh, it, it, we need the screen, Judge. It's not, you're not feeding yet. I have a pre screen up here so that I can see. Okay. I just don't know what to do. Well, devastating. Initially, Scott, I can't lie when the TMZ information. Shannon, I promise this is the last time I'm going to ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? Okay, you promise. You promise. Pinky promise. Okay. All right. So listen, listen. We're all right. I'm, we're gonna have to sell stuff to fix it. Okay. So we figure out what we gotta sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever because we gotta get it fixed. So the lady, don't be mad at us and kick aside the house. Okay. You got it. You got it. I'm just worried about my. Okay. Shh. Listen. 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 So tomorrow. Council approach for a moment, please.
pray. Mr. Allen. Too, I just don't know what to do. Lena, absolutely. And then the email voice that you hear on that recording, who is that? Tisha, no, excuse me, the defendant. And then the um, other voice that you hear towards the end, uh, whose voice is that? Those are the last words I ever heard Gannon speak. I want to have you jump back into that binder, Mr. Stouck, and look at people's exhibits 19 and 20. The ones I mistakenly tried to admit without any foundation earlier. Do you recognize those? 19 and 20, yes, sir. Are those, um, well, what are they? Those are two different angles, pictures of Gannon in his bed. How, uh, have you seen those pictures before? I have, yes, sir. When did you see them? Uh, I, I don't want to mix it up. I know I've seen them in um, through various things, but uh, one of these specifically or at least one, if not both, the defendant sent to me that morning, which would have been uh, Monday the 27th. Okay, so we're talking about January 27th of 2020? Yes, sir. Um, and then you received those specifically from the defendant? Yes, sir. How? What What method did you receive them from? Text message. Text message. Are they fair and accurate uh, copies of the, the photos that you received on January 27, 2020? Yes, sir. All right, move for admission and permission to publish 19 and 20. Mr. Cellini? Exhibits 19 and 20 will be admitted. So I think we have uh, people's exhibit 19 up on the screen now. Uh, tell the jury what we're looking at in people's 19. So once again, that's uh, Gannon in his bed. Um, I, I referenced the TV off to the left. You can see it here, a TV and a, a, his dresser. The table we discussed earlier, and then uh, once again, there's Gannon in his bed. Is that typically um, the way Gannon would sleep in his bed with the blankets uh, just piled on top like that? Uh, no, sir. There was a couple things I noticed that were different. There seems to be a big, I don't know, pillow or bulge or something down here. I don't remember this red and green blanket actually being on his bed. We've discussed that. I, I, I don't remember that. Okay. I can't say 100% that it, it wasn't ever, but. Um, and then. Um, People's 20? This is basically just another depiction of that same scene? Yeah, it, it appears to be. Um, I, mean, I think it's different, though, because if is it okay if I show well, the what? Or? Let me ask you this. Um, what is there a difference between the two photos based on your observation? Yeah, absolutely. It? What are those differences? If you, if you look at his where his hand is here. And if you look, if we can go back to the other one, his hands are in a totally different place, position. See how his hands are crossed right here? The blanket's kind of pulled back a little bit. Um, and then a, a huge, huge thing to me was his bed was almost never pulled away from the wall like this. And we discussed that in a previous photo, um, that his bed was almost always pushed up against the wall. Um, and then that, um, the bulge that you referenced in the other photo, in people's 19. Same as right here, yep, right there. And then 20. Right here. I noticed that difference as well. And um, do you even recognize that particular blanket or was you recognize it, but you don't think it was typically on Gannon's bed? Yeah, that blanket is one that was in our house somewhere. I just don't think it was a typical blanket. It wasn't his. It was not his. It was not his blanket and it was not typically on his bed. Okay. You can take that down for now. I want to jump back, Mr. Stout, to when we were talking about your trip to Hawaii in 2018. 
And I previously showed you people's exhibit number 50, which was that disc. I think I might have left it up here. Let me check, actually. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This time I move for admission of people. Request permission to publish. Mr. Tolini. Subject to prior objection. Uh, objections. That was me. I hit the mic. Okay. All right. The objections are overruled. Exhibit 50 is admitted. And permission to publish, huh? You may. So before we start playing um, People's Exhibit 50, um, who's who is who do we see on screen there? That's Gary. Go ahead and play it. Where are you at? In Hawaii, go. When you got back from Oklahoma, Mr. Stout, did you participate in searches for Gaiman? Yes, sir. Tell the jury about what you did to, to look for Gaiman. Um, the first day, which would have been Tuesday, 28th, uh, left the airport and then came home and just got somewhat organized. And then there was a story about Gaiman running away or walking away and there was somebody said they might have seen him at a gas station in fountain and so so let me ask you um specifically um you don't know whether that was a true statement or not correct in the moment i didn't um no okay but did that cause you to go do things to see if that was in fact a legitimate sighting of gaming yes sir what did you do i myself and the defendant in my truck my red nissan truck uh, drove to that gas station. I went in, well, I think I met the officer there, uh, if I remember correctly, and uh, went in and watched whatever the, he allowed me to watch the footage of uh, what boy that had, was alleged to be Gannon coming in and out of the store. And so I could confirm if it was him or not. Was it Gannon? Uh, it was not. It was another boy with his father that, or, or whatever, another boy with an uh, older man. Just wasn't Gannon? It just was not Gannon, no, sir. What else did you specifically do? Um, to look for Gannon? Uh, there was times when I, after the day was over, I'd drive around at night just seeing if I could spot him. Uh, that specific, uh, I believe it was Tuesday as well, I um, had been downtown to the sheriff's office giving an interview and then came back home and uh, checked on the girls, being Harley and Lena, and then uh, told them I was going out searching again and uh, went, went to... Uh, the Walmart and Fountain. I was heading to the Walmart and Fountain. Um, just maybe he's in the video game section or or GameStop or something. Um, thinking of places he would be, and uh, then it uh, occurred to me, or I remembered that the defendant had said her car was at uh, French Elementary School, and so I I never actually went to Walmart. I went directly to French Elementary School to look for her vehicle. And you previously told us that you didn't see her vehicle there? Absolutely not. I drove around the school three times just to make sure I wasn't missing it. Did she ever tell you where her car actually was? Never did. That was the only thing she ever told me was that I left it at French Elementary School. Um, <clears throat> at some point, did, based on things that you're learning, did it, did you, in your mind, did it change from Gannon didn't come home from a friend's house to something different? That was really the key moment. There, there was a lot of things we've discussed a num new number of them, some discrepancies in the pictures, um, the, uh, the 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 rent a car situation. Um, I think I had already known at that point that um, I had talked to my neighbors and surveillance from their house. He had never walked in here. Same. Same. Well, I think he what he's describing, judges, 
what he saw on surveillance. You can't you you can't talk about what your neighbor said to you, but you can describe what you saw on the surveillance tape. Okay. So two different circumstances. This is not the surveillance tape of the truck. This is. Let me ask a question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, did you have an occasion to see surveillance video from neighbors in your neighborhood? Did you? Yes. Okay. Um, did you see um, Gannon ever walking away on that videos on those videos from your house and never returning? I did not. No, sir. Okay. So back to. So the, well, I okay. have to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> um. So you were earlier describing an accumulation of things that led you to change your opinion or your mind as to what actually happened with Gannon. Yes, sir. Uh, and you said I think the one of the big things was. The defendant telling you that her car was at French, you go to French, and it's not there. Yes, sir. Is that accurate? Yeah, that was the key moment when I switched from she knows more than she's telling me she knows. Did you also participate in um, interviews at the sheriff's office as it relates to the investigation into Gannon's disappearance? I did, yes, sir. How many times did you go to the sheriff's office? Twice on that day, once before the uh, driving to French, and then immediately following that, I called them and said something's wrong. And I went immediately back to the sheriff's office after that. In that same time frame, um, did the defendant add any additional information that she told to you uh, as it relates to Gannon's missing? I don't believe so. I don't think so. Well, did she at some point tell you that she was raped? That was the next morning. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, what did she say about being raped? I'm not sure the date. Yeah, sure, I'll clarify. Um, we were talking about uh, January 28th. Yes, sir. Just Tuesday. now about yeah. you doing interviews at the sheriff's office. You said the next morning, so that would be January 29th. Is that accurate? Wednesday, January 29th. Yes, sir. <laughs> what did the defendant tell you on January 29th as it relates to being raped? So she, I, I slept on the couch. She called me into the room, and then she proceeded to tell me a story about how um, a, a man got in the house somehow. I don't remember that specific version, but he got in the house, raped her, abused her, beat her, and then beat Gannon up and took Gannon. Um, and you want me to keep going on that specific? I want you to tell what she said in that particular story. Right. And then so and then he she also said um, he had got burned um, and, and, and that. And then she said that uh, well, I said, well, where's everything at? Like all the mess, you know, the blood and everything. She said, "Well, I cleaned it up. I got scared, and so okay. Well, where's the, the, uh, the, the bloody mess? The clothes, the, the, the rags, whatever. Uh, well, I disposed of it. Well, where's, where did you dispose of it? Um, it wasn't in the trash can at the house. It was somewhere else. And it was just this long string of stuff. Um, okay. So let me let me break in there. Sure. <clears throat> It sounds like the way you're describing that, that's a discussion that you had specifically with her where you're asking her questions and she's responding to your questions. Well, there was two parts, and that's why I asked you about elaborating. The first one was just her talking. Okay. And so, but the, the last part that you just described, it sounded like you were describing an interaction where you're asking questions and she's answering questions. Yes, and at this point, Landon was also sitting in there talking with us as well, just okay. to clarify. Um, when you had the opportunity to view uh, neighbors, um, I guess, ring doorbells or surveillance videos, uh, did you see any strange men on those videos going to your house? So to clarify, I did, and, and I was, it was stopped because it was hearsay, but I, did never, I never saw surveillance of him leaving or not leaving on foot. The, I'm sure we'll get to the other surveillance later, but I never saw that. That was just what the neighbors told me. So what I, what I'm asking you right now, Al, or Mr. Stalk, I apologize, is did you see on any of the neighborhood um, video any strange men going into or out of your house? Yes, sir. When I think he just said he never watched any videos. This was just what the neighbors had told him. That's not what he said. No, he's he overruled. When we asked the question. Yep. Just so the record is very clear, okay. did you watch surveillance video um, from neighbors in your neighborhood to see anything as it relates to Gannon's disappearance? Uh, no, sir. You didn't watch well, any videos? Well, I did watch the one video with the truck, but we, I, I don't think we've gotten there yet. Are we there? I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know where we're at. Okay. Mr. Allen, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. What I'm asking is very specifically, did you watch some neighborhood video from neighborhood surveillance video? 
about the time that Gannon went missing. I watched one, and that was him leaving the truck and coming back home. That's okay. the only one I watched. Okay. So you didn't watch any other videos to see, um, to either confirm or uh, not confirm that a strange man had come into the... I, I've seen nothing okay. else. All right. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, at some point, did you uh, become involved in the investigation? Yes, sir. Tell the jury about that. Uh, at some point, and I, I don't know the reasons why, but I was directed to go to the FBI's office and uh, start, um, you know, being, I, I call it being questioned, but just kind of given a background history of, of, you know, our relation, mine and the defendant's relationship and, you know, kind of what we've been doing so far this morning. And from that, uh, it turned into um, pretext phone calls. Okay. What do you mean by pretext phone calls? Uh, phone calls where uh, I would um, get on the phone with the defendant while I was at the FBI office and uh, be giving direction, and and they also gave me the flexibility to talk with her normally, but be giving direction on things to say and things to ask and, and whatnot. Who was involved <clears throat> with that process? Obviously you were, but who else from the investigation side was involved in that process. So, of course, yeah, I was there, the defendant was on the phone, and then there was, Mark Riley was present. Um, so, I'm gonna break in every time you say a name. Who is Mark Riley? Mark Riley, um, I think a detective at the sheriff's office or investigator, okay. I, I'm not sure his role at the time. Uh, Bethel, Jess Bethel, a similar role to Mr. Riley, from what I understand. Um, FBI agent, uh, Mr. Hughes, um, I, I don't know his title. A specific title. Um, Amber Cronin. Uh, Who was Amber Cronin with? Uh, FBI as well. Um, John, I, I always say his name around Grusling or Grusling. Grusling? Uh, with the FBI. Um, I, I saw in passing other agents, but those were the ones that I remember being specifically in there. I, there may have been others. I don't remember specifically. Do you remember um, maybe like this agent back here, Andrew uh, Cohen? I remember him walking around a lot. I don't remember him being specifically on any with me on any of the phone calls. Um, I may be wrong about that, but would these phone calls originate um, sometimes by you calling the defendant, mm -hmm. and other times where the defendant would call you? Yes, sir. Um, how do you know that it was the defendant on the other end of that phone? I recognize her voice, and and we would always talk about something relevant that would you know I would know it was her, whether it was Gannon or something about our relationship or or our life in general. Would you also, in those conversations, talk about um, specifics to the investigation? Yes, sir. Uh, would the FBI agents or the sheriff's office agents, um, detectives, pass information to you to specifically ask the defendant? Yes, sir. On some of those recorded phone calls, can you actually hear people whispering to you? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And Judge, uh, what I intend to get into next is uh, admitting uh, discs and then playing those discs and some of these phone calls are pretty long I don't know if you want to go through the admission now and then we can do that other process when we get back or so I, are any of them less than say 15 minutes I, because of contextual issues I think it makes sense to play them in order as opposed to breaking them up uh, the very first one is an hour and 57 minutes all right so let's do the uh, do the foundational um, elements necessary for admission okay um, and then we can uh, play them after lunch. And probably just admit all of them at the same time yep. and then go from there. And so for the record, Judge, uh, what I'll be showing him for admission is People's Exhibits 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 51, 52, 53, 54, 
55, 56, 57, 58, and 59. Okay. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may go ahead. If I can stay with your witness. Please. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, People's Exhibit 35. Obviously, a disc again. Do you recognize it? To the front of it. Yes, my initials and the date. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to this recording that's on this disc? Yes. Is it a fair and accurate representation of that phone call? Yes, sir. People's Exhibit 36, do you have your initials and date on that one as well? Yes, sir. Did you listen to this recording? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate representation of that recording? Yes, sir. People's 37, are your initials and date on this? Yes, sir. Have you had a chance to listen to this item? Yes. Is it a fair and accurate representation of that recording? Yes. People's 38, do you have your initials and date? Yes, sir. Uh, have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it a fair and accurate representation? Yes, sir. 39, do you have your initials and date? Yes. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 40, are you going to date on this? Yes. Have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 51, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Uh, have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 52, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 53, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Fair and accurate? Yes. 54, uh, date and initials on this disc? Uh, yes. Uh, have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 55, are your initials on this disc? Yes. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. 56, are your initials on this disc? Yes. You listen to the contents? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 57, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Did you listen to the contents? Yes, sir. Fair and accurate? Yes, sir. Tedious, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Uh, You see your initials and date on this disc? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. You didn't identify that one. Oh, I'm sorry, 58. Thank you. Go ahead. And then 59, initials and date? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. And is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. Uh, this time I move for admission of those exhibit numbers. I can reread them or if you have them. I, I have them. Mr. Tolini? No, sir. All right, exhibits 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59 will be admitted. Um, council approach, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think you know where this is going and what my conversation was about. Um, we are going to take our lunch break a little bit early. Uh, we'll have you come back a little bit early, too. And when we come back, uh, we will be playing, it sounds like, uh, the uh, telephone calls uh, one after the other. Um, so if I can have everyone back in the jury rooms uh, at about 1.15 so that we can start at, uh, say, 1.20, um, again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not do any research about any aspect of this case. Do not discuss the case with anyone else either. Um, Mr. Combs had uh, relayed to me a question uh, by a juror as to whether or not you can receive a transcript at the end of the trial. The answer to that is no. The transcript is for other purposes. Um, uh, no jury is ever provided with a transcript of the court proceedings as they are occurring. So you'll have to rely on your individual and collective memory as well as uh, any notes that you take, but you will not receive a uh, transcript. 
Um, so with that, uh, I think it's still a nice day. We're not to tomorrow yet when it's not supposed to be. So if you want to take a walk around the courthouse, something like that, uh, that would be a good thing to do. Again, you already know where all of the uh, uh, eating joints are uh, here in Colorado Springs. And we'll see you back at uh, about 1.15. All rise for the jury, please.
stomach incident previously already in, in, in this general time frame. Okay. So based on context, you were able to determine that the, at least from the defendant's phone uh, is a text saying that Gannon is bleeding out of his yes. butt. Yes. Had that ever occurred before? If there was any, I mean, so he, I, I, and I mentioned this previously, he did have a stomach issue where he gets severely constipated and would have, not to be too graphic, but have, you know, some large um, pieces of, of stool that was hard to pass. And, and he may have a little bit of blood in the stool or, or a, you know, but he would never bleed like a gush or drip or anything like that. It would just be a drop or something associated with that. So nothing serious um, uh, like this. Okay. Can you find a text um, at 8, 10 a.m. that has a reference to lighting a candle, Gannon lighting a candle? What date, Mr. Allen? Same day. Same day. I'll, if I change the day, I'll tell you, but okay. 8, 10 a.m. Thank you. Uh, 8, 10 a.m. I don't see 8, 10 a.m. about the candle. Well, do you generally remember getting a text from the defendant's phone uh, referencing that Gannon lit a candle because he um, because of the smell from poop? Uh, yes, I remember that. Did, was that odd to you that um, purportedly Gannon would light a candle? Yeah, I, I don't remember him ever playing or lighting candles on his own accord. Okay. Uh, if he was directed to, maybe, but never, you know, going in and doing mm -hmm. that on his own. Next thing I want to um, ask you about is, were you aware uh, from the defendant um, about the defendant taking Gannon and Lena hiking at Garden of the Gods on the 26th? Sir. What did the defendant tell you about that hiking trip? Uh, I believe there was some talk about him pooping in his pants or having an accident uh, during that hiking, somewhere in that afternoon that they went hiking. Did the defendant express any frustration with that incident? I, I don't remember. For, I don't know if frustration is right. Where I don't remember what the, the feeling was that she displayed, but there was a conversation about it. Well, how would you characterize the way that she was expressing that story to you? I, I mean, I, I can speak more generally. I, I just know that it, it was a, it was always a frustrating or, or she didn't like to have to clean it up and, and or, or deal with that part of Gannon. Having to clean up after yeah, he had, when he had an accident. Okay. Yeah. And then we already had previously talked about you got a text message on the 28th in the morning, two text messages actually with those pictures of Gannon in bed. From the bedroom, yes, sir. Do you remember that? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> when you got back to Colorado from Oklahoma, did you meet with detectives at a Starbucks? Yes, the Starbucks in Fountain, yes, sir. Was that on January 28th, 2020? So the so so, Tuesday, yes, sir. It was Tuesday the 28th, yes, sir. Okay. Who was with you when you went to that Starbucks? Uh, myself and the defendant. I mean, and then whatever detectives were there. I don't remember specifically. I think there was two or three, but okay. uh, as far as our side goes, it was my, myself and the defendant. The phone that we admitted earlier, Gannon's phone, is that when you gave that phone to the detectives so that they could use it for investigative purposes? I believe so, but I don't remember specifically when I turned it over to them. Okay. What was, um, what did you tell the detectives at that time? Um, and I'm asking in a general sense. Obviously, you probably don't remember word for word. Yeah, I know we're working through he's missing and what we had done so far, I think, and, and what I knew about what I had done as far as like calling his friend's parents and, you know, calling his mom and stuff like that. I remember that being a part of it, I think. Um, also, we had his Nintendo Switch box because he was. It, so let me let me stop you there and okay. we'll, we'll get to some of that. OK, um, when you said. What you had done as a result of, of he being missing, you're talking about Gannon. Yes, sir. Just for the record again. Um, were you sitting at the same table as the defendant during that time? We were. We were sitting side by side. Yes, sir. Were you able to hear what she was telling to the detectives? Yes, sir. 
What did she tell the detectives about Gannon's disappearance? I don't remember specifically, but it was all centered around him being missing or running away, not coming home, That the storyline up to that point. Well, okay, so what we had talked about earlier was um, that he had gone to a friend's house and had not come home? Right. Yes, sir. Same thing? Yes, sir. She was telling the same story at that time? Yes, sir. And then we talked earlier about you going to the sheriff's office to give an interview. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And then you had a follow-up interview at the sheriff's office as well? Yes, sir. Did those both occur on January 28th? Uh, yes, sir. When you went uh, the first time, where was the defendant at that time? I, I do not know. Uh, I, I went because... Um, so... Okay. Yep. Do you, so you don't know where the defendant was? I do not. She Did she go with you to the sheriff's office? No, sir. Okay. What did you tell the sheriff's office detectives during that interview? I don't remember all the specifics. I've, I, I have heard the interview, but I don't remember all the specifics. Um, I, was, I know I was more vague with what I was telling them about mine and the defendant's relationship because uh, I didn't. Um, this was before I went to search for the black car or before I went to search for the defendant's car. So I didn't really suspect anything for you. Like I mentioned previously, that black car was really, or the looking, the search for that black car was really what changed my mind about what was going on. Um, so I, I was just trying to find my son at that point. I didn't think anything else really was going on. I thought he was just missing. So once again, I don't remember all the specifics. I just remember I was more vague about whatever was going on um, in, my, in my life, so. So, um... Again, just to making make sure that we're all clear, mm -hmm. the defendant didn't go with you to the sheriff's office. No, sir. Did you reiterate basically the same story that um, Gannon was missing and hadn't come home? I believe I did, yes, sir. And it sounds like what you're describing is that you were telling this in a more general sense because of all of the things that you were talking about. Yes, sir. Okay. And then it was after that, based on the way you just said that, that you went to look for the defendant's car at French Elementary School? Yeah, I, like I said this morning, I, I left that first interview, went home, checked on the girls, and then went out to search again uh, to Walmart, looking, planning on going to the game section or whatever. And then it hit me to go look for the car at French Elementary School. Wasn't there, and I didn't get too far out of the parking lot of French before I called. I think I got a hold of Bethel, is who it was, and said, hey, something's wrong. And I started, I was actually freaking out pretty hard. And they're like, calm down, just come on, come back downtown. And that's when I did the second interview. So <clears throat> what was it about you not finding the car at French Elementary School that caused you to, as you just now described it, to freak out? Uh, well, two things. It was a flat out lie in my estimation. Uh, that's my perspective. Because um, she told me the car was there and never told me she had moved the car. Um, and a few other things, and once again, I don't want to get into hearsay, but things I didn't see that people had told me. I, put, I was putting all these pieces together and then that was the first lie I, I in my mind, I had confirmed. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, come on. That's his thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying. So, um, <laughs> there's a lot here. Yeah. And um, obviously, we're talking about your son yes. and understand that this is a stressful moment for you, uh, having to recollect this from three years ago. Um, really listen to what the question is and just answer that question, okay? Um, when you went to look for the defendant's car at French Elementary School, did you find it? No. Did that um, cause you to change your opinion as to, along with other things like you said this morning, as to the nature of Gannon's disappearance? Absolutely, yes, sir. When you went to the sheriff's office that second time, so later in the evening on January 28th, um, did you specifically tell the detectives what you thought uh, was in the defendant's car based on the information you had? Yeah, I made a statement to them about, uh, they asked me that question and I just replied with what I thought I was going to find in the car. What did you think you were going to find if you found the car? I think my hope was to find Gannon. Um, you know, uh, that was the whole point of searching was to find Gannon. So, so you thought Gannon might be in that car? I had no clue, but that's what I, that's what I said to them. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay.
And then if you can flip in those text messages to January 29th at 7.19 a.m. Sir, I believe I'm here. Do you see text messages on, on that time frame um, from the defendant? Yes, sir. Do you see any text messages uh, wherein you're getting text messages about a rape? About what? Rape. You said January 29th, 720 a.m. or 719 a.m. We're, we're not publishing. Oh, you did. Oh, sorry. Had been admitted, so I thought that's what you wanted. I thought we did it, Judge. <laughs> no, it was me. I don't. And as always the case with technology, now the screen is black on this computer. <laughs> So while I'm trying to get this computer up, Mr. Stout, do you remember when it was that you were notified from the defendant about a rape story? I'm not asking you to look at the text message. Yes, You're absolutely. Uh, it's in relation to these texts. She was asking me to come talk to her in the bedroom through the text message. Uh, as I stated this morning, I was sleeping on the couch. She was in the bedroom. And then I finally gave in and went in and uh, uh, accepted her request to talk. And that's when she uh, started telling the first rape story. What did she tell you about a rape story? Uh, the first story was, uh, that, like I said, she had got raped. Uh, the person, uh, you know, there was, you know, not just the sexual part, but she had been beat up or whatever. Uh, and then Gannon also had been uh, beat up and, uh, you know, he talked about his burns and all that stuff as well. And then Gannon was taken by this person um, that it happened in Gannon's bedroom and, that she cleaned up the mess. And uh, I think that was the brunt of the first version of the story. Did she tell you where that rape had occurred? Yes, sir. I, I think you were messing with computers, but uh, yeah. it, she, it happened in. It was. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she said it specifically happened in Gannon's bedroom. Did you go into the bedroom and talk to her? Yeah, but prior to this first rape story, I, no, no. I did, yes. What I'm saying is um, you, you were describing that you're in the living room sleeping on the couch. I think you said that she was inside the bedroom texting yes, you. Yes. Did you go into the bedroom and talk to her? Yes, sir. Prior to the, her starting the rape story. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got I got enough computers here. <laughs> um, what was her demeanor like when you went into the bedroom? Uh, she seemed a little frantic, a little, I, I mean, that's the best way to put it, just frantic and, you know, but... I don't know you would describe it. It was just kind of all over the place. Well, let me ask you out, this. But... Let me ask you this specifically. Uh, did she appear to be crying? No, sir. What about her voice inflections? What was her voice doing? Uh, I mean, it seemed nor uh, not normal, but it seemed. I mean, she was frantic, like I said, and freaking out. So it was kind of rushed, and you know, she was t telling me about how she got raped allegedly. So. <laughs> What did you do with that information uh, now that you're hearing this for the first time that there's potentially a rape that had occurred in Gannon's bedroom? Uh, so three specific things. Well, before those, first I asked her to stay in the room that I'd be right back. Uh, my mom and my sister had slept the night before in Gannon's room. So I immediately went and told them they need to get all their stuff and get out. 
Um, and I, I, I told him very limited. I don't know what all I specifically told him. I just said it's maybe a crime scene now. I, I think I notified the authorities to some degree. And then I went and got all of the weapons in my house and basically confiscated them and put them in my truck and locked them, made sure I had the key. I think, uh, well not, I think uh, my one uh, Smith & Wesson um, nine millimeter compact, I handed to Landon's brother um, just, for, just for safety and I keep it on his side. Um, he, I, I trusted him, he's like a jailer or a police officer or something. So, all right, um, so let me, let me break in there for yeah. just a moment. Um, when you say you went to gather all the weapons, are you talking about those firearms that you described earlier? Yeah, every single one of them. And I did it in a specific order. I got all the ones that were mine registered to me. And then I went back and asked her, said, I, I need you to Who is her? Oh, excuse me, the defendant. Okay. I went back directly to the defendant, said, I need the ones that are in her name, which the shot, the 12 gauge shotgun and one of the pistols possibly. And I said, you don't have to, cause they're yours, but I need these and I'm gonna put them away for safekeepings right now. And, and she did, she complied and she, and I went and put those in the truck as well. So what was in your mind? Why, why did you think you needed to lock up the firearms in a vehicle? Because my first impression was, was a bullshit story and that something else was going on and then something happened in the bedroom that I, I just wasn't sure. And I guess it's my military training. I don't know, but safety was the first priority for everybody. So get all the weapons out of the house, put them somewhere safe. And then, then I went back and talked to her again. What did you do after you um, put the guns in the vehicle? I went back and, and directly went uh, straight to her and asked her to retell me the story. Who else was in the bedroom at that time? Uh, Landon was also in there. Did the defendant at that time um, give you an impression that Gannon was injured as a result of something happening in the bedroom along with this rape? Yes. Uh, anything about blood? Yes. What did she say about blood on Gannon? Well, it was involved in the rape and the, the beatings that they both supposedly took, um, that there was bl just blood everywhere, her blood and his blood. Did she say what she had done in regard to that blood? Uh, yes, she said she had cleaned it up. Did she describe any blood on bed sheets? I believe so. I, I don't want to uh, say specifically yes, but I believe she did. Okay. I want to jump ahead to January 31st. <clears throat> you remember sharing some text messages with the defendant about her coming back to the house. So this would be after she'd moved out um, to collect things from the house or, or phone con calls. So let me clarify this. You said after she had like physically moved out or came and got her stuff and where, moved out. Where she had physically removed herself from okay. the house but wanted to come back and get her belongings. I just want to clarify. Yes, yeah, absolutely. There was multiple phone calls and text messages throughout those few days. And I, I remember specifically, we scheduled a time for her to come and I uh, ensured, I, I scheduled a time that way I could ensure a deputy would be there to kind of monitor the situation uh, because it, it, it became very volatile by that point. So um, did the defendant in fact come to the house? Not on that first time. I think it was the second scheduled time, but she did. Who did she come with? Uh, the defendant came with, uh, well, herself, uh, Harley came, her mother, um, and her brother, Dakota Lowry. What is her mother's name? Uh, Deborah. I don't remember. I don't know what exactly okay. her last name is. And I'm not asking you to tell us anything that Harley said, but how was Harley acting during this time? Very reserved, I think is the best way to put it. As far as people that were already in the house at that time, not talking about who came with the defendant, but who was at the house separate from that group, who was at the house? Uh, my brother, Les um, Stauk. Um, I think Landon would have been there in Veronica, uh, the deputy. Um, Veronica being Landon's aunt, to clarify, um, the de whichever deputy, I think it was Berklich, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I was there, of course. Uh, I think my sister Becky would have been there as well. Um, Becky, um, uh, Be Rebecca Lynn. Uh, I think that's it. Where was Lena? Elena as well. Yeah, Lena was there. Thank you. 
Were you watching what stuff was being carried in and out of the house? I stayed in two main areas. I stayed in the kitchen for a while. So I did see, um, when I say traffic, coming up and down the stairs from Harley's room, bringing stuff. And then I went into the bedroom at one point while Tisha was gathering some of her belongings. Um, and I do remember the deputy followed me in there. He was in there as well the whole time I was in there with Tisha. So, okay. uh, the defendant, excuse me. So that suitcase that we talked about earlier, <clears throat> that um, that green suitcase, uh, did you ever see that come out of the house on that day? No, sir. Did you ever see it come out of the house in relation to this investigation? No, sir. Once she moved her belongings out of the house on January 31st, how would you communicate with the defendant after that? Through text message, there may have been, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in between the period before I started the pretext phone calls. There was text messages and I believe some emails and possibly some phone calls as well. I, I don't remember specifically, but any version of those three, I think were in play. What about in-person conversations? I don't, I don't believe I ever saw her again um, after she left until I saw her in the courtroom. Okay. <clears throat> Did, during that particular time frame, so from January 31st uh, until we start into these pretext phone calls, uh, did the statements that the defendant was telling you about what happened again and ever change? Yes, they, I mean, they changed in, yes. In what ways did they change? Um, different people were accused, different, the, the, something happened again and at different places, whether, well, I, I, I think I'm mixing up some of the pretext stuff too. So I'm, I'm trying, I don't know, but yeah, there was different stories told. Okay. So, and, and so we're going to get into the pretext phone yeah. calls, obviously, and that will, we'll actually be able to hear those things. What I'm trying to do is um, just get in into what you're thinking happened based on what you're hearing from the defendant. And so um, you said that there was different names being mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's a yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you remember any of those names now? Yeah, there, I think one of the first ones was Eduardo. Um, or, yeah, some version of that. There was another name. I don't think it came into play until the pretext, um, the Quincy Brown. I, okay. I think that's when that came into play. Um, so let, let me back up and stop yeah. you there. Um, in relation to the name that you just said, Eduardo, mm -hmm. that's a yes or no. Yes. Yes. Uh, what did she tell you about Eduardo? So I, I'll be honest. I'm having trouble. I think all, all the all the different versions are mixing together when they happen. So I, I don't know. I, I know there was a story that sh the defendant told me about. Um, there was a man in the neighborhood, a carpet guy. Or so let, let me ask you specifically about that. Please. Did she give you a um, statement about al her allowing a man from the neighborhood that was a construction worker into the house to fix the carpet? I think the story was she gave him the code. I, I, but the, yeah, some, somehow he got in the house. The question is, did she tell you a story with those sort of details in it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What was the story that she told you in relation to that? Like I just said, I think it, I, I think it involved in that specific one that she gave him the code of the garage and he came in. I, I, I'm kind of at a loss on that, Mike. Or Mr. Allen, I'm sorry. You're fine. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> did you know anybody by that name? Absolutely not. I don't, I don't believe. Um, did she allege that that's the person that raped her in the first time that she tells the story? Yes. Okay. Now I want to jump into these phone calls and we're going to have to 
reconnect our computer for just a moment. That first pretext phone call. which is People's Exhibit number 35, previously admitted. Who was on that particular phone call? It would have been myself. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's not tricky. Yeah, oh, it's myself you on the that? defendant, yeah. Okay, and then there's other people that are feeding you information to ask them? Yes, sir. Okay. You're at this point, I would ask you uh, permission to publish People's Exhibit 35, which is, this is that longer phone call, an hour and 57 minutes. Okay. Um, because there's so many, what you'll need to do is when we stop one and begin the other, you'll just have to tell for purposes of the record what it is that you're doing. Yeah. And what I, what I intend to do, Judge, is uh, play it for just a second so we can hear voices, have Mr. Stauk identify who those voices are, and then just let it play from that point. All right. That's fine. Judge, you would think after COVID, we'd be more adept at our computer skills. It's my fault. All right. I don't have our technological issues, but it's not mine. <laughs> All you have to do is uh, plug it in the same way that you had it before. Yeah, we just didn't. Hello. Whose voice was that? That was my voice. Okay, go ahead. Keisha? Hello. Hey. Whose voice is that? That was the defendant's voice. Okay. So, Judge, at this point, we'll just let it play. All right, Mr. Scott, you can go ahead and step down. Thank you. Why didn't you say anything? Yeah, I said hello. It's just hard because I have to get service off Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, uh, so what's up? I'm so hungry. You still haven't eaten anything? No. Huh? No. Why not? I don't have any money or cards. Yeah, I have all that. I have all my debit cards, credit cards. Who has all that? They have it from my car. I don't have anything from my car. Oh, you didn't have it with you? I did. I had my purse with me, but they took my purse and they took my Apple Watch and all that. It took everything I had possession on. Why did they do that? I guess the same reason they took everything that was in that book bag and all they car. I mean, they even took the dog paper and took the security 
hard and my birthday is good. My passport, which is why I can't be at the airline because that's that passport. You're not working at the school anymore? I thought you was had the early college thing going on. Right. They took my laptop. Then they took my car. So I called them and said, hey, I don't have a way to get to work right now. I'm going to work on it. I still have my car back in a day or two. I'm still waiting, and I don't have a way to get to work. So I got my place out of Denver, and I don't have a passport because I have to have my passport and my crew badge. To get on DIA. So you, so you still, still. Need to help me get any of it. Who's no one like the police or whatever? Like I called the evidence department several times and just been like, can I at least get my? Can I at least get anything that deals with my everyday life of operating, like my cards, my passports. And then the guy was like, well, why do you need your passport? I said, well, it's required by FAA to have it with you at all times, or you cannot even get to the airport. You can't do anything. Yeah, you told me that. I forgot. I'm sorry. So I just want to get my contents like that, because how am I supposed to work if I don't have any of it? Yeah, I know. I, I... Please on hold. Please wait for your contact to return. Hello? Hello. Hey. What happened? The Wi-Fi, I don't have a number, so the Wi-Fi just dies, so I had to use this Indian dude's number here, phone number here to call you back on because I don't only have Wi-Fi. Okay. But anyway, so like have into that stuff. So I'm not trying to purposely not go to work, not do anything. I just need help obtaining any of it to even do anything. Well, I'm having trouble too because they still freaking got my truck and my, you know, how I have those badges I got to get in? Yeah. I can't freaking get into my secure part of my job, so I can't, I can't even do what I'm supposed to be doing either, so it's freaking driving me nuts. So, like, the people are fussing at Harley because she needs her high school diploma and she needs a report with her um, ID, social, and high school diploma, and I'm trying to explain to them what's going on. Yeah. I'm like, I just can't get any help because she's supposed to be there every week on base doing stuff. Um, Cause she leaves in 28 days. For basic. Yeah. Yeah. So what, did anything ever happen with that job, that new MOS? Yeah, the guy wants to talk to her about it. That's why he told her, he said, to come in, but we didn't have a way, so we explained that to him. So, we didn't have a way. We, I don't. We don't have a way to get on base because they have IDs. They have everything. It's in the book bags, everything. Okay. What, what, were you talk, what, is C, what was that thing you said you called? I just popped in my head. C, CIB or something? Yeah, I... You guys, I'm trying to talk to you about, like, help, and they're not, I'm not downing or talking about anyone, but they don't need to be the lead agency if they're not going to lead. So the Colorado Bureau of Investigations can even look at it from a different approach. So I called the Colorado Bureau of Investigations, and I talked to someone, and they're going to call me back. What did you tell them? 
I didn't say anything bad about anyone. I just said there's a lot of key things that they're choosing to leave out. And I says it's becoming a witch hunt after one person. I said when they're barking up the wrong tree and they're not even following what credible things that I've told them. What, like they what? want tips from the public, but the public was not there. Well, what credible things have you told? That's what I, in our emails I'm trying to, and I know you said you were waiting to talk to me and everything, but what what is the what is it that you have told them? Because I know we had some, you know, uncertainty about some of the things initially, and that's fine. But like, what what is it that you told them that they're not looking at? What I mean, what is the? Can you walk me through it? I know I asked you for that timeline. Sick. I can't breathe. Even one second. Take your time. Just just try to get some deep breaths. I'm just trying to put the window down on this stupid thing because, oh, it's hot. And, like, I'm having to, like, run into people I don't even freaking know. They could be mad killers and shit to be like, hey, can I use your phone? Hey, can I sit in your car for a minute? Hey, do you think I could drive your car to the store? I know. I'm I'm starting to get, feel some heat, too. I've, like I told you, when I went to Bass Pro Shop last night, you know, I wanted to get some clothes, but I was trying to hope to run in you on the north end. Like you said, you were out there, but, you know. Yeah. Well, I just, I, like I said, I was just trying to hope to bump into you or something, but I feel like I'm having to hide now. That's why I went and got some, like, you know, redneck clothes, like you, the clothes that you don't like, because all those nice clothes I have at the house that you got me, you know, I would just stick out like a sore thumb, and I'm just trying to hide, too. I don't know how long you got, but I just wanted to start with you for Saturday, what I have. Okay. I listen. I I I scooted away for lunch, so I you know probably hour hour and a half. So we got plenty of time. All right. What do you mean scooted away for lunch? Like, Are you, like not, you don't have a car? Yeah, I got a rental car. Uncle Jeff like helped me out with a rental car, but like I just had to get away from all them people. Like I've been telling you, it's just crazy. So. You stand by yourself. I'm me and Uncle Jeff. Okay, so your uncle Jeff is there with you. Yeah, okay. it's, I've always it's been like me with my family members the whole time. So. So how long can your uncle Jeff stay? I I have no clue. It's people have been kind of jumping in and out, but. I just didn't want you to be by yourself because I've been trying to be with you because I don't think that you should be by yourself with them because it's a bunch of vultures. That's all. Yeah, you know I'm not. I'm I'm starting to slowly see that. So, but yeah, let's just, just so, this timeline because okay. I want to hear so, I want to hear your timeline so I can try to make sense of it. Saturday, okay. You said you wouldn't question, you would just listen. Saturday, hold on, Tisha, Tisha. Saturday, like, what do you mean Saturday? Like, right before I like me and me and Mama left Saturday. After you left. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So this is the paper I have. I had to get it notarized because. What that guy said to do right after y'all, whoever found us and took Holly's car, that's where we had left from was the attorney. But anyway, all right, um, so I'm gonna just go through certain things. I'm not gonna read it verbatim how he did it because it would be more of like in law terms, but right, you know, key one, Albert and his mom left for Denver. We put DEN in there, um, around the house, cleaned up, G helped with stuff, um, helped we get stuff out of his car. She, Gan's always barefooted because that was something that he asked me. Even taking the trash out, things like that. He took the trash out. Um, he stepped on something in the garage. So my car parked. You had those boards that were underneath my car, right? Yeah. You know, was going to go help because he was saying that there was some kind of piece out there that was going to help me. You know the little zip ties that you have on things and it's hard to get off? Yeah. Like the so he was he knew or something for that to go pop this off. So he was going to go get it because I had bought them some things from the clearance store. All right, so he and I cut his foot on those boards. We flipped the boards over because we were freaking out because I was like, oh, my God, your daddy said don't get oil or anything from your car and eat on those boards. You know what boards I'm talking about? The one, the, like the two by fours that I have, like that you drive over to park in the garage. Right. Or yeah, yeah. So, I let Gannon sit down in the back of the car. You know how funny I am about my car. But also, we just bandaged it up, whatever. All we did was stick a bandage on it, whatever, whatever. And I said something to him about, again, you got to quit coming out here barefooted, which I do the same thing. I take dogs out barefooted anyway. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you, let me, hold on, wait a second. 
I'm just thinking here, and I'm, I, I, and I'm going to listen to everything. Just something that popped in my head. He always goes out the front door to do the trash. That's so weird. But he was helping me unload. Like, I have bought them a bunch of stuff in the clearance store. If you look in the garage. I got you. Okay, I thought you said take out the trash. I'm sorry. Let, let, let me explain this to you. There's two bags that was put in the garage because I had put a bunch of stuff in there. I went and bought them a bunch of crap that went on sale from the clearance store because they were changing over to, like, warm weather stuff. But obviously in Colorado, you can still wear the cold weather stuff. I saw Lena online wearing, so therefore I knew it was in the house. But anyway, so my point was... He was really, you know, helping me out, whatever, you know, just talking to me about something. Who knows what he was talking about. He tells me about video games. I listen, but I don't understand them. Anyway, so so he was bleeding on his foot, and we turned the boards over. Because I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to freak out, you know, because these are the boards. He said, don't you get oil on my car. Don't drip on my car, whatever. All right. So um, during this time frame, Ian was supposed to be taking the trash out. I said, you might as well want to take out recycle, whatever, whatever. But Gannon kept going to the gate with nothing. And I kept saying, why are you going to the gate? He was like, I'm going to make sure the gate is locked. Oh, okay, this is the first I I'd known. I knew we were talking about locking the gate, but I didn't know Gannon had the key. I thought maybe you just had the key yourself, you know, whatever, whatever. I didn't know Gannon had the key. Babe, he didn't, babe, but he, but hold on. He had, The key was in our room and in, in um, on top of the dresser the whole time. Remember, he kept... Yeah. I didn't pay attention or okay. remember. All right, all right, all right. So he kept going out there with the key and saying that he was um checking to make sure the gate was locked. Okay, benefit of doubt, maybe he was, because you know we had talked about making sure that gate was locked or talking to somebody. I don't know. I'm not speculating. I know I got on him about hey doing this. Yeah. So, underneath there, there was a rug. It was, in that rug that we stepped out on, it was a a rug. There was blood on it. I had walked on it. And I was like, yeah, we probably should just throw this away and find a new rug to put out here. So, you talk, the rug you that, talk, what rug are you talking about again? So, I, uh, the one we, in the garage? Right. We yeah, just, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When you step down, there was a rug. I said, we probably should just throw this away said, because we can always just get another piece or another rug or I'll go to Dollar Tree and get a rug, whatever. I got you. Okay. So, that was that. It says, in the next section, it says, I replaced roll, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yep, bam. All right. And then it says, he came in out, and he immediately ran downstairs to the room. So then I kept going down there, because his door was locked. He said he was keeping Lena out, which, again, I didn't question, because they always get where one minute they want to play with each other, the next minute they're like, get out. Okay? So then I sat on the sofa to put on the Peloton shoes because I was going to ride the bike again because my friend said that they were going to redo a later time that we could do the bike. Gannon kept coming, coming in there saying, are you going to stay here? Are you going to stay down here? Are you going to stay down here? So I took it as if he was like excited I was going to stay down there and, you know, just be able to run around and, and, and do whatever. But then I had to go upstairs and help Lena, yada, yada, yada. So I got on my statement, it says I was back and forth, but came back when I heard a loud noise. So there was a loud noise that happened downstairs. So, of course, I run back downstairs and realized, or so I thought, was a box or something fell over in the storage room. So I'm like, something was really loud in the storage room, but I assumed that it was a box. Dan had his door locked, so I knocked on the door. Of course, I'm like, hello, because I hear a loud noise. And so he opened and said I couldn't come in. And I was like laughing. I'm like, why? And he told me he was doing something. I don't remember what he told me he was building. I'm sure it was something about the toy cons or joy cons or whatever. I didn't think anything of it. Just, okay, he's building something, whatever. But there was a lot of noise, and he was in his room. So then he said his stomach started hurting a little bit or whatever. So I told him to come upstairs. I had some special ice cream. I had these Kia like pops. I had already went and bought them because I thought, you know, this time of year, this is when I got the cold last year, I'll take them. So I let him take the pedia, you know, the pedia pops or whatever, and he took some relax. Mm. So that was, that, was, that was a normal day for Saturday. Like, you were already, you know, going on. You probably already got the plane. We all laid down, yada, 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 right? Right, right. We're about Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Christopher. Sunday, all right? Sunday, I did 
We talked to you in the morning. Remember I told you? I sent you a few messages, and I was like, hey, we might go on a hike, whatever. Everyone's going to get dressed, you know. And then suddenly we saw the news about Kobe Bryant. So then, of course, that delayed it because I'm sitting on the sofa crying, trying to figure out, like, oh, my gosh, Kobe died. Is this true? Remember I messaged you? We talked back and forth about it, whatever. Yeah, I had just gotten to the airport at uh, Lawton when you told me that. So, Gannon had talked at all. I mean, Gannon didn't know who Kobe was. Or maybe he knew from, like, hearing it, but didn't really know who Kobe was. He just noticed that I was sitting there, like, crying, like, oh, my God, you know, like, upset. And we were sitting there talking about it. So, I was telling him that, hey, you know, Kobe has a lot of daughters. He only had sisters. You know, Gannon went over the whole, like, I don't want you to think any of this is irrelevant. Because I want you to think of anything that I say that might have triggered something. Yeah, right, right. I'm listening. I'm listening very closely. So then we were talking about the daughters, and I was like, "Yeah, he, he always wanted a boy, but he never could have a boy. He had daughters, blah blah." So then I let him in on a little secret, which I already told you over email what it was. Okay, I don't need to say it again. You already know. So me and him were talking about that. And he was kind of like, "Really?" And I told him, "I said, yeah, you know, like I lost a lot of babies." I said, it was kind of hard. I said, you want one thing and it don't ever happen. You know, I felt like I was in a situation to talk again about this because we are over here upset crying about Kobe. And so I was like, I'm telling you because I know that you'll be able to pray and keep a secret. And we were like, you know, kind of being silly about, oh, this is, this is a secret we have between each other. We'll tell daddy, you know, yada, yada, yada. So we sat there and talked about that for a little bit. So then Holly got called into work. So I was like, crap, we had everything packed, ready to go on a hike, had the Getty, had everything. We were going to plan on staying for a while and then go get dinner. Well, she got caught on the hike, so we decided to take two hikes. So this is where all this confusion comes with hike, Harley went, hike, Harley not went. So we took the dogs on the hike through the trails in Morrison Ranch. So if you leave out of our neighborhood, go out to the side, go up to the little whatever, you could take the dogs on a trail, come back, yada, yada. So that's what we did first. Came back. And it had his water pack. I'm sure you saw the pictures online from Garner God that some other creeper people took. He had his water pack on his back or whatever. So we got ready for round two. So hike two was Garden of the Gods. So then it says Garden of the Gods was our hike two. So we went about two miles in, lots of talking about things. G asked me, did I know any of his mommy's friends from Coastal? It was a random thought process. So I just figured he was trying to be curious about it. I said, and, and did I remember Brian? And we laughed about some new friend named Mike, too. So we were just having this conversation about where these people were. And I was like, I don't know anybody named Brian. And I don't know anybody named Mike, too. I guess I knew Mike or whatever. All right, so again, the stomach hurt. And he was, let's see, again, the stomach hurt. And most of the night, he had a stomach ache. And he tried to lay down and poop and some of that. So I... During this time, I'm messaging you, which you're probably tired, jet lag, whatever. It's like, hey, again, the stomach's hurting, yada, yada, yada. Right. If it happened regularly, you know he would get, yeah. you know, whatever. Then he asked me about the bath salts. No, I hadn't talked to you about it yet, didn't know whatever. And he took a bath, and then I gave him a bath salt because I thought maybe he just wants to be clean. You know, whatever. Bath salts, bath salts. I didn't know he knew about you. So then, next section. All right, so then the next section was, I don't remember exactly who took the bath first, but everybody had their baths. Everybody was doing their own thing. Again, it was like going back in his room. I said, okay. So then here's my next step. All right, Albert had ground again in front of the switch. I understand it. He said he was still grounded, but he could get off. You know, the next day. He'd been in his room most of the night. I knocked on the door. He said he was playing with Grayson. I ain't never heard of talking Grayson before in my life. So again. Grayson? He said Grayson? He said Grayson. Okay. So in my mind, I thought, who the hell is Grayson? But I didn't see anybody in the room. Obviously, I weren't like looking under beds or anything like that. Honestly, I thought, those kids in 11 still have imaginary friends? Or are they talking, is he talking to somebody online because he's not supposed to have, you know, like technology? Yeah, yeah, right. I said, right, yeah. Even the benefit of the doubt, I didn't say anything else. I just said, oh, yeah, okay, cool. 
So Grace and I said hi. I laughed it off, went off about business, didn't see anything. So later on, I don't know the exact proximate time, but I saw he was on the sofa. And I was, I was like talking to him. I was like, oh, you want to sleep out here tonight? Or, oh, what, downstairs just, sofa? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I'm like talking to him about tonight, whatever, whatever. He told me his, that his Uncle Matt was going to finish visit. Okay, so I don't know who the hell Uncle Matt is. So I was just sitting there like, okay, that's when it dawned into me that he had to be talking to someone on something because Grayson, I have no clue who it is. Matt, I have no clue who he is. Then I was like, this can't be characters in some game because it didn't sound like some game characters. I don't know Uncle Matt and I don't know Grayson. So, he was talking about his uncle Matt was going to visit, and I thought, okay, everybody, you know, again, trying to be sensitive to the fact that I know that he probably has friends, family on the other part of the country that maybe he was missing or whatever. Um, so it says, so again, I was like, boy, yeah. So again, because my statement. So again, I was like, boy, you need to stay off that TikTok. You're being silly. I already told him he needs to stay off the TikTok. He was being silly. All right, so I went upstairs. He was on the sofa to watch TV. I told him I'd come back later with him because he wanted to watch something on the show, but I had to get Lena ready, and I promised him I would let him stay up 30 minutes later. I said, you know, I was upstairs, get Lena ready for bed, yada, 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 yada. Well, then, out of nowhere, I, the alarm is going off. It didn't start with anything other than the alarm. And I had laid down. I had went in the room. I was sitting there with the dogs. I don't remember exactly where I was going, but I was doing something work with. I hear the alarm go off. So I walk in the living room, hit the alarm code in. And I'm just like, dee -dee -dee -dee, alarm code. And it stopped. So I thought, who in the world, you know, was on the alarm code? And then it beeped again. It kept going. And it, then it started fire. It was yelling loud fire. Fire, fire, fire. And I'm just like, fire? And I look around, don't see any flipping fire anywhere. So as this goes on, I'm like, okay. So I put it in again, it stops. So I'm like, okay, I might get on the phone with ADT because something's wrong with this thing. Remember when we were out of town, the neighbor said she smelled gas and her thing was going off, but then they didn't find anything. Yeah, yeah, right. So I was thinking maybe it's something to do with this. So that was how my whole process was. So then, at that point, I was like, the carbon, the main, my knock side thing started beeping. And I ran in there when Lena was at, and I said, Lena, Lena, are you asleep? Because I knew, unless I was under some adrenaline rush, and this is not being mean, I was able to just pick Lena up and yank her out of bed. But ha luckily, she had fell asleep all the way. I said, Lena, because I thought I was being crazy. I said, do you hear that? It said fire, right? She's like, yes. And so I grabbed Lena, run her outside, run her with the dogs, give her the keys to the truck, throw them in the truck, and I run back inside. Run back inside, still don't know anything, and then remember, my God, Anna. Sorry that for a second I hadn't remembered that, because I was trying to still figure out what in the heck I'm doing with that. So I run back downstairs and realize that there's smoke downstairs. I couldn't get. I was coughing and choking and couldn't, like, get through the smoke part. So I run back to the garage. You had these little mouthpieces that you could put over your mouth. Yeah, yeah, it does. Protect okay. your so I grabbed one of those, put it over my mouth, ran back downstairs. And when I ran back downstairs, again, I was still asleep, not knowing this was going on. And there was fire. I took the cover. There was a whole bunch of tons of cover that was inside that little tan thing and Gannon had on or whatever, and I just dropped on them. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. If it was the wrong thing to do, I'm sorry. But I just jumped on it and kept jumping on it, and, like, Gannon was right in one of the covers. So Gannon did burn his arms. It wasn't bad. It was like a... It's like, you know how you get a little bit of foil on it, and it's just, like, underneath the skin, but as long as y'all peel it, it's fine. Yeah, but, but hey, Tisha, which arm was it? Both arms or like this inside? I mean, but like, how was it? So, because I remember we talked about that before a little bit, but uh, you never, we never got it. I feel like it was across the arms. Like, I feel like it was, and I told the investigators this. I said, and, and I don't want to skip to this part, and miss this part. Remember, remind me that. Say this later. I told the investigators later that I said, 
I probably should have looked a little more in depth at his arm. Was he hurt? Yeah. Because, because it could have been, you know, like, he wasn't complaining, like, oh, it's hurting. He wasn't saying anything along those lines. But I should have looked a little bit more in depth. Kind of sleep, we ran. So we ran out. I'm sure they got the footage of us. Me running out first because Gannon was grabbing his cover, running out behind there because he was cold. What, hey, what time was this so we can, I can maybe tell somebody to look at the footage? Well, I mean, uh, I told them originally. I don't have access to the ADT now, but I yeah, yeah. Because the ADT said it had an alert for fire. So I would imagine whenever that alert went off from ADT, it okay. would have been within that within that few minutes. Yeah, like, fine, I got you. Fifteen minutes. Hey, so, hey, tell me about it. Uh, so I'm really concerned about these burns because you know he's freaking hurt. Like what? Right. What? What? Were they big? Were they small? Like what was it? Was it? Was it from the candle wax or what? Let Let me get to that part. It's not gonna worry you in a minute when I get to that part. Okay, because I'm freaking out right now. Because understand. So when he runs to the car, John, he runs in because I'm running. He's running behind me. Jumping your truck. All he's jumping in your truck because the keys were laying there. Okay. So jumping your truck. He jumps in on the driver's side. He's screaming, crying, whatever. Lena's in the back seat with the two dogs. We crank your car, we turn your truck on, and we drive the hell off. Don't ask me why we drove off. I was freaked out because I was like, oh my God. Like, it was the carpet, it was the smoke was more, more scary and terrifying than actually the fire. So, okay. what we did was we drove around the block. And I kind of had to be like, okay, what do I do? A, do I need to call the police department? B, does anybody need medical attention? So then we go back in the house. Lena's freaked out. I put Lena in our bed. I said, whoa, whoa, so, so you drove around for how long and then came back? No, I drove around the block. Oh, like, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I drove around like the block, like Wando, that area. Yeah, yeah, I know. Pull back up in the drive. You didn't have much gas because I hadn't put gas in your car yet. You didn't have much gas. Right. My my process of driving was thinking, oh my God, like I, I was in shock. So I pulled back in the driveway and parked. We all get back out, go inside. Lena goes, Lena's freaking out, crying. We're both, Lena and I are standing there looking at Gant. I didn't, at that point in time, I didn't see anything on his hands, arms, or anything other than take your hand where you're holding your phone and look on the insides where the edges are. That's right there had little bubbly spots, okay? So they had bubbly spots on both sides of his arm. And I think that was from when he grabbed the cover and I was trying to grab him up. And he came down with me with the cover because he was like latched onto the cover. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to grab the whole cover to put out the fire. So. From the inner parts of his arm, had these little bubble spots. So, which so you said, but you said both sides, or is it just the inner parts? I'm just trying to, because this might be key information. Like both sides, left arm, right arm. I got you. Okay, so both sides okay. of both arms. From what I remember, both sides yeah. of both yeah. arms, because he had when when Dana was laying down, I grabbed him to get him up. Okay, because I remember it was that uh. Oh God. One of the covers. I grabbed him to get him up, whatever. He he gets in the car, whatever, we're talking. He's explaining to me that he thought I was coming and he was grounded from the switch. So he thought I was coming, and when he thought I was coming, he knocked over the candle. Okay. Because apparently he was playing the switch when he shouldn't have been playing it, which is fine. What is the you know? but he had the candle on the couch, I guess, right? No. He had uh -huh. sitting on some kind of little uh, that little white thing that was sitting next to the couch. Okay. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. So I don't know if the candle fell over. I don't know. I know that when I got there, there was a fire, and it was on his cover. So I was trying to rip the cover out of his hands to get him up and, like, jump on the fire. They have pictures of where there's burn marks on my elbow where I jumped on the fire. So we get in the car. And he's crying and screaming and telling me he's sorry and he don't want to get in trouble because of the switch. 
she was on the switch and you shouldn't have been on the switch. And so we drive around the block and I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Honestly, I flipping lost my mind because I thought my mind, like, had I not gotten downstairs when I did, had I not heard it or the alarm system or covering and not or whatever, if I would have hit that couch, I don't know that I could have gotten again. And that was my, that was my biggest thing that my brain was sitting there like freaked out on. Come back inside. Lena's terrified. I said, Lena, go lay in the bed. She's laying in the bedroom. And I was like, he, he doesn't want to go back to his room. I said, okay, will you lay in Lena's bed? He said, yes. He started to say he was cold and had a little bit of shivers. And so I was like, Gannon, I took him and put more clothes on top of him now. Blame it on me. Whatever. I didn't take his clothes off to go through anything, but I asked him, was he hurting? And was anything else, whatever. He told me it was just his arms. So I didn't see anything that would have thrown a flag that I had to be like, oh, my God, emergency or, or Think like that. I didn't see anything like that. But if his arms was bubbling, that's not an emergency. Well, it, it, it hadn't broke skin. Like it was just like underneath. It hadn't broke skin or whatever. Okay. All right. All right. In my, in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, let's evaluate the situation. You know, tomorrow and see or whatever. It wasn't burn burn marks like carpet burn or like you know anything like that. It, it was bubbly. And I told them from that, I said, I honestly probably could have, you know, got him in the car and said, hey, can you just check this out to make sure? Because I, was, in my mind, in his arms, I didn't see it as a, as a bad thing. I just knew he was like, it's not hurting. We put aloe on it, and I assumed, okay. So then we put on the long sleeve shirt on him because he said he was kind of cold or whatever it was. He lays down and lay in his bed. Lena sleeps in my bed, our bed. Charlie comes home. I go in and I'm telling, like, I already prepped Charlie for what was going on. I was like, hey, don't panic when you get here. I was like, there's smoke, the house is smoky, Gannon, this happened, yada, 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 yada. Lena was scared to go to sleep, so we both went in there and checked on Gannon. We went in there, we gave him water in, in Lena's bed. We gave him water. We set him up. We like, are you okay? He was more scared of anything. And so I can. Of course, I was like, whoops. You know, someone said something because I said, sell the couch. I wasn't talking about sell the couch to fix the daggone carpet. I was talking about, like, I would get rid of that couch and get a new couch. Don't panic. Like, my point was, honestly, I wasn't even going to tell you because I was like, Gannon was scared of being grounded in here. You know, and I was like. I'll buy a new couch. We'll fix the couch. We'll, we'll replace everything in here. Don't worry about it. You know, and that was my whole point. As long as you promise me you didn't do it on purpose, if you didn't purposely do this to hurt yourself or hurt somebody, we will fix it. And that's how we ended on Sunday. So, and it was still like, you know, upset. He was not only emotional about the situation, his foot was hurting. So, that's where we were at with Sunday. Okay. You know, you give me one second to pee. Right. All right. So later on in the night, Anna woke me up a few times. He said his stomach was getting worse. So that group jet, I messaged you, but you were already asleep. And I was like, hey, can Anna, Anna wants to know if he can stay out of school tomorrow. He's scared of pooping in his pants. I think you probably were still asleep. You might didn't get it until the next day, which is not your fault, my fault. It was time zone and tiredness and whatever. Yeah. Right. I, stayed up, I stayed up with him a few times in the bathroom. A few times in the bathroom. Finally, I was like, okay, I wrote you back. I said, I'm just going to make the decision that Gana can stay at home tomorrow because he is so terrified about putting in his pants. So the next morning, I called. 
excuse me, I called the nurse's line and I asked the nurse's line about, you know, about his stomach and giving a mirror lax and yada, yada, yada. You talking about the TRICARE nurse's line? No, the urgent care nurse's line right in front of uh, Fountain and whatever that road is. I got you. So I called them and I said, hey, I said, I know typically people are constipated, you give a mirror lax, yada, yada, yada. He hasn't really went to the bathroom. He has blood coming out of his butt. And so they just basically explained to do the best she could to get him to pass. And if not, then we needed to call our care provider, whatever. We started beating me up over that, saying you didn't need to have a referral to do this. That wasn't what I was trying to say. I was trying to make the point of does the boy need to have, like, you know, anything done? Or can I just give him, like, an enema or something like that? Because I already talked to him about that. So if this don't work, you want me to give him, like, an enema or something? Because it was a big old turd he was trying to get out. Yeah. So then, that morning, we were like, I said, Gannon, I said, I'm going to stay at home with you today because I don't want you to stay by yourself. And remember, we let Gannon stay by himself. He's been responsible, whatever. But in this state, I, like as in his state that he was in, not feeling well, stomach hurting, bubbling a little bit here and there, him being embarrassed, I made a decision that it was not okay for him to stay there by himself if he was sick. If he's on normal times, taking care of his sister, playing the switch, doing his thing, then that's fine. But I said, Gannon, you're going to need to go with me. I said, there's a few things I need to handle today. That's me what. And I was going to look at a bite for you. This guy that was on Craigslist, because he had this bike, like a, um, a touring bike. And I said, yeah. you're going to go with me to look at this touring bike or whatever. And that was Monday? Hey, so did you did you give him Miralax or, or the enema or anything like that? What else did you give him? I have in this notes what day I gave him Miralax. All right. Uh, trying to prove um, regularly took that was the bath salts day. Uh, let me see. Like to Saturday. You have Miralax on Saturday. Yeah, here it is. I gave him ice cream and said it. It said it had special stuff because I was telling him it was really those like Pedialyte ice cream. Yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah, yeah. And it took me a lot. So that was on Saturday. So well, hold on, let me. I'm trying to just because you know, obviously, I worried to death about his little arms. Um, did you rub any cream on it or give him anything for the pain or, or did he pain medicine or anything like that right. to help him? I Children's Tylenol or anything? I didn't give him any kind of, like, he, he wasn't saying that he was hurting in any kind of pain to give him any kind of Tylenol to give him anything at all. And if, I, if you feel like that, that would have been a lapse in judgment on my part, then I'm sorry. No, I, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to sort through it. I know, I know how both of them are about, you know, every time they scrape their finger or something, they want a Band-Aid. So I would have just assumed that if his arm was all bubbled up, did his arm did his arm stay bubbled up like until the next day or was that just did that go down that night or how like that's so, that's worrying me too. Okay, so to get to the next part, Gannon started to peel it. Wait, like when? When would how when did he start so, to peel it? Gannon started to peel it because I guess he was either asleep, I don't know, anxious. I don't know. One day he started to peel it. Like Okay. Kill his skin. Yeah, like Monday morning or whatever. Again, I swear to Jesus told detectives this. I said he started to peel it. When he started to peel it, it had like a, I don't want to say like, not gooey stuff or whatever, but it's almost like it was like popping it type thing. And I said. Oh, yeah, like a, like a, like a blister or something. Yeah. I said, said, listen, if it gets worse, we're going to drive straight. Okay. And that was already the plan. That's why I didn't go to school. I 
said, if it gets worse, after I put all that stuff on there, whatever, I'm not that type of person where something happens immediately, run to the hospital. You know, you and I have had that conversation before where you would say, like, every little thing later, I ran to the hospital. I was trying to evaluate it to see, as long as he was talking fine, normal, acting normal, I didn't see at that point in time that he was under any kind of pain. I got you. Or, hey, got you. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That was a lapse in judgment on my part. I apologize. But he started to peel it because, you know, obviously he starts to peel things. And things. So along with peeling that, he started peeling his fingernails. So, and I'm like, that morning, I sent you a picture of getting and laying in bed on Monday morning. To your phone. Yeah, right, right. And it was laying in the bed, whatever. I went back in there, checked on him, gave him some more water, made him drink some more Pedialyte. Because he, he wasn't eating because he was so upset. And, he, and that's when I noticed he started peeling things, like, on his arm. And I said, and, the, and at that point in time, which I told you, like I told them, Jenna had blood that was on his arm and on the side of his wall. I guess from sleeping through the night, whatever it was, peeling it. Because we toted him back down to his room after Lena decided to go back to bed. On the side, you said on the side of his wall? You never told me that. No, I told detectives this. Oh. You never talked to me about this. Okay, fair, fine. I mean, I mean, I'm just, this is new. I've never heard that before, so now I'm even more worried about him. So they should have told you this. So then I I, I went in there that morning, sent you a picture. I said, Gannon, why do you have blood on your wall? I was like, it, was, it wasn't a lot. Don't panic. It wasn't like. Oh, so it wasn't like a lot, like all over the place? It was just like little streaks or something? Oh. <laughs> I said, again, he says, did you peel those things? Yes, he did. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to re-bandage the jar. I says, and if you're feeling bad or it starts bleeding, you get a fever, anything like that. I says, as soon as we, because I was going to go talk to the man about the bike. Right. He says, I have to go there first. Do you want to go to the hospital now? Of course, maybe I shouldn't have asked the kid that, but based on my judgment and what I was seeing with him, I didn't think that he needed to go right away. We went on about our business, and I said, if you start to feel any pain or hurt or whatever like that, we'll just drive to the base, we'll explain to them what happened with the fire, we monitored it through the night, so on and so on. That was, that was our intent, that, like, that was the plan the whole time, everything. Nothing, nothing wavered from doing that at all. And asked me questions. He was just like, "Why does this happen to me? Why do I always get hurt?" Because you know he had hurt his foot on the on the board outside. And I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna figure all of it out. Don't worry about it. We will replace it." Okay. So Monday morning, after all this, I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna go find." Which I probably shouldn't have said to him that he we were he would have not that it was on him. But I said, "We're gonna go find someone to replace the carpet." He says, and then we'll get a fix. We won't worry about it. We'll monitor your arm through the day. Yada, yada, yada. He said, we're going to go get some coffee. Just hang out. And I said, there were some things I need to get for the pet store, and we need to go meet the guy about the bike. And it was, that's the reason we drove the truck, because if I end up blocking the bike, I was going to put the bike in the back of the truck. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And also knows that when we left, we took my... Uh, softball bag, Charlie's softball bag with that stuff like that in it, helmet. Because you know, I was asking him, did he want to stop by to look at those hockey skates? So we took any of that old equipment that I had and we loaded it in the back of the truck, which was the you know, the long Eastern bag I have. Yeah, yeah. So you took Harley's bag? Harley's bag because she don't use that bag. The little, book, that the bag. little book bag, the softball bag that's like a book bag. Oh, oh, oh. So we were going to take it to the sports place and see if they did, like, trades, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We were going to surprise Lena when she got home if I could got him two new things to skate, to hockey skates or whatever. Cause you talking about play? You talking about played against sports over there right. that we went to? That's why we were so far across town. Oh, uh, I got you. All right. So that was our plan for Monday. Go to play against sports, get some coffee, we need to get gas. And we were going to monitor his arm along the way, go check on the thing about the bike. Right. We go to, uh, you know, drive around. We go, I, think we, I think we went to Dunkin' Donuts first. 
And then the guy store, or it might have been by a person. Oh, like over, over by our house, Dunkin' Donuts? When Dunkin' Donuts by our house. They, Dunkin' Donuts share lady already released a video of us going there. You can see my arm reach out the window, fucking grab. Sorry, I didn't mean to say F and I'm just over all this. Grab the coffee out the car. Then I turned around because I was about to get Gannon in the frappuccino, but he said he didn't want any. So then we drive off from the Dunkin' Donuts. So then we drive from the Dunkin' Donuts and we go up. Turn 87 somehow, but meant to turn on 25. Needless to say, I went up the bottom. 80, you mean 85? Yeah, 85, 87. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. I went up towards Nevada, which is where, like, Holly gets her eyelashes done, that type of area. Well, like, past, <laughs> wait, you're talking about past Walmart and all that? Like, not, not towards Fountain, the other way, right? Okay. The road, okay, remember where we went to the recycle at before and the road split? Yeah, way down there, close to, yeah, okay. All right, but that's, yeah, that's that's towards Walmart. Turn, yeah, okay, I got you. Okay, so that's the route that I take, which I'm sure they have, because I'm not hiding anything from or the GPS that I took. So I went that way first, and I realized I was like, oh, crap. I was like, I probably should have got on the other exit because I really didn't know. I, well, lately, I've been trying to find my way around, like what exits to get off of, things like that. So I get off and realized, like, oh, this is the way to where we went to the recycle thing at. So I just kept driving and ends up making the curve and turning you back to 25, Nevada, and all that. And I was like, oh, there's the Petco. It's going to go to PetSmart. Where we ended up Petco, so whatever, same thing. Petco? What's the, you went to Petco, like, way over there? That's the only Petco there is. I don't, I don't know. I'll, the only one I know is the one we went to by Target that one day. That, you know how Holly's, Holly's work? Yeah, that's Pet Smart, though, isn't it? That's yeah. what I was saying. I, I got I, you. I was going to go to Pet Smart, but I went to Petco. I got you. So we go to Petco, and pop inside, get him on the stand in the car, playing the Switch. He was like, you want to stay in the car, play and switch. Again, Colorado law is he could stay in the car at 11 years old. Oh, so he had it. So he, oh, he took a switch with him. Right. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yes. He had his switch, playing his switch in the back of the car. You're talking about a truck, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, in the back of the truck. Okay. So he was playing his switch in the back of the truck. Well, within the first time, and Yada, yada, yada. I was going in because Sadie has been having, like, these things. I don't even know what it is. She needs to get her vet paperwork so I can get her checked. I didn't know girl dogs had, like, periods or, like, stuff come out. I didn't know this. So I walked in and found these little pads that they had. And I'm, like, looking at them, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I set the phone down because I'm, like, and my mind is so blown that dogs have this. So I'm like looking at it, freaking out, thinking, okay, should I get these? Or should I just call the pet, you know, the pet? Maybe it's just something weird coming out of her, her body parts or, or something like that. Whatever it may be. So then, go back up to the front, look around. I look out the door several times. And these people I know have said, she was suspicious looking out the door. I was looking out the front door just to make sure nobody was at the truck because Gana was in it. That's all. It was just. He was in the truck, and he wanted if he needed to get out pee or, you know, whatever. That is the only reason I kept walking back to the freaking front door just to make sure he was fine. He was in the truck. So then I get three outfits. God forbid I got three outfits and only had two dogs. Because, of course, this is what these people talked about. I got three outfits, checked out, walked out, got in the car. From there, we weren't going to go to the play against sports. But wait a minute, why were you so? I'm just, I'm kind of confused because, like, you said you're worried about him getting out, but like, you know, we've gone to the gas station and like, he's never tried to get out of the car. So what? What was? I, 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 I don't know. Maybe that's nothing. But what made you because freak I, out that day? I was parked on the front row. I was parked a little bit off. So like, if oh. you get out, use the bathroom or. He was looking for me or, or whatever. Okay, all right, yeah. I was just, that kind of was weird because, like, he's usually, you know, he does what we tell him, stays in the car. But anyways, go ahead. Right, but not Albert. Exactly, he does. Just like I told you, he could have stayed at home on a normal basis. But he wasn't feeling well. Yeah, so I was fine, like, fine, I got you. What if you had to poop? You know, whatever. Yeah. I'm just trying to be a good parent. That's it. It wasn't no 
I know, I know. Hooking in the car. I got you. I, I, it just was weird that you said that, but it's okay. I'll just go ahead. Well, I went on. Got the thing checked out, left. I don't remember if we were stopped at another store in between there or what. We were headed to go to the Planet Again Sports, and we were headed to go to go talk to the dude about the bike. Well, they had my phone, so they can see that the guy right in the back about the bike with the pictures and I was asking about prices and yada, 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 yada. And I was like, can you, s I didn't want to go to the man's house with the bike, you know, without like have, I wanted it to be legit, you know, I got me in the car and I only had me in the car, I got Gannon in the car. So I thought I need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to make sure this is legit. So I'm like, send me a picture of the bike. Can you call? Can you whatever? And like, he wasn't acting like. He was wanting to, like, give me information that he could meet me at a safe spot to go look at the bike. So you, didn't I, have, you weren't going to go to his house or something? You, he was just going to meet you in general? I told him messages that I didn't want to just go to some random person's house. And that's probably why yeah. they are looking at this whole Douglas County thing, because he lived almost at Douglas County. Okay, yeah, that sounded, yeah, that does sound sketchy. You probably, that was probably a good decision, so. So, again, I'm in an open book with them. They took my GPS and everything. I was, I got, we got to Douglas County, and I was talking, me and Gannon was talking about it, and he was like, do you know this guy? And I was well, like, well, so, not. Hey, I missed the part. You said, uh, so you went to Petco, but you said you were going to play it again. Did you never go to play it again? I forgot. So we didn't never make it to play it again. We were, that was on our agenda, but we were trying to go for the bike first. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry, I got confused. I'm sorry. It's okay. He was a party first. Okay. So I was gonna go out to meet the guy with the bike, and somehow they have to have they have my email. They subpoenaed all that. They can see the information coming from the Craigslist. Okay. Oh, it's so, Craigslist. So someone had something on Craigslist. Oh man, that's sketchy, isn't it? Yeah, I you know I don't trust that shit. You there? You went and bought wood and stuff on Craigslist. Yeah, I mean, for you to do it, I, and Craigslist, I, you know, I never trust that shit because they always have those sketchy people doing, uh, you know, I don't know, stupid stuff like meet and greets and stuff. You always told me about that, remember? Yeah, but like, this, this was just a bike for sale. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm, you know, I'm worried about you and my son's safety. That's what I'm, you know, that's... That's my point. That's why I realized, I said, well, you know, we probably, we rode through, okay, so my, when you go Palmer Lake heading to Douglas County or whatever, we went that way. It was supposed to be that the guy had a warehouse somewhere between the Palmer Lake area, whatever. What, a warehouse so, of bikes or something? He said he had a couple bikes that he used to do riding and touring oh, okay. and stuff like that. Like those bikes I was looking at doing those rides, like through Alaska or whatever? Right. Okay. So, get out on this road. So, if you're on, I, I, I want to say it's exit 165 or 163. Okay. I think that's what I want to say the exit was. Oh, on, 20, on 25? Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, you know how you're going to, before you get to Castle, oh, it's where you, it's where we went to take the, um, remember how if traffic is backed up, you can take that back road? Oh, yeah, before you get to, like, 182, where the outlets are or whatever? You can take that back road yeah, and yeah. the castle off. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so it was off that, but to the right side, not to the bougie side where, like, the boonies and stuff was at. It was off that way to the right side. So I originally got off, and again, they can see this on my GPS. I got off, I went left, and went down that little hill where the little people were at. And I thought, well, this can't be the right way. Because he was saying something about signs and all this. Turned around at the little, I don't know, woods or whatever. Came back up. Went across the street and realized it was on that right side. I think it's called like Palmer Lake or something like that. Supposed to be looking for this place. Still didn't see it. And then it ended up being like all mountainy and dark. Dark. It wasn't dark in the day, but like, you know. Yeah, like, like woods and stuff, yeah. We turned around, left out of there, and I was like, well, this doesn't even look too great. Again, let them go search that area all they want to. 
they're parking up the fucking wrong tree because all we do is went through there looking around and trying to figure out where this warehouse was supposedly at. So you were we in, the, in the truck or out of the truck? in the truck. Oh, um, you had me worried. I'm like, you're out of the truck in the woods looking for a warehouse? No, it was just driving through there. It was like down, around, up, around. You know, Mount Colorado has all these mountains and shit like that. So, I came back out, got back on 25, and was like, crap. I was like, I don't even, I don't even like think that was a good place. Me and Gana was like, well, Gana was like, why can't we just go buy it in the store? Don't they have them at Walmart? You know, and so we were like talking. I was like, yeah, I'll just figure out another place to get a bike. Because the whole thing was, I was going to buy you the bike and surprise you for Valentine's Day for it. That was like the whole, whole shebang. Yeah, I would love that for sure. At this point, we never got to play it against sports because it was getting, it was approaching the time that we needed to be headed back. Okay. So I said, again, and I'll just come back and do, you know, go to play it again, sports again later. Don't worry about it. Your daddy and I have been talking about getting hockey sticks. So we come back up, heading back towards the house uh, because, um, you know, we had to get back for Lena. So I forgot to tell you a point that we left that day because I put my notebook down. Let me go back to this on Monday. Okay. On Monday. Yeah. How how much longer do we have to go? <coughs> that, that had crossed my mind. So. So we got about another hour to go. Oh yeah. No, we'll take a break now. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break until about uh, three twenty. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at that point in time, we should be able to start on time. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Um, so with that, all rise for the jury, please. <laughs> May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Um, we'll take a recess until 3:20. Then Mr. Cook is already doing on our issues. They want to talk about. Okay. All right. Then we'll see everybody back at 3:20. Thank you. All rise.
minutes and then we're going to stop the audio and we're going to do sort of a seventh inning stretch and have everybody stand and stretch and uh, things like that and then we will finish out uh, the audio so uh, mr allen thank you judge and just uh, for record keeping purposes we're playing people's exhibit 35 which is at the text call on february 13 2020 at 1 p.m yes <clears throat> when Anna and i left we found someone in the neighborhood who was working for the Lorson Ranch people. So this is why I came back to you and said I didn't think it was the carpet guy. I say working for the Lorson Ranch people. I don't know who he worked for. Like whatever that, Emory Homes or whatever it's called. He was, he was working for the home company. I approached the guy to ask him, could he go fix the carpet? You know, that, that was before we even hit the road. So that was before so, Dunkin' Donuts and all that? Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, I meant to tell you this. So it was before Dunkin' Donuts and all that. So I gave him the I gave him the garage code because he apparently worked for the company or whatever, whatever. I gave him the garage code and told him I had money sitting on the counter because Charlie was gonna. I remember I've been playing those lottery ticket things. I was yeah, yeah. tens because I was like, well, he can just have those tens and I'll get more money from. That's why I have one on the lottery. Well. That's why I thought that he was, that the carpet person, you know, had access to the house, whatever, whatever. Come to find out later on, he didn't even make it there. But I'll get to that point when we get there. But why, forgot, why would you give him access to the house? Well, because he was, a uh, Yeah, but. I'm like, like, part of the people, and Gana was with me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So I didn't think anything was a threat if the children were with me. Yeah, I got you. Someone was going to come in or whatever. But that, you know, you know how I am about that stuff too, right? I mean, that's. I, anyways, anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to stop you. Just that kind of worries me there. But go ahead. You there? I didn't do give him the code to be any kind of whatever. No, no, I no. Mean, I, I just, was trying to get the carpet fixed so the boy could not be so upset. I got it. I'm just. I just don't like. You know how I am. I don't like have people having access to our house and stuff. But um, whatever, just just go on, because I don't think that's a, a big deal. So anyway, so back to what I was sorry, saying. sorry. I want to make sure I look. I didn't leave out that point. Okay. Uh, so fast forwarding on, you know, we have to hurry up. We have to get back because I knew that Lena would be coming home at some point. The original plan was we were gonna go pick Lena up. That was the original plan. But like, hey, we're going to go eat sushi tonight. Because everybody's been talking about eating sushi. Yeah, yeah. Gannon wanted to stay at home. And I was like, no, Gannon, you probably shouldn't stay at home. You still aren't feeling the best, whatever. You should not stay at home. I said, so we're all going to eat sushi. If you don't like it, you can just get rice, chicken, yada, yada. So that was our plan for the day. We got home about, I don't know what time the alarm got set off. 2.30. 2.45, whatever the bull crap is, okay? Well, I noticed that during the time frame, I set the alarm to alarm away. And I have it from the ADT. Okay. When we left. Somehow, at, during some point, the alarm changed from alarm away to alarm stay. What, uh, but, it, what, but what point? If you, I mean... I had all this, and which was on my phone that they took. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. So, I called ADT, and I said, hey, what are the steps in alarm going to arm away to arm stay? And they said, they instructed me that if the door was not open with a sensor, it could have been that you accidentally set the house to alarm away, and it would have went to arm stay if it noticed movement that was already in the house. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Right, but there's a sensor on the garage door. Right. Okay. So keep this in mind. Prior there's a to sensor water. on the garage door. I know, on the door coming in from the garage, there's no sensor. No, you said there was. So there, yeah, there's not. I didn't think there was. Yeah, I was saying there's no sensor. Oh. I might have said it so fast. I was saying there's no oh, sensor. Okay, sorry, sorry. I mis I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. So either you can come in, you could set the alarm to arm away, and you can walk in through the garage. And it will immediately go to arm stay. Or you can set it arm away and one of the dogs move. And it will go to arm stay. As long as that back glass door wasn't triggered, 
and that front door wasn't triggered, it will not change. Okay. So right. keep that keep that in mind. Okay. So this whole thing about your neighbor, he got paid five thousand dollars to release this video. It's a proven fact. Okay. It's already been looked at by tens of thousands of people, and it's been investigated again. And Stout got out the other side of the vehicle. Okay. okay. All right. Shadows, movements, infrared, whatever you want to call it. Again, and got out the other side of the vehicle. Okay. So you, okay. All right. So he's ahead, so he's, he's home with you now. Is what you're saying? At, right. the, at this point in the timeline. Yeah. So it's like maybe. 2.45 or 2.30, I'm not sure exactly, but in that time frame before Lena got home, you know, I'm getting out, going in the house, or whatever. Gannon goes in, and Gannon goes straight to his room. I go upstairs, because I was like, had wanted to try to get on that Peloton the other night. Didn't get a chance to. Put my headphones on, yada, yada, yada. So I'm in there. Gannon had asked me was he that you said that he could go with a friend. You then text me, I don't know exactly what time, but at some point in time, you had told me, <clears throat> don't let Gannon go with a friend or something, something, something. Yeah, right. Gannon came back and said that you said he could go with a friend and come back later tonight. Again, I said, your daddy said you can play with your friends in the neighborhood. But you cannot go with some friend in some car or whatever it may be. Put my headphones back on. That, that was where this gets where I have completely parts of the information and not parts of the information. I hear another loud noise downstairs. Not even about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later, maybe 20 minutes. Yes. But I thought you, were, I thought you said you were doing the Peloton. No, I said I'd been wanting to go back and get uh -oh. on the Peloton because I didn't get to uh, okay. the other night. So I had my headphones on and I was kind of like trying to get in the pre-workout mode or whatever you want to call it. Because my goal had been trying to get on the Peloton every day. Yeah, right. So then I heard a lot of noise again and I was like, I pulled them off my ears. I know, I know their noise counseling. But I also, I'm not stupid. I don't wear them all the way on my ears because they freaking hurt. And I was like, Gannon! Didn't hear anything. And I just thought he's down there bumping and wobbling and, you know, doing his thing, whatever it may be. Still sitting there, just chilling, doing whatever. Heard another, heard another loud noise. And I thought, okay, this is it. Like, I thought he was stomping around. You know, doing crazy things, whatever, whatever. He's supposed to be going to go play with a friend. When I walked downstairs at that original point in time, I thought that guy was the carpet guy. Similarities? I didn't really remember exactly what he looked like, but I remember some of the details. Now, fast forward, you'll hear me say night after night after night after night, I dreamed of different things that have added detail to this. I thought it was the carpet guy because there was carpet everywhere, boxes, you name it. That was the loud noises that I heard. Next thing I know, I'm out, blacked out, in which I told you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what, but what I'm concerned about with that is, did he take all those boxes and carpet with him when he left? The carpet was already in the house. Oh, but what about all, what? I just don't remember seeing any of that stuff when we got there. Did you clean? Is that part of what you cleaned up or whatever? No, the the carpet was. I saw it there when the police watched me take my stuff out. Okay, but you also mentioned he had a bunch of boxes and stuff. But I mean, it's it's not a big deal. I was just wondering because boxes like laid out everywhere. Right. I told the detectives, I thought we were getting robbed. Okay, I got you. I thought that was the whole point of boxes was to get rocked. Okay, all huh. right. On, on Gannon's table, which I'm sure it had to be if it was swiped correctly, I hit my head on the back of Gannon's table. Like hard. Oh, on the back of Gannon's table. What, what table? The, the one I made him? Yes. Like the back of it up against the wall? No, as in the back of my head, and there was the table right there. Oh, okay. I thought you said the back of the table. I'm sorry. 
no, the back of my head, his table. Okay. So from there, a lot of it was a blur because I hit my head. I got you. I, I just remember certain pieces here and there. I remember Gannon running, like jumping on the guy who I thought at the time was the carpet guy. And I thought we were about to get robbed. I just remember bits and pieces like that, trying to push him off. And all I remember now that I sit back and remember, like, play it in my head again, play it in my head again, play it in my head again. It was a very calm conversation with Gannon and this person. I just remember him asking questions, the same questions he asked me, they were talking about. And I don't, do you have, who do you have me on speakerphone with? Because I know you do. What are you talking about, Tisha? Who's listening to my conversation? Me and you. I'm trying to figure out, like okay. I told you the whole time, so, the truth. I just want the truth. Okay. So during that time, I heard that same thing that Gannon asked me about knowing his mommy. Why do you think I've been adamant about you saying to you, oh my God, there's a piece that we're not putting together that we're not missing. There's something different. I don't know how to put it all together, but Gannon knew something about something. And all I kept hearing him say was, do you know where Uncle Matt is at? I don't even know who Uncle Matt is. Yeah, I ain't never heard it. The only Matt I know of is, uh, what's her name? Um, your sister. Well, that would be his uncle and he wouldn't know him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why when you said that, 20 minutes ago or whatever, I was just like, I had never heard no Uncle Matt, so. When I woke up and, like, out of this state of confusion, going crazy, whatever was going on, I remember Gannon saying he will be back later. Okay. Like the man, Uncle Matt saying he'd be back later? Gannon said he would be back later. Oh, Gannon said, okay, all right. So, in my mind, I'm like, did I really like, like, what the fuck just went on, okay? Hit my head twice, had to fight off some dude that I explained to them and gave them a subscription, description of the whole entire time, okay? I have been adamant about this and about finding this person. Is that the Mexican guy you were talking, you told me about, the Mexican guy? He was dark skinned, and I say Mexican because I assume. T him Tisha, being Tisha, you said you just said she. You mean he was dark skinned? I never said she. I said he. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. It sounded like you said she. I'm hearing things again. I'm sorry. Mexican guy. Okay. I gave him the description of that, but to me, dark skinned. I mean, their own stepfather could look Mexican. Are you talking about Mike? Right. And yeah. the time, it wasn't like obviously, but in that time frame, I'm trying to figure out first, and is this real life? Because I was totally, completely in shock what was going on. I thought we were going to get robbed. I thought they were about to take everything. I thought someone was trying to hurt Gannon. I hit the head. I didn't really know back and forth what to do. I was a little bit out of it. I'm not even going to lie. My body system was already weak because. You know how it is in the first four to five weeks of being pregnant. That's my, my mind was completely fucking gone. And my mind jumped up after everything. And I said, okay, Gannon's going to be back. Gannon's going to be back. I paced up and down the stairs. During that so, time babe, break, babe, babe, hold on. You, Why did you tell me you got raped and now you're not telling me you got raped? You think I want to tell you what a man done to me? I mean, well, I, but I, but I, like that first day, I told you I would do everything and within my power to protect you and and get you the help you need for that. But but that's, and I went but for that's that. a key part of the story. I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting it straight. And I went for, and I went for that. Okay. And that's not something that I want to be like. Do you think I want that blasted on El Paso News? Uh, okay, I, but this is me. I'm just trying to help you in this situation. Make sure you got what you need from that. But if I don't want to, I don't want to get you worked up. So go ahead. It has also been hard to know that like somebody was there trying to hurt me and Gannon and I'm getting knocked out of it. I know I understand. Trying to fight for my body, trying to fight for someone not doing something to my body. 
That's why I'm just trying to make sure I know everything that happened. Remember, this is about the truth. This is not, not about anything but me and you and the truth, so. And I can't tell people that because then they're going to say nothing to me, call me names, and then you won't even want me. Why would I not want you? I, I don't understand what you mean by that. I tried. I didn't know what was going on. All of it was a blur in and out trying to figure out. I got up at one point and ran to the door and sent Lena away. Sure, anybody in a logical state of mind could have said, why didn't you give Lena a note to run to the neighbors? He knew everything. He knew everything about us. He knew our names. He knew where we were. He knew where Ozzy worked. He knew where we drove. So back up a second, too. So just because I want to know about Gannon's well-being, too. We already covered what happened to you, but you're saying... That initially, you told me Gannon got beat up and, and he took him away, but that you didn't say that this time. So please tell me. I, Gannon jumped on his back. Like when he was trying to hurt me, Gannon okay. jumped on his back. And that's a clearly what I told the detective. Okay, so what happened to Gannon in that instance? Because I, I, I got to know that. I don't know. I just remember Gannon was on the other side. I was on where the door was at. Okay. Gannon was behind me on the floor and was crying. And was it, then they was were, he bleeding or anything? Was it like? No, that he would if he was bleeding or anything. Okay. All right. I just remember all I could barely see what was going on. Was there Not was there any blood on the floor after you got? Do you remember anything like that? When I woke up, there was no blood anywhere. I okay. probably went after the second time. So so. When I ran back upstairs, they sent Lena away. And I said, Lena, please go get um, the nail. Harley pulls up. I says, Harley, please take Lena to Dollar Tree. And they're like, okay. I said, please take them now and get these items. Exactly uh, so what Harley, I did. did. Did Harley notice that you were distraught or anything? Harley was, yeah, she was just looking at me like, what? And the one I said, please just go get the items. And Harley was like, what are they? I was like, carpet spray for the dog smell and the carpet powder for the dog smell. And they, Lena and Harley left. Okay, all right. Because I didn't want Lena and Harley to come in. And there you got two more people involved in this. He's downstairs with Gannon. I don't know what in the hell is going on. I'm freaked out like if it's, I'm in some lifetime movie. And no matter who I call or said anything to, they're going to do me just like they're doing me now. Came back downstairs. Came back downstairs. Tried to plead with him about what was exactly going on. He had Gannon wrapped in his arm. Like his arm around him. Uh, Tisha, hold on just a second. Just, I, I'm trying to understand. So, oh my goodness. So you're downstairs and all this is going on and the guy is downstairs and you send Lena away? You like you come upstairs and send Lena away while the guy's still downstairs? Right. Or did you want Lena to come in and be there too? No, no. I'm just trying, babe, I'm just trying to understand everything because some of this, this is new information for me that you didn't tell me initially. So I'm just trying to process. You want you wouldn't I, let me sit there and talk to you. Okay. I, You're treating me like a criminal. Okay, I'm just trying to understand it. So I'm just trying to sort through all of it. So keep going. Thank you for clarifying, though. You tried, Albert. What's wrong? I tried so hard. You tried so hard to do what? trying to protect everybody but I couldn't get back up the stairs once I let Lena go I don't know why I couldn't even like figure out like what to do if I ran outside the yard what was I going to do so this was so you sent Lena to the mailbox or you sent her with Harley was with did it... to the mailbox and then okay. Harley, went Harley gets there and I sent Harley a message, and I said, I sent Harley a message, like, quickly, and said, please get Lena as soon as you get back and go to Dollar Tree. I'll explain later. Oh, uh, so, so, so you sent her a message, and they went back downstairs? Right, because I was trying to check on Gannon. But I thought you said you saw Harley when she got home. I did, but 
I sent her a message to let her know they both, Lena pulled up, Lena came up. Okay. I sent Lena to the mailbox. Holly pulled right up. Look at the camera. It says your neighbor has every fucking camera footage. He should be able to see that they came up and I freaking sent them right away. Well, I'll probably have to pay him another $5,000 to get him to do that, so I don't think that's going to happen. It's bullshit, ain't it? So I went back down. It's not funny because he did get paid. I, no, I'm not. It's bullshit. So he went back downstairs. I, I mean, I went back downstairs, and I'm, like, trying to figure out, and he's just telling him that he had a new family and, like, all kinds of things, and, and I'm sitting there trying to grab Gannon, and next thing I'm, I'm on the ground again. And you can't overpower someone when they put their fingers on your mouth. And this was in Gannon's room again? Yes. Okay. All right. No one tried to help. No one cared. People were treating me like a criminal. When I came through, I woke up. Whatever. Whatever I could say and look around and think, I thought I was in a dream. And I woke up. And then it was gone. And that was the second time you went downstairs and he, he hurt you. Second time he hurt me, and once I woke up from that, Gannon was gone. Okay, so you got you pat you blacked out again, is what you're saying? Yes, because oh, I okay. hit my head several times because I was trying. Uh, what I was trying to do, I was trying inside the closet, our closet door in there. I was trying to get in there because I was like, man, there has to be something in there that I can just like swing, whatever, whatever, whatever. I didn't know how to use the freaking big gun, so if I'd have left out from Senator Harley. And Lena, oh wait, I didn't know how to use your big gun, like the, the assault rifle. And my gun wasn't in the like in the spot that it always was because you know why? My gun was already in my car. But uh, but babe, I'm just trying to understand here. You told me initially that the gun was in the house and that there was he grabbed it in in or black gun. He had your black gun. Yours. He had he had my my little pistol, right? The black one, yes. Okay, all right. Because I thought I, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought initially you said your gun. That's why I was concerned. No, my gun was outside. In the car. Okay. Your black gun. That's why I was terrified. He knew everything about us. He was threatening us. Every single thing. He knew what kind of car that your mom had drove there and stayed there the whole time in a rental car. Hey, when did um when did you bring your gun back in after all this happened? You told me to go get all the guns together. No, no, that was when we were, when I was collecting them. I'm, you said your gun was in the car. No, 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 Albert. On the phone call with me, you said go check and see and be accountable for all the guns. When I told yeah, because you, you had stored them downstairs in those, uh, my gun was in the, uh, I don't know about, I don't know about yours, but my gun was in one of the totes. Remember you had put it there. Because the lady was babysitting. Okay, so the guy had the gun and he put it back in the tote? No, he didn't put the gun back in the tote. The gun was left there. So you put it back in the tote. The gun was left there. Gannon was gone. And it was like I thought he was hiding. I legit thought I was in complete shock and thought Gannon was hiding. Okay. I even, I even mentioned to the girls, I go, because I, I was shocked, culture shocked, thinking, what the fuck happened? I, oh, my God. Like, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I didn't get the time to even go through any of the emotions of it all to think what happened. Because all I could immediately do was go into, like, the, 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 the defense mode of being like, oh, my God. Okay, get the girls out of here. Okay, Cannon's going to be back by the time he's supposed to be back. Because in the end, when Cannon was leaving... I remember him asking him, was he going to take him to Uncle Matt's house? That's, I remember that being blacked out. So Gannis freely went with him. I don't know Uncle Matt. I'm not fucking crazy. So he left with Uncle Matt in a car or something or in a van or, or you don't know? That's why he left in. I just know that the whole thing started to add up. About 30 minutes ago. Okay. Well, in that case, it's everybody stand and stretch for a moment.
feel like they want to do the wave, at least on the wave side. I know those chairs are out, the most comfortable. Right. And, you know, while this is going on, you can, uh, as I said, during jury selection, if some of you need to, you can stand, you can stretch, you can do what you need to do, and that's okay. So, take care. All right. Okay. Yep. Let's go ahead and start it again. Anna kept going outside with some gate. Anna had to be talking to somebody outside of that gate. I begged the fucking El Paso County police officers to find anything on that side of the house where Anna might have went out at night talking to whoever it was. And any cars that was parked on that side of the house. Nobody helps me. Okay, so I, I, uh, I'm trying to just, this is what's bothering me about this part. And I'm just, I want to be real with you because we're trying to work together on this. But... I went and asked all the neighbors, myself, like all like cameras in front of our house, to the side of our house, everything, to look and see if Gannon left the house anywhere from like 2 to 4, 4.30, anything like that. And no cameras have him leaving. So, I mean, I don't know. What kind of cameras? Are they like Rogers that run 24-7? Yes, like three, four, five of the neighbors have those 24-7 cameras. And then some are like ours, which are motion sensor. Okay, which ones? Because we need to know which direction that their that their cameras are pointed in order for that to happen. Okay, well, that's something we can look into. Okay, that's something we need to look into. So it, either they, they went out in front, I'm assuming, right? Not the front door. So what, what the garage? I would say the garage or either out the back door because Gannon had the gate code, like the key. And he kept going out there with this key or trying to unlock it or keep it unlocked with this key. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This, so I understand. So now Gannon, in the, in, with all this going on, Gannon tells the guy there's a key to the gate and then they the no. gate and bring the key back no. in the house? No, no. Did you listen to my story? Yeah. I yeah, I'm, that's right. Gannon kept going outside with the gate. I'm thinking that the gate was automatically left unlocked. Oh, okay. Did you lock it back before I got home? No, I didn't lock anything. Okay, all I right. Didn't do anything unless they locked it or the police locked it because Harley okay. said the police put cameras in it and locking it. Okay, we, everything up. we can find that out. Maybe the police locked it back up. So let's, yeah, that, fair enough. So, I. That's just all, all that kind of is blowing my mind. You know, he wasn't seen leaving. The key to the gate was in the house. The gun was where it's supposed to be. I'm just trying to figure it all out, Tisha. That's all. The gun wasn't where it was supposed to be because I put the gun back in when you told me to collect them. Okay. Well, hopefully, the I mean, upstairs. they got my gun now, so hopefully they can get this uh, Mexican guy's fingerprints. So. Yeah. It would be perfect to me. Okay. It's nothing but from day one. I know, and that's what I'm trying to get. So get all them this information. You know, I think the FBI is in on it now. So we're trying to get them all this information. Look for a fingerprint on the gun. You know, maybe they haven't looked there. Look for a fingerprint on the lock of the gate. You know, stuff like that as the little things that they may have missed, you know, during this process. Why? Why would they have not have done that? And I maybe I'm just upset by this because I feel like they barked up the wrong tree for two fucking weeks, Albert. It's been three weeks almost, Tisha. Yes, I, I agree. Me. I agree with you. I'm, I'm as frustrated as anybody because I don't know anything. And so, do you think I did this? Tisha, Tisha Stout, I don't know. I'm just trying, I, I'm trying to help you, okay? I'm trying to help you get the truth out there. But you've got to, you've got to tell me the truth, Okay. I, I know. Here's what I told the police. The only difference is I thought it was the carpet person, but once I went around because I was freaking out trying to figure out, I was like, if I could go get this fucker and bring him in, and I drove through the neighborhood, the description that I gave El Paso is exactly what I saw. But that is not the exact description, description that I gave to of this carpet person. So my point behind that was, I don't think it was the carpet person because I eliminated him because he didn't have craters on his face. 
He did or didn't? Two. So, but let me, well, hold on, hold on. Let, you know what? Something. Remember how? Oh my goodness! Think it back to this whole uh, that trip you made to, for the bike. You never found the guy, right? The Craigslist yep. guy. Started looking creepy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You you don't think that this Craigslist guy had maybe had anything to do with you? I mean, I mean, not you, but you know what I mean. Oh, I'm freaking out. Sorry. Um, and you don't, think, don't, you don't no. think that Craigslist guy followed you or just found you? Maybe you told him, hey, I'm driving my husband's red frontier and I'll meet you there or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of anything. Okay. But, okay. So let's say it's him. I don't, what I don't like is that people are sitting here saying, well, there's nothing that shows you guys leaving. Leaving. If there's no, like, if there's nothing at this point in time, it's starting to get dark. Because in case you didn't know, in Colorado, it's getting dark around that time. Okay? There has to be something that points to that direction that shows any shadows, movement, anything. And if it didn't, it was because the ring sensitivity didn't pick it up. All right, so... So uh, listen, I, I I want I want to I want to be clear with you that I I am not I don't give a flip about social media. You know that I don't have Facebook. I'm not on there, so I don't know what these people are saying. So let's me and you focus on us getting to the bottom of what's going on. Okay, let's try to block out that other stuff for so we can get the truth here. Um, I really I man, this Craigslist thing is really driving me nuts now. Do you think that wait, when 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 did you go? What was the time frame you went there again? You went to Dunkin' Donuts, right? Because they have whatever time they have me I, on footage. The first time at Petco. Oh, at Petco. So after that is when you left. Because I went back to Petco to get more clothes. Okay, so you went. So then you when when did you go back to Petco after the Craigslist trip? Yeah. Oh 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 oh. And you said the guy was already in the house before you got there, you think? When I got there, the guy was already definitely, most definitely in the house or had already been in the house waiting or whatever it may be, which is why I thought it was the carpet guy because that was the person that I gave the garage yeah, code. Yeah, you gave the garage code to him. Yeah, right. The more I laid and the more I slept and the more I kept worrying about it and thinking about it and yada, yada, yada. Dan kept having his room door locked. I was even so terrified to think that this person even spent the night in our home. Oh, oh you think they, he was there the whole time? I don't know. Do you know how worried I've been about this? I know, that's freaking me out. Because remember those other stories you were talking about, about people coming in the back door and stuff, while they thought people were away? That, I've been going through all that in my head, too. Albert, I've done nothing but... I, look, I have this book right here. You can hear it. It's like of all anything and everything that I thought of that might have been out of order. But anyway. uh, uh, so okay, so maybe I don't want my life back. You think I don't want my family back? I know. Me, I'm not trust me, me too. I'm tired of being betrayed as one. Okay, but you gotta help me because I I'm. I, I'm trying to sort through all this and put a good timeline together so I can tell this. Somebody reached out from the FBI, and I'm trying to tell them a timeline of what I know. All right, I'm trying to make sure they get the truth the first time. This lady that called me. Okay, so. Hey, are the FBI people not going after this? Why? I I don't know. Maybe the FBI is. I don't know. I, that's not. I I know they're doing everything they can. Maybe they have missed some things we don't know. But listen, something you told me that first day that. I'm trying to figure out when the when when did you do the right you said you cleaned everything up cleaned everything up yeah from Gannon's room or wherever you got you know somebody did bad things to you or whatever I was just talking about like the clothes I had on and like shoes and stuff oh so you just changed your clothes and then and then threw them away like you said and Gannon the whatever Gannon had on you said you threw that away too they got that out of the, the back of the trash. It was oh. a shirt that he wore that was burnt and stuff like that. Oh. That's what I meant, like, cleaned up. I didn't mean, like, clean up anything bad or anything. I'm just saying, like, I didn't want to keep that stuff on and call and believe. But you, but you, 
you told me that first day you cleaned up the whole area because you didn't want Lena to see it when she got home. That's what you told me. Yeah, my clothes and my underwear. You, you want me to really go in depth about that? I, I'm not trying to make you relive anything that happened to you. I'm just trying to... There's just some truth that I'm trying to find about... I mean, if something was cleaned up or something, then, you know, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> me if i any whatever you're trying to say to me don't just just be honest i just don't want the police to miss anything else okay i mean we think they've missed all these other pieces and then i mean if you cleaned up something that could give them dna evidence on this mexican guy then we need it took my whole dna from this they wouldn't let me pee the hospital bill that i sent you was the whole kit on my body i just but, but tell me, why did you tell me? I just don't understand why you told me you cleaned up an area, and then now you're telling me you just changed your clothes. That, that, see, that's... When you're talking about cleaning up an area, I'm talking about from Gannon. Like, Gannon had, from his burn marks, there was blood on the wall and on the light switch. Oh, 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 so, so that, so you cleaned up whatever Gannon's stuff, what blood or whatever was, right? Prior. Oh, where, where was that at? In his room when he woke up Monday morning. But like where? But where? Where in his room? You said you did say the wall because he had uh, he was wiping his fingers on the wall or something. I don't know if he wiped his fingers on his wall. I just know his arm probably hit the wall when he was asleep. Oh, I got you. Okay, all right. So, so you clean, but you clean that up, okay? Because I never saw that. That's the first I heard of it. So you you cleaned up wherever his bl his blisters or his burn mark hit the wall. Did you clean something else up? Light switch from where he touched it. Oh, but that was after you showed it to me. Yes. You yeah, you showed it to me and Lena and then told me that he was uh, picking his fingernails so bad that he bled so bad, remember? Yes, he did pick his fingernails. Oh, okay. So so you picked it, he picked his fingernails and he picked, I'm just trying to clarify, picked his fingernails and his, uh, his blister or his burn mark or whatever. What do you mean? Gannon picks everything that's open. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. Why, why are you acting like you're um, got me on some trial with this? He picks his fingers all the time, babe. Because you, open. babe, you're absolutely right about that. But I, I don't know why you feel like you're on trial. I'm talking to my wife, trying to figure out the truth. And like I told you before, it, the truth hasn't always lined up. So I just want to find out all the details so we can find Gannon. That's it. Robert, I gave you every detail, but you were coming at me saying, I thought you did this afterwards. And Gannon bleeds all the time. Right. Gannon has huge nose, no, nose bleeds. Did you tell him the nose bleeds from your truck is from Gannon? When did he have a nose bleed in my truck? Oh my God, don't even play. It's been there since Alaska. In the top part of your truck, you have... His hands had blood marks on it for like a year or something ago. Maybe. I, I don't, I, I'm not doubting you. I don't know. I just don't remember that. But that, that may have happened. I know he has had a nosebleed once in a while. I don't remember that in Alaska. Nosebleeds are like in Colorado or at least once every week or two. Every week or two, Gannon has a nosebleed. This is where I get angry. People come up here and talk all this shit, and they don't even know him. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the people are saying on social media. I don't even bother with that. And, you know, I have it for a long time. But I'm just trying to. All right. Um, can, you say what you got to say, Albert. I'm just trying to retrace some steps in, retrace some steps in my head. Did, um, so the Mexican guy. Did did you see like anybody? I'm trying to think of this Craigslist. Did you did he have a picture or did he like give you any information about him? Like, hey, I'm you know other than where to find him at or anything like that. I mean, how did, what was the framework of like how you set up that to meet him? Everything is on my phone, Albert. I, I, babe, I don't know. I I, don't, I guess they got your phone. You keep telling me that, but I'm just trying to figure out how you went about doing this. So maybe we can uh. That that freaking lady that called me bugging the shit out of me from the FBI, you know, maybe she maybe that's something relevant. I don't know. I reached out to him. They have access to my phone. 
Okay. On my phone, I click the create listing, which generates this whole like number, something, 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 whatever the email they do to protect the people that are selling. I had all that and access to my phone for that. I have limited access because a lot of my stuff don't didn't load. A lot of it weren't backed up. My emails weren't backed up. My notes weren't backed up. The only thing backed up when I logged in to the iCloud that they let me in temporarily was pictures. If they gave me my phone, which is mine, it would clearly have everything. And since they've done all these things, they should see this. They should see pictures of what I took again and at home with me later. They should see all this shit, man. And it pisses me the fuck off that no one's even caring. Everybody's wanting to point the finger, but won't let me sit there and show you. All right, Leticia. Okay. I a, you told me to be straight. You on the phone. And I'm trying to sit here and tell my own husband every little detail. Everything. This I don't want my family. All right, Tisha, listen. Uh, like I said the whole time, I'm just trying, trying to help you and trying to keep you and Harley safe from all. I mean, these people are after me now. I don't know who the hell it is, but I, like I said, I had to go get my clothes changed and everything just so I could blend in better. And I want you to know that no matter what, no matter, no matter what, we can work through this together, and I can help you. Okay. But you just gotta let me help you. But I have a very you told me to be straight up. I got a very straight up question, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Did you kill Gannon? Yeah. I need to know. I need you to answer me yes or no right now. I killed Gannon. Did the you? answer is no. I can't believe you asked me this. I just gotta know you. I told me to be straight up. I gotta know what's happening to my son. I Tell me why you would think I killed Gannon. There's a lot. There's a lot of unknowns. I mean, you I, I, being straight up again. You change your story again to me for the fourth time. No, I changed my story. You did. This is the fourth version of the same story. Okay. Wow. I, 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 like half of what you told me today, with the cut foot, and now he's got burned arms and picking it, and his butt's bleeding. All this stuff is is new to what you told me the other day. And the other day you told me to cl you cleaned up the area where you got raped so nobody would see it. But now you told me you just changed clothes. I just don't know what the hell's going on. I didn't tell you. First off, you never even listened to me about anything that went. I on. did. I no. You stopped because I listened to you. I listened to you, and then I went and got the guns and put them in the truck, and then I came back and list me and Landon listened to you. And then I stopped and picked your story apart. So get it straight, Tisha. I listened to you, and I said if I'm wrong about the rape, I will get on my knees and beg you for forgiveness. Did I not say that? Yeah, but you haven't. Exactly, because I haven't been proven wrong yet. I want the truth. If I'm wrong, if, they, if, if the, the police, no matter what they're doing, the FBI, the CBI, the CBS, whoever, okay, if they tell me I'm wrong, I will publicly, in front of the world, get on a camera and tell you I'm sorry. But until that happens, we're going to find the truth. How can you tell me that someone didn't come? I don't understand. How can you tell me that someone didn't do something to hurt me and take in? I'm, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you... It hasn't been proven one way or the other. You said you banged your head on the freaking table. I, now I got to tell them to go check out the table and see if there's any blood or, or any of your... I already knew that. They had already asked that. Okay, but that's the first I heard of it. You see what, you see what I'm saying? You never would talk to me. You literally just sat here in a conversation and asked me, did I kill our child? Yes, I did. Because, I, I, because if you say no, then I can't, I, I'll stop thinking that you did it. Okay. That's horrible. I don't know what to think. My the, my son's blood. You're telling me his blood's all over the walls, and now you're telling no, you're they're telling me uh, the Mexican guy that had the gun to your head or whatever took him away, and he knows him, and he could be anywhere. Hold on, hold on. gun. So so where did you get that piece from? That was where that. So now you got me twisting all your stories up because that was from the first time you told me the rape story that he had a gun to your head, and you told me it was shut, your gun. Shut, shut. You told me, but you first you told me it was your gun, so that's fine. I'm I'm not debating the points here, but I said the black one. Okay, okay, fine. But I mean, you know, 
in your heart, I would never hurt Daddy. I, yes, I, I absolutely believe that. I, but I'm doing everything I can to help you right now. And if you, if, but, but Tisha, listen. Tisha, listen. The thing is, if you don't, but it's not just. It, I asked you if you if you killed him. You said no, and I'm sorry. That was a hard question. But if you know anything, or you did anything, or are just upset about it, we can we can work together, and I can help you. But I can't help you if you don't tell me anything. It's just there's so many unknowns, Tisha. Oh my god. I mean, was what did anything happen that was an accident that you just that you're scared about? Really? I'm just trying to teach you, you know, you know, with my army training, I've trained to do ask all these questions to get us in a safe place. Right. And that's why I took the guns out from the get go. That's just my training kicking in. Oh, my God. I really thought like I, I thought out of this conversation, like I really thought you were going to be supportive of me. I thought you were going to bring your family back together. And I thought that we were going to talk about everything, every single day of nothing but Dan. That's what I'm trying to do. For a second, you were asking, I killed Dan, I can't believe that. Well, I'm glad you said no. That that gives me a lot of hope and peace. Oh, Dan. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe, just maybe you might have a brother. Maybe. We talked about, we cried about Kobe, we did a lot together. What? What? One of our kids. Okay, okay. Okay, Tisha, let me ask you this way then. I don't believe you killed him. But did, did something bad happen to him and he maybe maybe he is dead or not with us anymore and, and you just panicked and didn't know what to do? I mean, is there anything like that? Just any information is what I need. I just, just, I can, we can help you. I can help you get through this. But it's, I mean, but we got to know the information about Bubba. I mean, just think of, I mean. Really, yeah, yes, I'm just trying to figure out what happened to him. He's gone and nobody knows anything, but you were the last one to hear him speak. Okay, you, which was Monday when you were driving around and he left the house. The last time we heard him speak, I, I don't know. I don't know when that was. Before I left, probably. When I left and he went downstairs to watch Pokemon. That's the last memory I have of him. Now, but let me tell you something. People don't have the life that I have. People don't just be a normal person. Just doing their thing. Finally had what they want to do and be in the sky working. Oh, they don't do that. People premeditate things in life. There is no sign or indications of anything that I would have ever heard of those children. I fought for you. I fought for them. Yes, you did. You fought for all of us. You're right. I'm not I'm not questioning any of that, Tisha. I, I just was did it, did an accident happen? I mean, other than the candle or the burn, I don't know. I'm just trying to ask all the questions. I work with kid children long enough, Albert. If an accident happened, I'm smart enough. I know what to do. I've had plenty of friends who've been in situations where they've been in the classroom, they accidentally dropped a kid, the kid might have broke their leg. You go to the people, you tell them it's an accident, and you work through it. Okay, so all right, you made a you 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 also said something that was calmed my heart, you know, tremendously about Bubba. That you know, basically, you didn't premeditate anything. So whatever happened to him had to be an accident, just like the candle. And you, I mean, obviously you didn't, you wouldn't plan on something like that because you're a teacher and you do all those babysitting events. I know you wouldn't hurt kids intentionally, but whatever happened was an accident. And I know you didn't plan it. I didn't have anything to do with it. Why are you saying this to me? So, di so he, he would have had to have died naturally then. Other than He's dead. I, I I don't know, Tisha. I can't even believe you are saying that. Dude, it is alive. What's wrong with you? 
Because it's just that this none of this makes any sense. I mean, he would have been found by now. Okay. He didn't. The, all the cameras, all that footage shows him not leaving the house other than in the truck. And I just, I, 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 like I said, I'm just trying to help you get through this. Help me? Yes, help you. Because. Help me help me get through this because i yes i am trying to help you i want to know what happened to gannon and try to help you and keep harley safe and everything that i've said the whole time because that's who i am and you know that see what y'all think this is what y'all think y'all think somebody's gonna come in here and say something just to appease everyone but a true person who is completely innocent y'all can keep me down in the ground all you want to because I didn't do it. I'm not beating hey, you down. You don't want me anymore? Fine. You don't want our family anymore? Fine. You took my car. You took everything. I didn't take anything. They got all my shit too, Tisha. I I, I got two cars now because Harley's not going to pay for it. I got two cars I got to pay for. That I'm, I can't even see or touch. I'm begging you. No. She has it. That I know. So I. You every day, Albert. Why are you not with your wife? Because you want to be so honest and ask questions. Why are you not with your wife and daughter? Because okay, I'm gonna tell you the truth right now. Because of this conversation, Tisha. I don't know, and I've told you that the whole time. I'm confused. I'm all over the place. I just can't. I can't get the truth from you or the police. Or nobody. And now you. Now you know. It's just even worse now because I got another story I've got to try to make a theory from. Another story? This is a, you have never talked to me. But you just told me you told me a few minutes ago we had uh, and we went over it. I you told me the first story. No, you first you told me he ran away. Then it was the rape story. Then it was the second rape story. Now it's the Wait, third rape I story. I believe you just said the rape story. I'm I, I just what do you want me to call it? The, the story of Gannon disappearing? Okay, you told me the first version of that, the second version, and now the third version. You a second or third version? Yes. Come you sit down and talk to me? No, that day that I got home. No, the day I got home, that next morning, after my mom and sister and Landon and everybody was at the house, you, you told me you were texting Bethel, and you told her the story. I don't know what you told her, and I, I kind of don't even... That's, yes, you do. I don't even care. No. It's all there. I swear. My God, I can't believe you're lying to me right now. About what? I'm not lying to you about anything, Tisha. They had y'all at the police department when I was there. Oh, oh, oh. You, you mean when when Landon showed up and then they brought, you know, I was already there or whatever? Is that what you're talking about? Because that's the only time I know. I don't even know when you're there. I just assumed you had finally come in that night. Or was it the next day you came in? I don't even know, Tisha. You were there because she was talking to you there. Who was? Bethel. She was talking to me at the police station? Yes. I, I, honestly, most of, most of my talking was with uh, Mark, the other guy that was at Starbucks. So I I don't know what you mean. She was talking to me. I think I might have talked to. I think I talked to her for like ten or fifteen minutes. I'm, if I'm not. did not did not tell you anything different. This is all my day when I was going to lay down. Lay down. Hey, Tisha, Tisha, Tisha. I believe you. Okay. I, what I want you to answer for me is those simple questions. Did did anything did, did Gannon die and you just freaked out or was there an accident involved? Did you kill him? I, answer all those questions. Those are the ones that I want to know. Okay, I don't care about who talked to who, when we went where. That, honestly, at that, this point, none of that freaking matters. What matters is that little eleven-year-old boy is is either out there or he's not, and I got to know that. And you're the only one that has any information regarding that. I gave you that information, and you're not going to look for it. No, but you you didn't you ignored my question. I I mean answer those questions for me. That's the first question. All right. Did you kill Gannon? No. Okay. Did you did Gannon die on your watch, whether it was an accident or naturally from some injury? No. Okay. Did Gannon have an accident of of a serious nature and you freak out and cover it up? No. 
So the answer is to no to all of that. Correct. Okay. Now these, this is going to be very uncomfortable for you, even more uncomfortable than what I just asked you. But did Harley kill Gannon? God no. Okay. Did she? Any of the same questions? Does she have anything to do with an accident, a cover up? Was she involved in this at all with you? No. I haven't been involved either. So I just, but, but so something, so there's a blank somewhere that I just, you have not filled the blank. So. How have I not filled the blank? It's. You, so you don't think for a second that someone came in the house and took Anna, you don't think that? I don't doubt that. I don't know what to believe, but I'm not doubting you. I'm just having to ask all these questions. So. You know, <sighs> I begged you. you. I said, hey, let us all be together. Look at me in my eyes and ask me that question. Feel it in your heart and ask me that question. Well, but but you gotta you gotta look at it from my perspective. Okay, first of all, uh, and I got a couple things to say, so let me get through it. These, these stories, just like I've said the whole time, they don't sound legit to me. They just don't add up. They're not true. Something is off from every story because there's different versions. So that's number one. Number two. I've only talked to you once. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But you got to put yourself in my shoes. Okay. What the hell would you do if this was Harley? Okay, and and you didn't have all the information. How would you put all these pieces together? So I mean, you got for my glasses. How am I supposed to put all these pieces together when I don't even have a third of the pieces? I'm just trying to fit the piece, find the pieces, and get them together. You want me to answer that question? Which one? The one about what if it was Harley? Yeah. Yeah. Answer that question. Okay. So as soon as you tell me this. When when I get off this phone, I will have my husband and my children together in a home, and our officers will be praying, and we will be on the phone with the detectives, and we will be saying, "Listen, I support my husband, and we are need we need to find someone over here. If somebody had to see something, ask them again. Do something. We will be putting a fucking alert out everywhere. We will be putting a description out everywhere. We will close the fucking borders from." Ninety five? What what why would I'm you sorry, eighty five, whatever. Eighty five. What's the word called? Twenty five. It's oh. at least the Mexico. Well, you please be careful when you say those things because then they're gonna start looking up and down ninety five on the east coast. Okay? Sorry. And that's not gonna help us. It I mean, since you know he's not over there, that's not gonna help us if they get sent over there. Okay, so so but well, you didn't answer my question. How am I supposed to put all these pieces together? You're telling me let's go home and pray, and I've been praying my I was mean, praying nonstop. Okay, but you know we got to have action too. So, I, so here, I listen. I gotta go because now I'm now I'm freaking. Everybody's gonna start questioning me at the house. Where have you been? What are you doing? Are you involved? I'm I'm gonna get all those questions now. So I. Who are you staying with? Uncle Jeff, and then freaking Veronica and all them that are all over the place. Okay, so. Would you have to be anywhere near them? I don't have to be, but you saw we had Why to do. Listen. And your daughter. Tisha, listen. I had to do these statements and interviews and all this shit. It's just nonstop. Every day is something else. Okay, so if, if you think if you think all this information is what they need, apparently the, the El Paso people haven't done their job and they haven't forwarded it to the FBI. So I'm I, I don't know. There's some Amber lady called me from the FBI and I'm gonna just email you her number and her name. And if you want to pass this information to her, that's much higher than the freaking CBS or whatever you call. Yeah, because they called everyone I know. Okay, well then, that's what... You can tell them too. Okay, I, but I don't have the document you have. So I, anyways, I'm just going to send you the contact. And if you want it, you take it. If not, I can't make you do anything. But I got to go, okay? Yeah, but that's not how you would say trying to find your son. You would not say, if you don't want to do anything, then blah, blah, blah. No, that's not true because I can't... Just I wanted you with me the whole time, and you left. So I'm going to give you the information you need to pass your stuff along, and then you can do that, okay? Listen to me. We don't have anywhere to stay. I'm asking you to stay with your wife and daughter, and let's do this together. 
And you tell me no if you think that you don't give a shit about us and you don't want that. You tell me no right now. Tell you no? You tell me yes. If you want your family together because you believe I me. I wanted my family no, together. No, listen no. to me. Listen to me. I wanted my family together the whole time. And listen, I... You're not letting me help you, so I recommend that you get in talk, co contact with this Amber lady because she offered me help and safety because I told her what I was going through, and she I, I'm sure they'll do the same thing for you, especially all that you've been through with the you're telling me about the social media stuff and people chasing you around. You said in the email, so I'm gonna send you her contact information, okay, and then you decide whether or not to contact her to to find protection for yourself and get them this information, okay? But I gotta go, okay. I gotta go, Tisha. I gotta go. The question. What, what I said. I said I wanted you to be together, but I gotta go. Okay. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. Just getting Mr. Stout back up. Okay, Mr. Stout, if you would resume your seat on the witness stand, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. Thank you, Judge. At the time of this call, Mr. Stout, did um, you know the defendant's location? I did not, no, sir. You can move that microphone closer to you if you want to, so you don't have to lean over. Right. Yeah, the chair, the chair doesn't move. Everybody makes that mistake, but the microphone does. Thank you. At the very beginning of that call, uh, it seemed like there was a disconnect uh, where the phone dropped or something like that. Um, during the... the uh, process of these recorded phone calls, was that common to happen where for some reason the call would drop and then either you or her would have to call the other person back? Yeah, if I remember correctly, it was. And um, yeah, yeah, yes. There were some references in there where you said you were feeling heat and that you went up to uh, up on the north end to buy some, I think you said redneck clothes in that. Uh, what did you mean when you were saying that, that you were feeling heat and that you had to go buy some redneck clothes? So much of this call and many other calls, I was trying to, if you will, stay in character, to just to keep, I call it keeper on the hook. So saying things that I knew that we had joked around or talked about in the past. I did, in fact, go to Bass Pro Shop and buy some additional clothes because at one point I didn't have all my stuff out of the house and um, yeah, I needed some additional stuff things just to get by. So it was kind of telling, you know, telling her actually what I did, um, but also using something from our past to keep her on the hook, so. And in that portion of the conversation, you said um, you hoped that you would run into her while you were up north. Right. For context purposes, had uh, the defendant told you that she was staying with somebody up in the north part of El Paso County? Uh, she did, I said, there was some story, I don't remember the specifics, but yes, she was up there and that's why I referenced that. Um, I said she admit the defendant. Okay, and uh, but you didn't have any independent knowledge whether she was up north in El Paso County or someplace else in the, even in the country. No, sir, I had no knowledge of her whereabouts, period. She mentioned uh, in that phone call about Gannon stepped on something in the garage and cut his foot on, uh, on the boards and got blood on the boards. Yes, I heard that in the phone call. Uh, can you describe for the jury and... Um, what boards she would be talking about and where in the garage those boards might have been. So uh, as you saw in a photo, I, I, the garage was pretty messy, but there was, uh, depending on what project I had going on, I would stash boards uh, on that. Looking into the garage on the left-hand side, I'd lay them down so she could drive over them uh, when she parked her car in the garage. I just ran out of room as I had projects stacking up and, and whatnot. And just so we're orienting ourselves correctly, when you say, looking into the garage on the left-hand side, you're talking about from the street. From the street in. view, yes, sir. Yep. yep. Was it common for Gannon to take out the trash, as was referenced in that phone call? Absolutely. That was one of his chores. Where was the uh, the uh, trash? Where would he take it out to? So, once again, from the street view, uh, the, the gate that was referenced numerous times was to the left of the garage. And and so he would he would typically go out the back door through the backyard to and, and then around the house to the trash can because the gate we kept locked typically. So let's talk a little bit about that backyard. Um, was it completely fenced in? Uh, yes, it was fenced in all the way around. Yes, sir. 
What kind of fence did it have? Uh, I believe it was a wooden fence. I think, yeah. Was it short fence, tall fence? It was like a maybe six or eight foot privacy type fence all the way around. Okay. Um, and, and, and joining the neighbors had joining sides, so there was no there wasn't two fences. It was just one fence on each side and the back that joined the neighbors. How many gates in the backyard? Just the one on the as I referenced already the left hand side looking at the garage from the street. There was reference to a key in that phone call as well, a key to the gate. Yes, sir. Did you keep that gate locked closed? Yeah, we kept it locked. The only time I really remember unlocking it on a regular basis was to cut the backyard, to cut grass in the backyard. Where was that key normally kept? Uh, I had a little basket of just whatever, just doodads on top of my dresser or, or somewhere in my in the master bedroom, and the key would be in there. It was it was a couple keys on a keychain, and it was I kept it in that basket. Was the lock on the, um, hopefully I'm going to describe this correctly while I'm asking this question. Was was it a padlock, first of all? It was. Uh, was that padlock on the outside of the gate, meaning closer to the street, or on the inside yard part of the gate? You know, for instance, if Gannon were to unlock it, he would have had to go through the backyard and access it from the backyard side of the gate to unlock it. He could not reach over from the front yard side. Does that make, is that? Clear enough. Yeah, so just so we're clear, the, the lock that is locking the gate is on the inside of the yard. Yes, yeah, on the on the backyard side, yes, sir. How tall was Gannon? Oh, oh I don't remember it right off the top of my head. Um, approaching five foot. I don't know if he had hit five foot yet. Is it in, in that range? I guess um, just to really drive home this point, maybe unnecessarily, but uh, was he tall enough or did he have long enough arms that he could reach over a six-foot fence and unlock the gate? Yeah, let me reiterate. I just mentioned that a second ago. He could not open the gate from the front yard. I mean, if he was standing on a ladder or something, but standing on the ground, he could not. He was not tall enough to reach over and unlock it. He had to go from the back. Could you even? Uh, I think I could. I, I or pull myself up far enough to get it. I, I'm not sure, but I don't remember ever doing that because okay. the, the lock was a little bit. Uh, you know, it hung a little bit lower. It wasn't at the top. So okay. There was mention of Kobe. Who is Kobe referenced in there? Uh, Kobe Bryant, he died, uh, as many of us know, he died on that Sunday, which I think would have been the 26th. Um, and I and I think it was in the phone call I said she had sent me a message, a text message about it right when I landed at the airport in, uh, in Lawton, Oklahoma. That's oh, what I found out. Okay. So just she had sent you a text message in reference to Kobe Bryant dying in that helicopter crash? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's what that reference is to? Yes, sir. There was reference of bath salts. Um, tell us about the bath salts. What was that reference in, in regard to? So, um, some years ago, bath salts became kind of a, a, a recreational drug or something. I, I, I don't know much about it. I don't think that's the same bath salts as you put in your bathtub. I'm not hundred percent sure, but something came up in a text message thread where I referenced earlier about a friend on the bus that this new friend that I, I'd never found to exist, but he said Gannon could come over and play if he Gannon were to bring bath salts with him or some, some drugs or, or whatever. And that's where the bath salts were introduced into the conversation. Um, the next thing I did was um, ask Tisha to get or the defendant to get all that. We had some, you know, household bath salts. I said, get all those and put them up just in case. Put them up for like, what oh, reason? I, in case that story was was true. But um, put them up so that maybe Gannon couldn't Gannon get to couldn't them? find them or Gannon couldn't get them or, or whatever. Okay. There was a uh, reference by the defendant to um, the way I wrote it down was the Douglas County um, thing, basically. Uh, were you aware that there were searches happening up on the northern part of El Paso County, southern part of uh, Douglas County line? Yeah, at some point, I don't remember the exact date, but I, I know the search moved into that area because we were, uh, I, w I and those around me were following the news pretty closely um, and getting most of our information from there. So, so uh, to your knowledge, that w the fact that there was a search happening up in that part of the uh, state um, was actually being broadcast on the news? I believe so, yes, sir. That's where you learned it? Yeah, that's where I learned it. I, I think also in, in, in those pretext calls, that area was mentioned to me at one point. Uh, no specifics were given, just had, had you ever been through that area or whatever. Um, so, Based on her reference, did that indicate to you that she also had uh, learned that there was a search happening in that area as well? 
I don't know if in that moment I put it together and, you know, immediately following that phone call, I think somewhere down the line, I put it together that, oh, she must have put those together, seen, seen the news as well and, and, and brought that up because of that. I, I'm, I'm not sure, Mr. Allen. And then the comment that she makes um, close in time to that comment about Douglas County uh, is that y'all are barking up the wrong tree. Yes. Uh, in your mind, was that her uh, trying to move the investigation away from that area? Objection calls for speculation. Bid. Who was Uncle Matt? That's the first, I think I said that in the phone call. I've never heard of, I, I brought up uh, the defendant's sister's ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or something. That's the only person I could think of, of the name Matt that could have been referred to as an uncle. No other person that I've ever heard of. So when she said Uncle Matt, that is not a name that either that you knew about? No, sir. Obviously, the, it sounds like um, in that phone call, there was a range of emotion happening on the defendant's part, especially. Was um, that range of emotion consistent with her personality the way you knew it? Absolutely. In that particular phone call, uh, did she ever change her persona or identity as you were talking to her? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. In that phone call, is, was your question? Yeah. In that call. Yeah, Mr. Allen, in that phone call, I only ever was talking to the defendant. You mentioned in that phone call, these people are after me now. What did you mean by that? Absolutely nothing. Just There was a statement just to put myself in, this, in her shoes as well. Um, to tr once again, try to keep her on the hook. Okay. And again, I'm not going to, with this question, I'm not going to ask you to opine on the ultimate question as to the purpose of this trial, but you made a comment. I don't believe you killed him. Was that a question again that you were asking to keep her on the hook and keep talking? Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. What about the idea that, um, you made mention in that phone call about even you were not getting truth from her or even the police. Uh, was that again another one of these references to you trying to keep her on the phone and keep talking? Yeah, absolutely. It was a little bit of both. I, I felt I wasn't getting truth from her, but she was saying the police aren't doing their job. So it was, it was a little bit of both. When you had custody of, of Gannon and Lena, uh, when you were still married with the defendant, would you would, would the kids sometimes go visit Landon, spend time with Landon? Yeah, there's scheduled visits, um, holidays, summertime. You know, I, I don't remember the exact schedule right now, but. Would the um, defend, defendant have uh, like a dance party when the kids would leave, indicating she was happy that they were no longer in the house? There was w one or two times I remember her and Harley, or excuse me, the defendant and Harley uh, having a, I call it what I call a dance party. This would have been when we lived in Myrtle Beach when I did not yet have custody. So it was like weekend visits or whatever after they left. And then I think it's clear based off of <clears throat> the context of the way that call unfolded. But did this call occur before or after Gannon's remains were found? Uh, this was before. Okay. Judge, the, uh, the next portion that I intend to get into would be the next phone call, which is about 37 minutes long. Um, so I would, I'm wondering if we should uh, potentially. Yeah, council approach for a moment. Okay.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have some good news and some bad news. And uh, the good news is uh, that uh, the other phone calls that I think are going to be played are not as long as the first one. The bad news is that we have about 20 minutes and I don't think we can efficiently use your time. Um, but I also think that we've had uh, a long afternoon, so I think that probably everybody could use a break uh, early. Um, I, we are still uh, on track. We are still moving things along. Uh, the lawyers are, I think, doing their best to try and move things along. Sometimes things just take longer than what they think. Sometimes uh, they go faster than what they think. Um, so I apologize that we cannot uh, efficiently use your time today, but I, I think it's probably good that everybody has a break. So um, we're going to uh, end early. Again, do not discuss a case among yourselves. Do not discuss a case with anyone else. Do not do any investigation about any aspect of the case. Remember to avoid uh, any stories or uh, opinions from anyone uh, regarding this matter. Um, and if we can have everyone where they need to be so that they can meet Mr. Combs in the morning at the usual time, uh, and then we should be able to start right at nine o'clock uh, and go from there. So with that, oh, and uh, the 520 snow, I don't think you're gonna need it tonight, uh, but we shall see. So uh, if that's an issue, that's the best place to find out. But other than that, uh, we'll see you in the morning. All rise for the jury, please. <coughs> Thank you. May I all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Mr. Stauk, you can go ahead and step down. Um, can you give me a preview of where we're going tomorrow? So, Judge, it's going to be <clears throat> similar to um, today with those phone calls. Uh, obviously, I've muted a bunch of, of those phone calls. We're not necessarily playing all of them with Mr. Stauk on the stand because there are other people involved with the process of recording those phone calls. Okay. So, uh, we'll have a at some point down the road a different FBI agent um, for a portion of them, and then a third. Uh, I'm sorry, a second FBI agent uh, for another portion of those phone calls. Uh, we also have some people. I believe who do we have for any three? We have two people from the Pensacola area that are actually fly, I think are, maybe are here now okay. uh, that were involved with the discovery of of Gannon's remains down in Florida. And that's what you anticipate tomorrow. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else we need to address at this point in time? Prosecution? Defense? Okay. All right. Then we'll see everybody at nine o'clock in the morning. Thank you. Court will be in recess.